I survived 1,000 days across Minecraft's multiple dimensions and most popular mod packs. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the entire adventure. I had to survive 100 days in ultra modded Minecraft. This world is packed with crazy structures, new mobs, and insane bosses. My goals are to beat the new and improved Ender Dragon, grab the Elytra Wings, get a dragon for myself, and beat some of the four bosses of mass destruction. Make sure you watch till the end to see some of these insane fights. Day 1, I spawned into one of these new modded biomes. This biome looked really nice, but I wanted to see if there was any new structure or anything cool right around me. And there was something there. Whoa, what? Oh my goodness, what, is this a wizard's tower? I broke down this tree, made a crafting table, turned that into a pickaxe, and then mined a bunch of stone to get an upgrade. With these stone tools, it was now time to check out this wizard's tower. No! Oh, let's get the heck out of here, dude. While I was running away, I saw a chest on the side of this wizard's tower. This was just a beginner's tower. Later on, there are absolutely massive dungeons with crazy loot. Give me that. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. wait, I need to get down. These guys are not playing around. Please, please don't notice. Please don't notice. Ooh, dude, 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 get up, get up, get out of here. After almost dying, I chopped down this tree and made a bunch of torches. There was coal down in this little cave. This world is absolutely packed with huge caves. So before I even explore those caves, I need to get fully geared up and stacked. Oh, village, let's go. Anybody, you, anybody have food? I promise, dude, I'll pay you back. Let's go. Ooh, let's go. I stole this village's waystone, made a hoe, and took all of their food supplies. Before the mobs start to show up, I went inside this cave to grab a bunch of iron. I actually ended up stumbling into a cave, and with the iron I already had, I turned that into an iron shield and an iron pickaxe. I used the iron from this cave to make an iron helmet for myself. Then, while mining for a little bit more, I stumbled into a modded mine shaft. These are sick. What? Powered rails. Oh, these are awesome. Give me all of that. Let's go, chest play time. Look at that. Day two, I made iron leggings and while mining, I found a cave spider spawner. I tried to stay far away, but one of them poisoned me. Luckily, I'm good enough to take it out. Then it was time to leave the mine shaft with full iron armor so I could take on the wizard's tower. Now that I'm fully geared up, let's take the fight back to that little wizard tower area. Where is it? I'm coming for you. Anybody else? Anything Anything here? Oh, I see you. Don't try to hide from me, skeleton spawner. Chest, there it is. I knew I was missing something. You, give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that. I need to be careful. What is this? Whoa, oh my god. These pillagers had captured the iron golem. I stayed in the bottom floor, chopping down these pillagers until it was safe enough to break the spawner and free the golem. The top floor was filled with witches. This one got trapped in cobwebs, but once I got to the top floor, these guys were way too much for me to take, so I jumped. I tried to take on this wizard's tower one more time by surprise, but these skeletons and witches absolutely ruined me. Uh, screw that place. Oh my goodness. Is my armor okay? We're leaving this village in the morning. Get out of here, bud. Let's get out of here. I am. Um, that was not okay. I almost died like a million times. While I was traveling for a new home, I saw something that looked really, really cool. Dude, what is that? Apparently, that thing is called a Typhon. The loot inside was actually pretty good. Right after that, I found something really cool. This was a spider cave. I didn't want to fight the spiders, but I took all the string that I could. Still, I couldn't find a place I wanted to live in. That was until I found this abandoned shack that had a brewing stand in there. I didn't even realize how many mobs had spawned. There were so many of these guys that I almost died. Good Good news, I found a village. Bad news, I saw a giant orc. I thought this guy was friendly until he started coming up and swinging, but I let this iron golem handle it for me. Thank goodness it was there. Day 5, I found the perfect location right next to the village to start my base. Before I even start on the house, I wanted to build a nice area for a way shrine, farm, and storage room. I put the way shrine right in the middle so I had a great spot to teleport to. Day 7, I stole more of the villagers food supply to make my farm even better. For the rest of this day, I decorated and lit up this entire base. Day 8 to 9, I chose one of these quadrants to be my mining area. This is my first time seeing a cave in this world and they were absolutely huge. I also got super lucky since I got my first three diamonds here as well. After two straight days of mining, I came back with an absolute ton of loot. I also realized you can pick up things. I used all the diamonds I got from mining to make a pickaxe, axe, sword, and a chest plate. I was finally getting a little stronger. The rest of day 10, I spent building a nice little storage area. Day 11, I organized all of my chests and swapped out all these oak logs with deep slate tile stairs to make the entire area look a little nicer. Day 12, I planted my sugarcane and went traveling for thousands of blocks to see if I could find anything cool. And I did. These were huge pirate ships filled with skeletons. One of these guys even rode a dolphin. I built up to get a better look, but I realized I was completely outmatched. On the way back, I 
saw another wizard's tower, but this one was booby trapped. After I waited for one side to blow up, I thought it was safe to go in, but it obviously wasn't. I took down these witches on the floor above, broke their spawner, and even took all these books that they had in here. The next floor was guarded by pillagers. I easily took them down, broke their spawner, and my reward was four diamonds and a bunch of enchantment books. I wanted to keep adventuring, so I jumped down and I found this really scary area. This sign was even saying danger, turn back. That made me want to go inside even more. At first, this place was only filled with skeletons and zombies, which were really easy, but then I saw wither skeletons. After finally taking out the wither skeletons, I got myself a wither skeleton skull as a reward. When I looked up, I saw something that was leading me to a certain direction, so I followed it. I think this was a soul star. It came into my inventory, and I followed it for thousands of blocks. I thought this thing was slow down, but it didn't. I had to travel for so long. A whole day had passed and I was still following this tiny little star. I even saw an underground village on the way but they didn't have anything good so I stole all their potatoes and flooded their entire village. I was getting really close to whatever was at the end of this soul star. I even found this little dungeon with invisible skeleton. These guys were tough but I ended up getting all their loot. Then I finally found where this soul star was leading me to. This is where you summon the Night Lich, one of the four bosses of mass destruction. I needed much better armor and four soul stars to even summon this guy. On day 17, I tried traveled all the way back home and went to sleep. Day 18, I lit up the caves underneath my base, mined some iron and decorated my base. On day 19, I found a lava pool to get a bunch of obsidian. My goal was to go to the nether. This nether had a ton of new modded biomes and I got one of the cooler ones. This was a quartz hail biome. The skeletons in here still did so much damage so I went back home to enchant my armor. I used all the books I collected from the wizard's tower to make a bunch of bookshelves and then I used one quadrant to be my enchanting station. The first two enchantments I got on my pickaxe and sword were absolutely awful so I disenchanted them and re-enchanted them. This is when I got the perfect pickaxe is one of the most overpowered enchantments, vein mining. Day 22, I got a bunch of stone and spent the whole day trying to get a mending villager, but it cost 36 emeralds so I went straight to selling sticks for emeralds. I even tore out this entire forest behind my house to grab more sticks. That's when a blood moon happened, that's when these undead show up even more, but I only had orcs showing up, which was a lot easier, but these guys ended up ganging up on me and did a lot of damage. Once I killed these orcs and the blood moon had ended, it was time to sell a bunch of my sticks to grab 36 emeralds. That's a pretty ridiculous price to pay for a mending book but it was needed because vein mining is the best enchantment for a pickaxe. Look at this, it even works on crops. Day 25 to 26, I collected a bunch of spruce wood to start working on a house. I wanted this house to match the village behind me but I also wanted all of the villagers to know I'm way richer than you. I think it turned out pretty nice even though I didn't even use any modded blocks. 30 days in and I finally have a house. Uh, I'll show you guys how incredible this vein mining thing is. Watch, watch this, ready? That is incredible. Find a mining system. I, what? Oh my, dude, this is amazing. What is this? Protection two, unbreaking three, get out of here, bro. This is crazy. We hit the jackpot. Let's explore the rest of this area. This is so cool. Every single barrel in this mining system was stacked to the brim with diamonds. More diamonds, dude, and iron, let's go. I'm gonna be so stacked after this. I even got some really rare items in this mining system. Makes the wear invisible while sneaking. Shut up. <gasps> Dude, what? That's so cool. Zoo staff? What is this? Someone lighting at a target point? Oh, give me that. What are you doing? Day 29, I left this mining system becoming the richest person in the world. Then I made diamond leggings, helmets, and boots and enchanted them. Protection 4, speed 3. Oh, let's go. Day 30, I put mending on my chest plate and combined two helmets together and then went to the nether. The goal of this nether trip was to grab a bunch of quartz to get levels and then kill some blazes for blaze rods. That's when I found these biomes called infernal dunes. These desert blazes don't even drop blaze rods. Also found really cool ores like Sin Sinicide and Nether Ruby. Both of those can make brand new tools and armor. Day 32, I came back home to make a diamond shield. I also used these diamonds to make a diamond bow. My goal right now was to get protection for armor, so to get some experience, I stole this sheep. I also picked up his friend and bred them together. After selling an entire forest worth of stick, I enchanted my bow and got power 4. On day 34, I found an underground village where I stole their cows and made them my own. On day 35, I used the leather from the cows to make backpacks. I have upgraded it three times which means I could almost have a full double chest with me at all times. I then made a waystone so I could always teleport back home. Now that I was actually safe, I went out adventuring looking for new dungeons and structures. This wizard's tower was a little bit stronger since the witches were lower and on the top floor it was wither skeletons. I hit on the side, slowly taking the withers out until it was safe enough to break the spawner. I took the gold as my reward but it turned out to be a trap. This single witch was really easy to take but I made a big mistake climbing up here. A bunch of wither skeletons jumped on me and lowered me down to two and a half health. I had nowhere to escape so I broke this fence and jumped. 
I for sure thought I was going to die, so for the rest of this day, I went traveling to look for something else. Day 37, I found this little ship where I almost died again, but from this Vindicator. I broke this guy's spawner, and then when I went to the top deck, I realized these guys' treasure was absolutely awful. It was just a bunch of garbage. Right next to the ship was another ship that I saw on day 12, but these skeletons were way too overpowered. Just one of these guys almost killed me, so I decided to run away. While I was running away, I found a pillager's hideout. I failed this bucket clutch and even activated a TNT trap, and still no pillagers in sight. I even started taking all of their treasures and freeing their villager prisoners and still none of them even decided to show up. They must have not been home because I even raided their vault and took all of their good enchantment books. Day 39, I came back home, traded with my villagers and got a sharpness 4 sword. Then I teleported back and built another portal to see if I could get a better spawn in here. Other than this cool radioactive biome, this portal was even worse. So I broke my waist out and kept moving forward. On day 41, I found this massive pillager campsite. There were so many pillagers here that these guys almost ruined all of my armor. But the real threat was this Vindicator. He was so dangerous that I ran up all the way on top of this hill and went back home. As soon as I got home, I put mending on my helmet and made a bunch of beds because I needed netherite. At first, I was getting really lucky, but this soul sand valley and quartz hill was getting really annoying to mine. Before I could even use the beds, I needed an actual proper biome like a nether wastes. And while I was mining netherite, I broke into a nether mine shaft. This nether mine shaft had Pyrak, which gives you a ton of XP and gunpowder. I also got my first blaze rod here. After I was done with the mine shaft, when I surfaced up, I saw this crazy biome. This weird wither looking thing kept shooting stuff at me, so I ran away. While I was running away, I got my favorite achievement in the game. Now I could finally make netherite armor and potions. I chose to upgrade my pickaxe and my chest plate. Look at how cool I look. But that's not all, I even upgraded to gilded netherite. This protects you from piglins and looks even cooler. Right after that, I got a looting 3 sword, I enchanted my boots, and combined two swords together. Day 47 to 50, I promise I'm not lying to you, I spent 3 whole days trying to get unbreaking books and nothing. I looked through all the enchantments that these villagers got and not a single one of them gave me an unbreaking book. At this point, I don't even know if unbreaking is a real enchantment anymore. So I settled for these paper trades and made these unbreaking books the hard way. Now that I had netherite armor and looting 3 sword, I went back to the nether to look for blaze rods. I ended up getting a ton of blaze rods, mining a ton of pyrak, and then even getting a bunch of ancient debris at the end. I got enough ancient debris to make full netherite gear and then gilded netherite gear right after that. Look at how sick I look. Now it was time to take on the dragon, so I brewed a bunch of potions, grabbed a waystone, and followed my two eyes of ender. I saw this pillager outpost where I just freed the golems and went on my merry way. After traveling for a little bit more, more, I saw this really cool temple. This temple had pretty bad loot. And right after that, my eyes of ender broke. But luckily, I found a village with a waystone there. I couldn't find the stronghold, but I found another dungeon. This dungeon was different from anything I've ever seen. This place was literally filled to the brim with traps and puzzles. At the end of every single one of these puzzles, there was a loot room. All these loot rooms looked the same except for the final one. I wonder who built these. After I stole a bunch of books, I surfaced up and saw rainbow sheep. When I came back home, I realized something was really different. My biome had changed. Turns out it was just the season changing. Day 58, I got a new hat, killed an enderman, and then went traveling one more time to see if I could find the stronghold. I found this crazy village where there were piglins wearing mushroom heads. I then got my first totem of undying. As soon as I came home, I put mending on the rest of my armor and realized I had four soul stars. Day 60 to 61, I finally broke into a stronghold, but these strongholds were huge. This place even had trap chests and a whole treasure room. So it took me a whole day to find out where the actual actual portal room was located. I put a waystone in here so I never have to navigate this place again and then fill the portal up. It was finally time to take on the ender dragon. The end now is completely different so I pearled to the main island and got started. I used my bow to take out these two end crystals when the dragon perched and it launched me all the way in the air. The potion of slow falling absolutely saved me but these endermen almost killed me so I had to eat my enchanted golden apple. After taking out this last end crystal there was nothing left but the dragon versus me. I used my powerful bow to whittle this dragon down to little health when it finally perched. Then it was only one shot to put this dragon out. The scariest part of these 100 days is that this ender dragon is the weakest boss I have to fight. I need this dragon egg cause once I hatch it I can get a dragon for myself. Right next to the end dragon, there was a ship of the Valkyries. Now these guys were way too strong. Some of these guys were wither skeletons riding phantoms and the others were wither skeletons riding hoglins. My netherite armor was absolutely nothing to these guys so I had to leave. 
I took the end gateway to one of the nicest looking biomes I've ever seen in my life. These things were called Aurora Crystals and they were needed to make some of the strongest armor in the game. While I was traversing the end, I saw this giant structure. This place is used to summon Obsidolith, one of the four bosses of mass destruction. I'm gonna come back and take him on later. A 63 to 65, I found an end city in one of the coolest biomes ever, but this place had hundreds of shulkers and not even an end ship. It took me another thousand blocks and three whole days to finally get an end ship, but it all pays off since these elytra wings already come with unbreaking three and mending and on day 70 i spawned back at the first village i saw and showed them all everything that i got day 71 i moved my enchantment table into the house i also moved my brewing stand and a furnace room in there too then i built an area specifically for the dragon egg that i was going to hatch later on day 73 i made a bunch of fireworks and golden carrots i did this because to hatch the dragon egg i needed to defeat a boss first this boss only shows up in the end and you need to do a ritual to even summon it. So I placed my dragon egg on top of this obsidian altar and waited as these end rods started glowing. As the ritual finished, a boss called the eye showed up. This guy shoots a bunch of lasers and even summons little versions of itself. I used these obsidian pillars as cover and started shooting my bow into the middle of the eye. These guys didn't do a lot of damage so I was very surprised. There has to be a bigger boss right after this. And right after it exploded, I realized there was. My egg was taken into the void dimension by this thing called a void shadow. Before I even tried to challenge this guy, I wanted to beat some of the bosses of mass destruction first. The first boss that came into my mind was the Night Lich, so I upgraded my bow and traveled for thousands of blocks back to its summoning place. I waited till the morning and put the remaining three soul stars into the three altars left. Just like that, it turned into night and this monstrosity started shooting projectiles at me. This was the Night Lich, one of the four bosses of mass Mass destruction. With only one projectile, it almost killed me. The best choice I made was getting the elytra wings since I could take the fight straight to the night lich. This fight was going way too easy since I just started slicing the night lich in the air. This bow even knocked it down to the next level. After this critical hit, I felt invincible, but that all changed with one hit from the night lich. That one hit popped both my totems, so I made sure to never go on the ground ever again. Even though I kept the fight in the air, one more hit from this void totem almost killed me. But it's way too late to give up now. I still stayed in the air and got a really nice combo on this Night Lich. Then the final hit took the Night Lich out. This guy ended up dropping some diamonds, enchantment books, and this thing called the Ancient Anima. Day 81 to 82, it was time to take on another boss of mass destruction, the Obsidolith. This boss was completely different from the Night Lich since it doesn't fly or move at all. It spawned from the obsidian from one of these giant structures in the end and because it didn't move, I got to get a lot of shots in with my potions of strength and my sharpness for sword. After I got a bunch of critical hits in, it put on a shield. Now things were getting serious, I was getting launched by his attacks. Also with the shield up, this thing was invincible. I had no idea how to disable the shield, I even tried to break some of the runes that it spawned. Thank god I got these elytra wings, after I flew around for a bit this guy let his guard down. All I needed this boss to do was to put down his shield for a second. Now that I can deal damage again, I drank my strength potion and laid a bunch of good hits to kill this thing. It even spawned another pillar with some nice treasure in there. But I'm not done, I wanted to fight a few more bosses of mass destruction. While I was looking for the nether gauntlet, I even killed this little wildfire to get a molten shard. The molten shard can be used to get one of the best shields. Then I stumbled into the lair of the nether gauntlet. I should have prepared much more for this fight, these guys were absolutely insanely strong. These guys had a bunch of ranged attacks, they would even jump and punch you. I was eating my golden apples non-stop, these guys blew up all the blocks around you too. After surviving the first onslaught, I thought I would be safe enough to take him down. Once I got this guy down to his next level, they got even stronger. Now instead of punching, they even launched lasers out of their eyes. At this point, I ran out of golden apples and my netherite shield almost broke, so I just ran. While I failed taking on the golden, at least I could make the best shield in the game. I put unbreaking 3 and mending on this shield, then I went to challenge the void shadow. As soon as I entered this void dimension, the void shadow sent a bunch of mobs to come and fight me. I had no idea how to even do damage to the void shadow and this void fragment almost killed me. But it all changed when I accidentally reflected this bullet into the void fragment. That was the first time in a whole day that I did any sort of damage to the void shadow. As soon as I figured that out, I spent the rest of this time trying to hit these void bullets into the void fragments. That's when the Void Shadow's health was low enough to actually challenge me. But my Sharpness Sword and my Strength Potion was way too much. After taking out one more Void Fragment, it was now time to defeat the Void Shadow. And just like that, once the Void Shadow died, it left me my Dragon Egg and a bunch of treasure. So I collected my Dragon Egg and checked what was left for me in the chest. There was something called a Sword Stone. 
Beating the Void Shadow means I was considered a hero. That's the only way to get this dragon egg to hatch. I waited all day for this dragon to hatch. And as soon as it showed up, I fed it all of the orc skin that I had in my inventory. This way the dragon grows up as quick as possible and I can put a saddle on it. And just like that, my dragon had fully grown up. Day 90 to 93, I took this dragon out to explore. That's where I found this absolutely massive temple. So I parked my dragon down below and went to explore this entire place. This tower was absolutely massive. These spiders were way too strong and these wither skeletons were absolutely overpowered. But I've taken on harder bosses than this before. And as two to three days passed, I got on top of this entire temple and looted everything. Then I called it a day and took my dragon back home. Day 93, I named my dragon Le Dragon James and it just kept doing this spin move non-stop. Day 94, I made a dark enchanter and a dragon anvil and maxed out all my enchantments. Day 99, I set up an automatic firework launcher. And just like that, that was 100 days. I had to survive 200 days in ultra modded Minecraft. These are my goals. First, I want to defeat the wither and make full crystallite armor. Then I want to defeat the last two bosses of mass destruction. After that, I want to beat the blackstone golem. And last but not least, I want to explore the rest of this world and the Aether Dimension. Make sure you watch till the end to see this epic adventure. Day 101 to 103, I grab my fireworks, golden carrots, and potions of fire resistance to go collect wither skeleton heads. I found a structure with a respawner statue and a nether temple, which I accidentally blew up while I was trying to collect the loot. For the rest of these days, I killed a ton of withers and this guy called the Wither Necromancer, what? That guy wasn't much of a challenge and right after that I managed to kill this thing called the Restless Spirit and then I finally collected my two wither skulls I needed. Day 104, I made potions of health, grabbed some milk and teleported to an area to fight the wither. In front of this mountain, I placed my soul sand and summoned the first boss of these 200 days. My power 5 netherite bow did some crazy damage while this guy was flying. The wither was no match for me. Well, it was no match for me until his health got low and it came down and started doing some serious damage. I had to fly up and then drink my milk. Now that I was healed up, I came down and delivered the final hits to kill the wither. After that, I picked up the nether star and flew over to the pirate ship nearby. I took down the pillagers on board and burned this entire place down. Day 105, I used most of my iron to build out the layers of a full beacon underneath my storage room. Then I placed my beacon in the center and chose to give myself speed 2 and regeneration. That night a blood moon happened which means I couldn't go to sleep so I spent the rest of this night killing a bunch of orcs and zombies until it was morning. Day 106 to 108, I needed a huge armor upgrade so I made an endstone smelter and went to the end. I was there to collect a bunch of the new ores like amber ore, rothalassium and even ender ore. Along the way I found an abandoned ship with some good loot. Then I found this crazy looking structure with an elytra wing just hanging around. I then picked this weird looking biome to mine in and got attacked by this thing called a shadow walker. I mined for the rest of these days and hit the mother load of ender ore and rothalassium. Day 109, I found an end gateway portal and made my way back home. While I was traveling back home, I find another pirate ship and lit it on fire. I think I spent the whole day watching this thing burn down. So as soon as I got home, I smelted all of my rothalassium and turned my ender ore into ender dust. Day 110, I used the ender dust to make terminite ingots and turned the ingots into terminite forged plate. With that, I was able to make full terminite armor, but that's not even close to being the best armor. I still needed to do the infusion ritual. Day 111, I did the ritual to infuse crystals into my terminite armor and make crystallite armor. I even infused the elytra, but it took up a chest plate slot, so I just used the spare elytra I got from the end. These sets give regeneration, speed, and haste bonuses. Day 112, all the villagers were dying, so I took some of my best ones and put them in this small trading hall. This way, I can get many books way easier. I need them for the enchantment process. Day 113, I started enchanting my crystallite gear. First up was my perfect chest plate, then my leggings. And after that, my boots. I also put mending on each piece of armor and then began maxing out the enchantments on the Dark Enchanter. Next up was the helmet. Day 114 to 116, I completely ran out of XP so I made some more fireworks and went to the nether. I was looking for these things called Pyrak. The only place I knew where to find them was in a nether mineshaft. They give so much XP, I literally got 10 levels in just a few seconds. I mined these guys for the rest of these days until I got up to level 36. I think that'll be enough for the enchantments. 
I then came back home, put all my gunpowder away, and began enchanting my helmet. I used a dark enchanter to max this bad boy out. A 117 to 119. Now that my armor was maxed out, it was time to max out my tools. I wanted to make dragon tools, and to make dragon tools, you need regular netherite tools. I only had guild netherite stuff. So I spent a few days with vein mining, just chopping away at his nether rack. It was actually a lot of fun. I didn't even realize how long I was in the mines. I collected about 12 pieces of ancient debris and made my way back home. Day 120, I smelted my ancient debris, made some netherite ingot, and started making netherite tools. Then I used my dragon scales to make a dragon pickaxe, sword, and a bow. I then disenchanted all of my old gilded netherite gear and used that XP to enchant my new dragon gear. Even though it took all of my experience, I now had some of the best armors and tools in the game. Day 121 to 126, I placed more bookshelves down and went to put this gear to use by taking on some enemies. First up, I found this abandoned building with a skeleton on the door and took out the wither skeleton inside. I then found an abandoned house with some exotic fishes. Next up, I found a pirate ship which I easily manhandled and obliterated it with TNT and fire. Next to that ship was an even bigger pirate ship, but once again, that wasn't even a challenge. I easily took out the skeleton and burned this ship down. I had enough fun. It was time to go back home and prepare for an actual boss. Day 127 to 132, I grabbed my golden apples and went underground to look for a boss of mass destruction. The Void Blossom. This guy hangs out at the bottom of the world, so it took me forever to find where it was. Luckily, while I was looking for it, the boss bar showed up. I knew I was close. Day 133 to 136, I found the lair of the Void Blossom. I tried to stay on the high ground, but its attack sent me down to the ground. It's now do or die. I then drank my strength potion and got some great bow shots in, but this guy ended up burying himself and healing. It was using these spores to heal, now I had even more to worry about. The next phase it launched acid at me, what did I get myself into? After a few minutes of breaking these spores and doing some damage, I finally got its health down to the final phase. Then all it took was dodging its attack and getting some good hits square on its face. My reward was a ton of XP and this thing called a void thorn. I then went back home to prepare for the next boss battle, and this one's gonna be even harder. Day 137 to 142, last time I took these guys on, they almost killed me. The Nether Gauntlet was the hardest boss I've ever taken on. Before I found their lair, I explored this weird pipe looking thing. Inside of it were these things called pipeline sentries. They were like blazes with like 10 totems equipped. One of them even shot lightning. What is happening? At least these guys had some pretty nice loot. Day 143 to 145, I saw one of the nether gauntlets that I ran from last time, but I'm way stronger now. Even then, these guys were still super overpowered and made me retreat pretty quickly. When I was retreating, I remembered one thing. If I got too far away, these guys just end up healing. So I came back in and took the fight to them. I realized that if I use my wildfire shield, it doesn't take any damage from their lasers. So from then on, I used my shield to full capacity, blocking all of its hits and lasers. As soon as they opened their eyes, I was able to do a ton of damage. Before I knew it, I was able to land the finishing blow on the nether gauntlet. The next gauntlet was a much simpler fight since I knew what to do. I thought I had it trapped in its area, but it managed to break out. At least I did a ton of damage before it decided to come up. I used the same strategy of blocking all of its hits with the wildfire shield and it worked like a charm. I defeated this gauntlet way easier than the first one and took another blazing eye. Day 147, it was time to take on another boss, the Blackstone Golem. I needed 4 gilded blackstone shard and a ton more blackstone, so I went to the nether to trade with a bunch of piglins. I got really lucky with the trades and got the gilded blackstone shards really easily. It just took me forever to find where the piglins were. In 148 to 151, it was time to do the ritual to summon the blackstone golem. I placed the four gilded blackstone shards on the holders and waited for the blackstone golem to spawn. This guy was absolutely massive and while I was trying to put some fire out, it knocked me off my ledge. I flew back around to fight the golem, but this guy was stuck in some really awkward area. I was getting a bunch of free hits in. I thought I was invincible until this happened. The golem launched me all the way up in the air, but while I was there, I just used my bow to whittle his health down. The golem was almost dead, so I jumped down and started slashing at it. And bad news, a lot of its loot fell into lava. At least I got to keep the blackstone heart. I was able to make something cool. 
I use a blackstone golem's heart to make a blackstone golem arm. This thing is really cool. You can charge it up and launch blocks at things. Day 152 to 155, I realized the whole time I wasn't even equipping a totem. I then flew around to try and get the bad omen effect. I wanted to start a raid. There wasn't a captain there, so I just flew somewhere else. I found this cool little mushroom area where there was a ton of mobs because it was all shadow. Then while I was flying, I found a wizard's tower where I took their golden apples and found this little abandoned house. I couldn't find another pillager outpost. So in this swamp village, I just teleported home. Since I couldn't take on a raid, I made a cartography table so I could take the fight to the Woodland Mansion. After trading a bunch of emeralds to this guy and a bunch of glass, I unlocked the Woodland Explorer map. I also expanded the Woodland Explorer map to make it easier to find the mansion. While I was looking for the mansion, I found this cool mushroom village, and after more exploring, I found these crazy structures called the Thornborn Towers. The top of these towers all had spawners that spawned skeletons on top of phantoms. These guys were actually pretty easy to take down, there were just so many of them. I then flew over to the other towers and took out their spawners and also took their loot. Day 161 to 162, 23,000 blocks later, I finally found a woodland mansion. I drank my strength potion and went right in. I easily took out this first vindicator, I took their pumpkins, and then killed more of these guys. Things were going a little too well, I was feeling invincible. That all changed when I moved over to the other side of the mansion. I got trapped in a room with three vindicators and these guys kept disabling my shield. My health was dropping really fast so I had to keep running. I kept my distance and used my bow to take these guys out. And just like that, I'd taken down the first floor. For some reason, the second floor only had like one vindicator. I then made my way up to the final floor to take this entire woodland mansion down. I took apart my first evoker in this mansion and swapped the void totem for a regular totem. Then I killed the last few remaining mobs in the woodland mansion. Luckily, there was a village right next to the woodland mansion that I used to teleport back home. Day 163 to 166, I wanted to see what a jungle fortress was. I then chopped down these trees and finally these pillagers showed up. Now I think I might be the most unlucky person alive. He died by the fire so I didn't get the bad omen effect. I was so mad. I then turned all the wood into sticks and got a ton of emeralds selling those sticks. And I bred these villagers. This village was pretty empty so I wanted to kind of fill it out before I took on a raid around here. I even built some defenses up. Hopefully three iron golem will be enough to defend this village. Otherwise I'm screwed. And to end these days off, I made an automatic composter for a bunch of seeds that I had. Day 167 to 70, now that a bunch of stuff at home was taken care of, it was time to find this jungle fortress. I found another one of these weird mushroom structures, but this one was packed to the brim with these mushroom brutes. There was even more on the floor underneath. I broke these guys' spawner and all of them started coming after me. Killing them was actually really easy since they just line up in front of you, but they all splash potions of nausea at you. Then I went right back to looking for the jungle fortress. Thankfully, there was another pillager outpost and these guys actually had a captain, so I got the bad omen effect. Day 170 to 173, I followed the map all the way to this jungle fortress. This place was really weird. It was filled to the brim with drowns. It seemed like these guys would never stop spawning. I tried to turn the corner, but I was ambushed by hundreds of drowns. Even with the best armor, these drowns are doing a ton of damage. Thank god I had golden apples at the ready. I then broke away from the hordes of zombies and stayed on the outside shooting my bow. Once I cleared the path from all the drowns, I explored the rest of this jungle fortress. This place was cool, but it had some awful loot. So after exploring a little bit more, I decided to just get out of here. While I was coming back home, I saw this underground village. That's when I realized I still had the bad omen effect. I flew back up to the surface and defended this village from the raid. It's only been two waves, but this raid was really easy. I took out all these guys and one of these guys ended up dropping a horn. I had no idea what this horn did, so I just blew it. Turns out, it actually ends up calling off the raid. So all the pillagers went back home and I flew back to my home. Day 174 to 175, I came back to my village and also blew the horn. That ended up calling a bunch of pillagers and I was able to start a raid. The first two waves of this raid was easily handled by the three iron golem. But once wave three came around, all of my golems were about to die. This is when the ravager started coming in. I then finished this wave by taking down the last remaining witch. The next wave was somehow even easier since there was no ravagers there yet. I easily took out these random walking pillagers and then got ready for the next wave. This is when things were getting serious. More Ravengers started coming in as well as a bunch of Vindicators. This raid had already killed all of my Iron Golem and most of my villagers, so I had to put it to an end. I used the high ground as an advantage and took out all the rest of the pillagers. I then made a plan to take out the Ravagers first, then all the ranged guys. 
But since my village had no other defenders, all these guys were focused on me. I was basically just training these Ravengers all the way around until I could get a good shot on them. After I took out the riders, I flew over to eat my golden apple. My health was getting kinda low. Then it was time to go back in and defeat the bulk of the raid. I made sure to follow the plan and take out the heavy hitters first. Once the Ravagers were dead, it was smooth sailing from now on. This was the last wave, so I had to make sure to not die, but these guys ended up doing not enough damage at all. The last two people left was this witch and this evoker, and once I took these guys out, I earned the title as the hero of the village. Day 176 to 180, I brought a farmer villager over to help repopulate the village. I then went to the nether one more time for another goal. I needed to kill a ton of piglins and grab a bunch of gold. I did this because I wanted a huge mob to spawn, a piglin beast. I don't even know how much piglins I actually killed. I spent a bunch of days just absolutely demolishing these piglins. I even found a piglin outpost where I took out every single person plus the captain. I guess the piglin beast just didn't want any smoke. While I was traveling, I found this cool dome looking thing. So I made my way inside and checked out what this book said. Even if some of the words were scrambled, I couldn't make out the words in nether star. So I knew what my goal was. Because I'm really curious, I wanted to see what would happen if you actually gave this place a nether star. So I made my way to a nether fortress and killed a ton of withers for the rest of these days. I wonder what this altar had to offer. I didn't want to have to fight the wither again, but I really want to see. Day 186 to 188, I flew over to another random location to fight the wither one more time. This fight is so much easier now that I have perfect armor and perfect tools, this guy was no match for me. Even when the wither started making his way down to do melee damage, I easily took it down. And after a few minutes of just swiping at this wither, it dropped the nether star I needed. It was time to see what that altar had to offer. I made more fireworks, drank some fire potions and made my way to the altar. I got a rare achievement, but absolutely nothing changed. I just killed a wither for no reason. It says I upgraded the pedestal, but I don't know what to do. If you guys know in the comments, let me know. It didn't take my nether star, which is really good. So I used the nether star to upgrade my backpack. I have way more storage now. Day 189 to 194, I used my glowstone and water bucket to make an aether portal. This place was really weird, it was just a bunch of floating islands. Good thing I had elytra wings, so I went around to explore, and while I was exploring, I found this cool looking ore called ambrosium. After that, I flew around to look for any living things or any structures. I also checked to see if these clouds were solid objects. They were. They didn't even let you pass through. I found another ore called Xanite and finally saw another living being. Those guys were called Blue Sweats and this was an air bunny. I then heard there was an ore called Gravitite underground so I went looking for and finally found a piece. I think all the armors and tools made from Gravitite are just as powerful as diamond armor and tools. They just look cooler and the ores floated. On the way back home I finally found a structure. I was getting really lonely but again it wasn't anything too good. When I made it back to my portal, I wanted to try one more thing. I wanted to see if you would take void damage from falling in the aether, so I jumped down. This was actually kind of scary since I had no idea what would happen, but luckily, it just teleports you straight to the overworld. Bad news, I have no idea where this place left me off, but there was a mushroom house, so I made my way inside and went to sleep. It took me a pretty long time to come back, because that was actually really far away. But I had a ton of good stuff I grabbed from the Aether, so I used the Gravitite to make a Gravitite Axe, Shovel, and a Gravitite Hoe. They looked a lot better, so I made sure to also fully enchant them. Day 197 to 199, I used all of my quartz to make a sign celebrating 200 days survived. I know it looks like Zoo, but I tried my best. Just like that, I'd survived 200 days. I had to survive 300 days in ultra modded Minecraft. My goals are to craft full dragon scale armor, fully upgrade a beacon with three beacon lenses, and fight the strongest boss in the game, the Hovering Inferno. Make sure you watch till the end to see the epic boss fight. Day 201, I grabbed a bunch of gas tears, then went to collect some sand for a glass and turn my blaze rod into blaze powder. I needed to kill the ender dragon a bunch of times for dragon scales, so I collected a bunch of ender pearls and made summoning crystals. As I was summoning the dragon, this crystal almost killed me. I then drank my potions of slow falling and began taking out all of the crystals once again. I was able to do a ton of damage to the ender dragon in the air and while it was perched. And on day 202, I was able to take out the ender dragon in the air. 
my reward was about five dragon scales. Before I took on another dragon, I flew over to the ship right next to the end island. This ship had some of the strongest mobs I ever faced, especially in the first 100 days. I got a rare advancement for picking up protection 5 boots and went to the bottom floor of the ship. I took out these crazy strong husks so hopefully their loot was actually pretty good. In the chest there were a ton of gold, diamonds, potions and a bunch of food. After collecting everything I went back to the island to summon another dragon. I took out the summoning crystals one more time and once it perched this dragon launched me all the way into the air. As I was falling down I was able to take this dragon out with my bow and summon another dragon. This is where things started to go wrong. I was getting a little too cocky. This dragon was super low so when I went to perch down it hit me and blew blew up everything. Luckily I had my totems and golden apples so I stayed up in the air taking this dragon out. Even though I almost died I got what I needed, a ton of dragon scales and a few levels. Well it turned out to be only 10 dragon scales but that was enough to make full dragon scale armor but I needed to make netherite armor first. After making regular netherite gear one more time, I used my dragon scale to make full dragon scale armor. I used almost all of my levels to make sure I got the perfect enchantment on this dragon scale armor. I then disenchanted all of my old armor and put him on an armor stand. After a few days of enchanting all of my gear, I finally had fully enchanted dragon scale armor. The rest of day 205, I went fishing to grab some puffer fish. I wanted to make potions of water breathing. Day 206 to 208, I took my waystone and flew over with my potions of water breathing to grab some tridents. While I was looking for tridents, I found this undead ship where I sprinkled this entire area with their own TNT and blew this place up. I then went underwater and killed a ton of drowns to grab a trident for myself. This looting 3 sword was really useful. Right next to where the trident was, there was an ocean temple which I then broke into and took the loot. This ocean temple had some terrible loot, just 3 diamonds, so I made my way back home to turn this regular trident into a dragon trident. Day 209 to day 214, for these 5 days I chopped down all the trees near my base to make a bunch of sticks. After that I took my potions of fire resistance and went to the nether to collect 15 wither skeleton skulls. This way I could complete one of my main goals, which was to upgrade a beacon with 3 beacon lenses. Those things give you some crazy OP effects. After the nether trip I then went back home and brewed a bunch of potions to take on 5 withers at once. A 215, I found a spot to summon all 5 withers at once. While I was placing all of these heads, I messed up on one of these wither skeletons and guess what happened? One of the withers blew up and took out three of my skeleton heads. I didn't have any time to complain though so I flew up and tried to focus all of my effort on one wither. I stayed back firing my bow until one of these guys aggroed at me. Thank god for my power 5 dragon bow, I was able to easily take this wither down to its melee stage. Now that the wither was down here with me, it was super easy to take it down with my sharpness 5 sword. I then picked up one of my 4 nether stars and flew over to challenge another wither. Turns out I angered 2 wither at once so I had to retreat real quick. Luckily I lowered one of the wither skeleton's health all the way down to melee level. And then with the strength 2 effect, I was easily able to take out the second wither. Then I immediately focused my effort on the next wither, this one was even easier to get down to melee range. Just like the last two, as soon as it got down to melee range, it was super easy to take out. The final wither was hiding in this cave, so I hit it and it flew all the way back out. I was getting a little too good at killing wither, so this one was just a piece of cake and I picked up the last nether star I needed. Day 216 to day 218, I only had 4 nether stars so I made 3 beacons and expanded the entire area underneath the beacon. This still wasn't even close to being a fully upgraded beacon, so I gave myself long reach, strength 2 and resistance. I was really close to level 30 so I spent the rest of this day trading a bunch of sticks for emeralds and expanding this entire sugarcane farm. After all of that I ended up being level 30 and got to enchanting my trident. And then I finally had a fully upgraded dragon trident with riptide 3, unbreaking 3 and men. I then also unlocked an ocean explorer map too. Day 219 to prepare for the ocean monument I spent this entire day fishing for puffer fish so I could make potions of water breathing. Right after that I took my waystone and flew over to find this ocean monument. In my travels I found an oak mansion. I've never seen this structure before so I decided to make my way in. Turns out it was just a different version of the woodland mansion. There wasn't even any different mobs but it was super easy to take these guys out with my fully enchanted dragon gear. I got a bunch of totems and emeralds then broke the window and got the heck out of there. While traveling the next morning I finally found a real challenge. This was a ship of the Valkyries. Just like the one in the end, this place is stacked to the brim with wither skeletons that ride hoglins and other wither skeletons that ride phantoms. The only reason you'd even set foot in this crazy structure is for the insane loot. 
Every single one of these chests was filled to the brim with diamonds and a bunch of potions. One of these rooms even had chests filled with ancient debris. I then took out the rest of these mobs and then made my way over to destroy the final spawner. Right as I was flying, there was another structure that I've never seen before. The Colosseum. I wonder what kind of bosses would be right in the center of this place. The spawner right in the middle ended up spawning a giant phantom with a zombie or a skeleton riding on top of it. Oh, it was a zombie. It was a zombie with diamond armor, but the phantom was really easy to take out and I broke the spawner. I then saw another giant structure, the Thornborn Towers. These huge structures are filled to the brim with so much treasure. I have no idea why they all decided to spawn right next to each other. This place is gigantic. Last time I only stayed on the top floor, but each one of these towers had their own individual rooms. Luckily, these guys weren't wither skeletons, but just regular skeletons. They were still really tough to take out. I then grabbed a bunch of loot and then made my way out of here. I still needed to find the ocean monument, but I actually ended up finding a pillager camp first. If you want to see how overpowered dragon scale armor is, these guys ended up not even doing any sort of damage to my armor. Most of the time, I just had my shield up and they ended up shooting themselves. Because they ended up killing themselves, it was really easy to take out the last remaining pillagers. Every single time I try to look for this ocean monument, I get distracted and I got distracted one more time. This was a snow temple. I tried to get inside the snow temple very gracefully, but I ended up activating this entire trap and it blew up. Okay, this time no more distractions. I just beelined it straight to the ocean monument. And on day 233, I finally found it. I placed my waystone, drank my potions of water breathing, and jumped straight in. While I was making my way down to the ocean monument, I fought a bunch of little guardians. I then got the mining fatigue effect and made my way inside where I found the first elder guardian I needed to take out. One down, two more to go. This one wasn't too far away. Maybe I'm a little too overpowered with my dragon scale gear. Okay, one more to go. This guy was even even easier. It's like they wanted me to take all of their treasure. And just like that, I defeated the last Elder Guardian. I even got rid of my mining fatigue and took all of their sponges. This ocean monument was almost 15,000 blocks away. I then made my way back to shore and took the waystone back home. Before this day ended, I wanted to do one more task. It was to completely dry this sponge in the nether. I have no idea when I'm going to use it though. Day 234 to 239. The last 100 days, I was looking for a monster called the Piglin Beast in the nether, but I couldn't find it. But now I have time and all the gear. I spent this entire time just looking for wherever this piglin beast could be. I searched the entire nether destroying every single one of these piglin outposts and killing every single piglin inside of it. I even took out a bunch of captains and stumbled into a piglin wither battlefield. I really didn't care about their war. I just wanted a ton of gold from those gilded blackstone blocks. And finally I found a giant piglin camp. The piglin beast has to be here. Once again I started from the outpost and I destroyed every single piglin in this area. Just like that right in front of me was a piglin beast. This guy was absolutely awful. I thought he was going to be a lot bigger and it was so easy to kill him and he only dropped 4 gold. I then came back home disappointed. Day 240 to day 243. I wanted to complete some advancements and make the first beacon lens. You put this guy right on top of your beacon and get this crazy effect. For me, it was a full new row of extra hearts. That made me super excited to go and collect more crystals. I needed 2 more crystal types because the other 2 beacon lenses are made with 2 different materials. I then collected a bunch of sugarcane, made a ton of firework, and went to the nether. Every single one of these beacon lenses takes about 4 netherite ingots. So I spent this entire time in the nether mining for a bunch of ancient debris. I think I needed around 28 ancient debris to be able to make 8 netherite ingot and fully max out the beacon. It took a little bit, but I collected the last few ancient debris I needed and made my way back home. Day 248, while my ancient debris was smelting, I decided to complete a few more advancements. It was something about these weird little pedestals. Then I was able to find finally make the last two pieces of the beacon lenses. These two beacon lenses ended up giving me absorption 2 and regeneration 2. After that, I used some of the loot from the bosses of mass destruction to make this table of elevation. This thing gives the player creative mode flight in a 7x7 area. It's so cool. Right after that, I used the loot to make a staff of suppression. Now this item makes sure no mobs spawn within a 65 block radius. I then moved my waystone. Day 249, I collected some warp blocks to make a decayed workbench. And then a purple altar. This way I could have an enderologist and a netherologist in the village. Day 250 to 250. 52. I had a ton of monastery maps, so I just followed one of these maps to find whatever this monastery thing was. Turns out it was just a giant village. This place was filled with a bunch of librarians with a farm right underneath. Right behind the monastery was a pillager camp. Since my pickaxe was really low, I decided it was time to just level it up here. These guys aren't even strong enough to do any sort of damage to me, not even the vindicators. <laughs> I basically just spent this entire day bullying a ton of pillagers. 
I think at one point it was probably 1 versus 100. I even stopped using my shield. I didn't even see any need for it. Just like that, I ended up defeating one more pillager camp. Before I decided to go home, I wanted to fly around to see if I could find any more cool structures. There was this weird area with a bunch of TNT traps, but I just ran through and just blocked with my shield. I was probably supposed to fall for these traps, but I just ran through straight away, breaking down everything. I hope the person who set up this entire area isn't mad, I just ran through this entire trapped area. After running through a bunch more traps, my reward was just a few diamonds and a smite book. Oh, that was a waste of time. Since it was nighttime, I decided to go out exploring a little bit more. Luckily, right next to the mesa was a desert biome and I found another structure. This was called the Tomb of the Arrogant. I built my way inside to this tomb to see what the treasure was in here. The center of this tomb ended up having four skeleton spawners which I ended up breaking and two levers. I stupidly pressed both. This ended up blowing up the front of the tomb. I ended up picking up the gold blocks and went upstairs to check this chest. I had enough of traveling so I went right back home. I had one thing I needed to do really bad and that was to finally fully upgrade my backpack. I took a full dragon's head but I think the storage is more than like two or three double chests. Day 256 to day 258. I made a bunch of night vision potions and went scouring around the ocean to look for an amethyst geode. I think it's just this mod pack, but these amethyst geodes are super rare. It took me forever to find one. Because I didn't really want to come back, I ended up taking almost every single block in here except for the budding amethyst blocks. With all of that, it was finally time to go home. I just needed the amethyst crystals. This trip was so I could make this cool necklace of illumination. Hopefully, it wasn't just a waste of time. These amethyst crystals take forever to get, but as soon as I put this necklace on, I realized it didn't do anything. I just wasted a bunch of time. Day 260 to 265, I did a bunch of research to figure out what the altar from the last 100 days was made for. If you throw the nether star at this altar, it summons the hovering inferno. This was a huge mistake. I thought this was just a regular boss, not one of the strongest bosses I would ever face. Luckily for me, I had potions of fire resistance and a totem so I could at least not die immediately. The Hovering Inferno's movesets were insane. It was non-stop attacks. I used my boat to keep a distance and finally be able to do some sort of damage to this guy. But there were so many problems, I couldn't even see where this guy was. That's when the Hovering Inferno launched itself at me and exploded. My sword ended up doing no damage because this thing also has shields around it. After a few minutes of fighting, I decided to eat my golden apple and attack the hovering inferno in the center. Even with my strength potion, I couldn't even get any sort of good damage on this guy. I should have done way more research. This guy was not only destroying the entire battlefield, but he was almost ruining my armor too. When the hovering inferno's health was half, it even started summoning evoker fangs right underneath me. I then came back to the middle to do more damage to the inferno with my sword. That's when another new move appeared. Now the inferno was launching shulker blasts. Luckily for me, this guy ended up being trapped right behind me, so with my bow, I was able to do a ton of damage. But I was quickly running out of golden apples, so I had to be really careful every single time I attacked this thing head on. The entire battlefield was being filled with all the Inferno's projectiles. This might be my last stand. But for now, I had to fight. I used all the pillars in this battlefield as cover. And doing that, I was able to lower the hovering inferno's health almost down to zero. But that's when it launched itself towards me, summoning evoker fangs. I had to retreat. After flying around for a little bit, I came back to kill the hovering inferno. Ah, uh, never mind. Apparently, the inferno cannot die. I then tried my hardest to escape this battlefield, but ended up getting pulled back non-stop. I had to fight this guy or it was my life or his. The Hovering Inferno was recovering all of its health, so I made sure to stay on top of the structure, and that's when I made the biggest mistake. I tried to escape once again, and I got pulled into a pile of red sand. As I was trying to break more, more and more of the red sand fell onto me. This popped my totem and ended up killing me. On day 265, I was killed by the Hovering Inferno. This is RL Craft, Minecraft's hardest mod pack. Everything in this world wants to kill you. My goal is to survive 100 days, and in those 100 days, I want to take down a few dragons, defeat a giant sea serpent, and make a small starter base. I think this is about attempt number 50. I'm already nauseous. That thing, what is this? What just hit me? It was like a bird looking thing. And just like that, my adventure started. The first thing I found was this little structure that I made my way up toward and couldn't find anything. Then this happened. What is that? What is that thing? Dude, it's got range attacks too. Is that a village? I might actually be able to get ready. 
This structure was fully protected, so it was a great place to get started. I came inside, grabbed a bunch of leather armor, wooden sword, bows, and arrows. In this structure, I managed to pick up something called a charged emerald, a bunch of food, this crafting table, and some bandages. I met one of these creatures called nymphs, which regenerate all your injuries. Then I started working on making stone tools when this happened. Whoa, there's two. Let's go, Golem. I then went to sleep so I didn't have to fight any more mobs. Survive day one, that's actually pretty decent. I'm gonna put one point of agility so I can use my bow. So day two started with a bunch more looting where I got some buckets and I got this really cool infinity book. Then when I was trading with these villagers, I noticed there was a giant structure right in front of me. But before that, I mined a ton of coal to get some levels. I used all my levels to get to defense level four and equipped chainmail armor instead. Then after I killed some sheep for wool, I decided to make my way over to this tower to see what was going on. Since these spawners were right outside, I was able to reach these guys. I even managed to kill a few wither skeletons and got a bunch of really good levels. Day three, I cleared my inventory because I wanted to explore a little more. Then I made a furnace so I can start smelting a bunch of potatoes for levels. I also made bandages and leveled up my defense all the way to level seven and my attack to level two. I had no idea what to expect in this tower. I first fought these crazy enchanted vindicators and then after killing this wither skeleton, I made another one which was blighted. I'm pretty sure at this point these guys are one shot to me, but I stayed my distance and I was able to take these guys out. <laughs> okay, this is what happens when you're really cocky. I decided to run inside to grab all of my XP when a skeleton spawned. At this point, skeletons are basically two shots, so I'm so glad that the last arrow missed. With just a few mobs, I was able to get 21 levels and I used all those levels to put into defense and attack and got them both to level 8. Because I was pretty confident still, I went to the back of the structure to break another spawner and check out these two chests. I made sure to grab every single thing in these chests and then run home before it became nighttime where I leveled my defense and mining up. Day 4, I went right back to the tower and found a spot where the Vindicators couldn't reach me, so I just grinded a bunch of levels. So far, things were going pretty good. I was able to make my way all the way inside and even pick up a bunch of the Emerald and levels. Then, this happened. Whoa, 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 Banshee. God, you guys are so annoying. Gotcha. Okay, noted. Get iron armor first before exploring a little bit more. These guys are still super dangerous. I then got my agility to level 4 and I was able to dodge. This is when I realized what the charged emerald was for. I accidentally clicked on it with the villager and it turned into a witch. After putting the fire out, I went back upstairs to take out this witch when it attacked me one last time. Oh, the place is still on fire. It's okay, well I need to find a new place anyway. While the village was burning down, I made sure to grab a bunch of my stuff and just decided to go away. But I realized now that I forgot my infinity book. I stumbled on towards this battle tower and when I was breaking these spawners, I got attacked by two reapers. If that wasn't bad enough, one of these guys were blighted, so I spent the rest of this time just running away until I got away from them. Then I went right back to this battle tower to see if I could get some quick XP, but when I went inside to collect my loot, I got hit all the way down to the next floor. At this point, I thought I was completely dead, but I managed to box myself in and slowly dig out behind me. Since it was pitch dark, I had to be really quick, otherwise it said something was gonna eat me. Day 6 to day 7, after I fully healed, it was time to get out of there, but along the way, I got attacked by this gigantic worm. I managed to escape it, then while I was moving along, I found this little shack that I was gonna live in for a few days. This place had its own mine, so I went down and found this gigantic lava pool. I even used my water to make sure it was safe on the way down. But then I got hit by a skeleton, so I decided to cover it up and move somewhere else to go mining. That was definitely the right choice since I found a giant stash of iron. I leveled up my mining and took every single piece of iron in this cave. While I was traveling, I already got an enchanted iron helmet, so I just made the rest of my iron armor and managed to put two more points into my defense. Day to nine, I was just navigating around this desert when I found this gigantic Spartan structure. Right now, I'm not even gonna try and look inside. I also found this little house where I had to sit in water because hyperthermia was absolutely ruining me. I then found this desert village where I took all their birch wood because that could be turned into paper. I also activated the waste stone and fought this joust alpha. Right after that I turned the birch wood into paper then made some lockpicks to check out this blacksmith chest. This chest was actually really nice, I managed to get my first diamond and a bunch of obsidian. Right after that, I found another chest with even more diamonds. This village also had this underground battle tower where I just got a bunch of quick levels. Then I made my way back up to this tower to grab some more arrows. 
Day 10, this is when things are about to get serious. I watched a bunch of videos on how to survive and the first thing I made was an iron spear. Then I went out looking for a plains biome. The first plains biome I found was conquered by a dragon so I had to be really careful. I entered this giant structure to grab an enchanted golden apple and a regular golden apple and then I noticed the dragon. Since this guy was stuck on the doorway, I was able to get some few hits in with my bow but once it spawned cinders, it was time to get out of there. I still wasn't fully done looting the village, so I decided to go to this armory real quick, grab some arrows, and then go. While I was sneaking out, I noticed there was another monster right next to me, a giant sea serpent. But then that night, I was able to grab some leather that I'd need for way later, and then I also found this little shack. Day 11 to 12, I was still in search for a plains biome, and along my travels, I upgraded my defense one more, found a desert village where I grabbed some paper, activated the waystone, and then made some lockpicks so that I could loot this chest. But this chest was really, really bad. It was just some wood. I then traveled across this ocean to find a plains biome where there was a bunch of maccas, and these guys drop a bunch of leather. But across the horizon, I noticed there was a dragon here too. But I'll worry about that later. Right now, I made a quiver so I can clear up my inventory space and store my arrows in there. After that, I made a canteen, some charcoal filters, and then upgraded that canteen into an iron canteen. I then made a sleeping bag and then on day 13 I was able to make a tool belt which this thing actually gave me an extra heart. Then I went around searching this area where I found another one of those gigantic towers. I began by breaking these spawners to grab a bunch of XP and then I found the vindicator area again but this area was a lot hotter so I had to place water down and just hit him from below. I managed to kill a bunch of vindicators and grab some really good XP but then a blood moon happened. I had to grab whatever I could and get back home before the, all the mobs started spawning. But I was way too late. I had to eat my enchanted golden apple because there were so many mobs and I had no idea if something was going to grab me. Luckily, I made it home and I was able to box myself in. The rest of the night, I just made little holes that I was able to use to fight some of these mobs and grab some XP. There were so many mobs around me. This was really a terrifying night, but I still managed to get a bunch of XP and get my defense to level 15. Day 14, one of these zombies dropped a backpack, something that I would actually really need, but I had no idea how to equip it, so I accidentally broke it. After messing around, I found out how to equip it, but it turns out it just took my chest plate slot, but I needed my chest plate more than anything. After that, I just grinded a bunch of these vindicators because I was really close to level 16 on defense, and once I get to level 16, I can actually make a diamond chest plate. After all of that, I managed to get a bunch of XP and level my defense up to 16 and make a diamond chest plate. Day 15 to 16, I saw some gold on top of this hill and I'd need gold way later to make some baubles. Then I found another desert village where of course I grabbed even more birch wood to turn into paper. I also lockpicked these little chests and found nothing really good. I then made a bunch more bandages, unlocked this waystone and found another taiga village. In this village, I leveled up my farming enough to collect sugar canes and realized I could finally trade in my paper. After trading a bunch of stuff, this happened. Okay, stay far away. I knew it. You take more damage from a pickaxe? You do. Day 17 to 18, every single biome I've been in has been burning and I finally found a little area that I could actually chill in. I mined a ton of stone and mined whatever other structure I could to actually make this place feel like a home. And because it was stone, it wouldn't burn down. It doesn't look like much, but as long as it keeps me away from the mobs, I was fully happy. I started chopping down even more and more trees to grab a bunch of wood, light up these areas, and make a ton of chests. After spending the whole day decorating the inside, I also made a little sugarcane farm. Day 19, I got my gathering up to level 2, made some shears, and started collecting a bunch of wool. I was running really low on bandages, so I just spent all the wool making a ton of them. Then for some quick XP, I just made a 9x9 wheat farm right next to the sugarcane farm. Day 20, I noticed there was a structure that was floating in water, so I took a bunch of blocks and went over to see what was in there. And inside there, there was a bunch of wheat that I obviously needed, some apples, and the best thing ever, birch wood. Day 21, I made a ton of fences, lured some sheep in so I'd have constant wool supply, then I noticed there was a battle tower in front of my house. Then I got some even more bad news, there was a dragon in front of my house, but luckily it couldn't notice me when I was that far away. While I was here, I managed to grab some XP from the spawners and block some of these holes in so the mobs didn't drop or jump up on me. You know, I always forget to manage for these little hardcore world enders, these baby zombies, and this guy was enchanted too, so it was ruthless. Luckily, I managed to kill it. Day 22, I killed some more zombies that were near my house, even this little baby, and then I picked up this silver helmet. This thing was actually pretty good, and then I went right back to the battle tower to break these two spawners that I had left from last time. But then I realized I was in a taiga biome, so I got some hyperthermia, so I went back home and decided to just go mining for a little bit. 
I picked a random location, but I realized there was this gigantic cave, which I dropped my torch into and slowly built down towards. Waiting for me was this stupid little creeper, and this guy, every time I hit it, he gave me blindness. Luckily for me, I managed to take it out with my bow, picked up this common crate, and even got some diamonds. Day 23, before some of these ridiculous mobs started spawning, I decided to just get out of there, and right next to my house was another battle tower. I might be crazy, but I actually kind of like these underground battle towers a little more. I probably just haven't cleared enough yet. I then used these blocks to cheese these zombies and I was able to get a bunch of good hits and some really good levels from these guys. Right now my biggest issue are these stupid cave spiders and these guys would always just come up and ruin the fun and they did so much damage with poison. Day 24, speaking of cave spiders, when I broke it open another enchanted cave spider decided to attack me. As I was retreating I was able to take it out and it dropped an insane bobble, one of the things I actually needed, a bazaar. Now this thing means I have immunity to poison, which is really useful. Since I didn't go home with the mining trip, I had 5 diamonds which I used to make diamond boots and a diamond saber. After that, I leveled up my attack all the way up to level 16 so that I could use this diamond saber. Rest of my levels I put into magic to help with my enchanting later. Day 25, I made an iron tower shield, grabbed some squid ink to make a unique atlas and I was able to mark my home and some dragon spawn areas. Then while exploring I found this Miramax cave and these guys were super tanky. I spent the rest of this day just slowly walking backwards and trying to kill them. Day 26 I spent this entire day just wandering around filling the atlas near my house. Then I found this nice little structure where I grabbed a bunch of skeleton skulls and because it was so hot I decided to come back home. Day 27 to day 28 I went right back to this battle tower but first I had to mark it down on my atlas. This skeleton was super strong, one shot of this thing even caused lightning strikes. I had to go right back up and then put the fire out. After I looted the next chest, I went down one more floor and then it was just back to the same old cheesing the battle towers. I just placed a few slabs and killed every single one of these mobs. This is by far the easiest way to get XP. I just needed some XP to get my magic all the way up to level 12 so I can start enchanting. Day 29 to day 31, I got my magic up to level 12, made some diamond leggings and used the last few diamonds for an enchantment table. After that I spent the rest of these days collecting a bunch of bookshelves and leather more importantly to max out this enchantment area. Somehow I lost my bow so I had to make a brand new one and then when I was harvesting my farm I got attacked by a spriggan. If I kill too much I'll have way too much chaotic energy. Day 32 I got scammed, I made a hopper and a barrel so I can cheese this battle tower but when I went all the way upstairs to break these spawners and fill these holes I realized there was no battle tower golem and a dragon attacked me so I couldn't even get the chest either. I was not ready to fight a dragon so I just healed and ran all the way back home. So I gotta stay away from this guy cause I'm pretty sure it'll one shot me. <gasps> that is a dragon. So I'm trapped between two dragons and a sea serpent, this game is ridiculous. I had to be very careful so I butted away from the sea serpent and I found this floating house structure. I then went upstairs and took a bunch of arrows from these traps and was able to take out the wither skeletons that were upstairs. These guys weren't too strong and they dropped something I really needed, a bunch of wither bones. Day 34 to day 36, there was another floating structure right next to the house where I grabbed some ender pearls and then I went over to this desert pyramid but before I could even loot anything I got attacked by this thing called a sylph and these guys packed a punch so I had to just get out of there really really quick. Across the sea I fought this gigantic leaf monster looking thing but it was trapped in the tree so I was able to take it out really easily. Then I found this really good pair of boots in this graveyard and I tamed a horse. Then this horse and I adventured for a few more days when we stumbled upon this giant structure that I think was called a kingdom. There's probably so much loot in here that I didn't even explore but the most important thing were the fishermen and the fletcher because they buy a ton of string. Right before I decided to trade with the villagers I went to check out this big tower and in this tower were a bunch of blocks of lapis that I would need for later. So you guys are witnessing the biggest market collapse of this villager economy. I collected a ton of white wool, I think up to 4 stacks. Then I turned all that wool into string and just started exploiting these trades with the fishermen. And I just kept rinsing and repeating this for 2 days straight but the best trades I got were from fletchers not fishermen. After all of that I think I ended up with almost 2 stacks of emerald and 42 levels and then I decided to go home. The journey home was pretty scary cause I was trying to avoid the giant sea serpent that was in the waters but as soon as I got home I was able to make a potion ring. This one gave me some attack speed so I decided to make some more baubles. First up was this emerald ring. That emerald ring gave me 6% attack damage and after that I was able to enchant a bunch of books and get these insane stats on my boots. 
day 40 to day 45, I got protection 4 on a new set of chest plates. I then made an emerald necklace, which gave me one more heart. Then I went traveling to the village one more time. But this time, it was to collect a bunch of strings, not for emeralds, but a ton of arrows. Almost every single villager in this kingdom was basically maxed out, so I had to go to a brand new village to trade a bunch of strings, and it took me a long time to get back home. I then upgraded my quiver so I could store even more arrows, then I started enchanting my saber, which I got lifesteal on, and got these stacked diamond leggings, then this happened. Ah, Sharknado! Jaws are coming for you! Yup, my first mob event, and these were floating sharks that were just coming towards me. Luckily, I had a shelter to stay in, and I just began enchanting a bunch of stuff, and once they stopped spawning, I was able to take a few of them out and make a switch bow, which I got power 4 on. Day 46, at this point, I had no idea that this structure was super OP. I just thought it was another giant battle tower. I tried to take these guys out, but these mobs did not stop spawning. I mean, there were infinite amounts of these guys, but my life steal kept me alive for the most part, and I was able to just slowly block these mobs off and take them out. You know, no matter how many times these guys almost ruined my armor, it's always kind of worth it because killing these zombies, I got a ton of heart crystals which I turned into a heart container. I had to make another diamond chestplate and enchant that, but another heart was kind of worth it. That night, I also killed this trumpet skeleton which dropped a pickaxe with the enchantment diamonds everywhere. And just by mining coal, I was able to get enough diamonds to make a helmet, enchant that bad boy, and make a diamond strength and longbow. After that, I put the rest of my experience into agility so I could use this bow. Day 50 to day 53, I found this really weird desert village which was next to a snowy taiga. I also picked up this thing called an oak crate which is like a mini shulker box. Then I went over to check this battle tower out. In the beginning it was kind of easy. I made a little hole and I took out these tiny little zombies but when I actually started getting the real hits in this farm, I noticed some of these zombies had a sticky ability, so they just started taking all of my diamond weapons, and then this happened. Turns out a blighted zombie broke through this with his gas ball, but the worst part was, one of these stupid zombies has my lifesteal diamond saber. Luckily I managed to kill it after running away, and I was able to get one of the best baubles in the game. So this bauble gives you infinite oxygen and better swimming. I then went right back to the battle tower, broke this spawner, and killed this zombie which had my diamond saber. Now it was time to take down this battle tower. I always make sure to place slabs down so the zombies can't reach me, but the same thing doesn't really work for spiders. For spiders, you have to use upside down stairs. I did that, killed a ton of spiders, and finally started getting to the really good loot. You know, now that I don't have to take poison damage, these spiders are actually really easy to take out. I also took out a bunch more skeletons, and I checked out one of these chests which was stacked. I then leveled up my mining so I can use this diamond pickaxe and just took down this final floor but I didn't go any lower since I didn't want to fight the tower golem. Right after that I was able to make a brand new heart container and just like last time every single piece of my armor was almost broken. But before I went home I went back to the giant village to collect a ton of books. As soon as I got home it was time to make a new bauble. I made this potion during a speed which now gave me permanent speed and I had to remake my diamond armor and enchant my diamond bow. I also made a diamond shield and then I got a bunch of good enchantments. I actually ended up better than I was. I then went right back to the terrible battle tower in front of my house to grind a bunch of levels and after that I was able to get efficiency 4 on my diamond pickaxe and education 2 on my diamond saber. Day 58 to day 62, a lot of things happened. I found out the guys that were poisoning me in the beginning were these things called cockatrices. Then I went right back to the first battle tower I ever saw in this world and for some reason these guys were really really strong. There were a ton of mobs, even some of these blighted dudes too but luckily with lifesteal I was able to take a bunch of these dudes out and make it pretty deep into this battle tower. And of course after fighting a bunch of these mobs that had the sticky ability they kept taking my diamond tools and broke all my diamond armor once again but I was able to make a brand new heart container and get another heart. Then on the way home I equipped my stone of the sea bauble and now this is my favorite way to travel in this entire game. You're so fast underwater. Now that I was actually strong it was really time to take down a dragon so I put sharpness on my sword, got protection 3 and protection 4 on basically all of my armor and then I went to the village to stock up on a ton of arrows. I also killed these siren for the shiny scales later. Day 63 to day 64, I decided to aggro the dragon but this one fire breath kind of reminded me it was still really strong. So I decided to stay pretty far away and I was able to get it to land. As soon as it landed I equipped my stone of the sea bauble and just two more shots and I think this dragon suffocated and my arrow managed to kill this thing. Then it was time to harvest the dragon. I managed to get two bottles of fire dragon blood and collect every single scale and bone this level 3 dragon had. 
Then I made a dragon scale chest plate and dragon scale leggings. I would need to get to level 24. So I went back down to a battle tower and just started grinding a ton of levels and putting all that XP into my defense. You know, I hope I'm not the only one. Now that I'm a lot stronger, these battle towers are actually really fun to go into. There's so many mobs, you get so much XP and loot, and I was able to get my defense up to level 24 and make another heart container. Day 65 to day 67, so I've been marking a bunch of dragon spots and I went to fight another dragon. This was a green fire dragon, and this guy, for some reason, was a lot stronger than the other dragon I fought. I'm still confused because this dragon was the same level 3 dragon as the last one, but this guy was way more aggressive. Luckily for me, there was a river right next to me and with my stone of the sea bobble, once I got into water, I was basically super speed. I only had 74 arrows left and after sleeping, I managed to take this dragon out. I didn't even realize I killed it because I was trying to dodge its attack. This guy was super OP, I mean it was really hard to take this thing out, but I managed to grab a ton of dragon scales and some dragon bones. I only had 58 arrows left, but I decided to also take down this sea serpent that was right next to the desert pyramid. And by some miracle, I was able to take this guy out with just a few arrows. I then picked up the sea serpent scale and it was time to head back home. Day 68 to day 69, it was time for huge equipment upgrades. I made a bunch of dragon scale armor and some tide guardian armor mixed in with it. I also started redoing my baubles and got a bunch of really good health improving enchantments. Some of those baubles made me faster, some of them gave me more heart, but ones like this moderate quiver got me undying, which was by far the best one. I also wasted a bunch of diamonds on the stupid shield. I got this crazy helmet, protection 4, un uh, respiration 3, unbreaking 3, aqua affinity, and it's lucky. I don't know what that means, but it's lucky. Right after that, I combined two tide guardian boots together and decided to check out one of these towers, but this place for some reason just spawned infinite amounts of vindicators so I had to just go away. But that XP was really needed because I needed to get to level 24 so I can use this flame dragon bone sword. Day 75 to day 79, first this happened. Winged venom, acid rain. I guess it was time for another mob event and these guys are really strong and weird looking but what was worse was the hyperthermia. I had to find a warm biome to sleep in because I would not be able to sleep with the damage. Because it was so cold right near my base after exploring this ocean structure, I just spent these entire few days just chilling around very warm biomes. But when I was near the snowy taiga, I was able to upgrade my attack to level 24 and use my new flame dragonbone sword. For the next few days, I just wandered around these ruined battle towers and this sandstone battle tower. Luckily for me, I had enough armor to take these guys out pretty easily. Speaking of armor, it broke again, but like last time, I also had a bunch of heart crystals to make a heart container. I then came back home, combined two dragon bone swords together, and remade my Tide Guardian gear. Right after that, I made four golden apples, an empty dragon canteen, and made my way up to this floating water structure. Killing all those mobs, I was able to make one more heart container. Right after that, I then went back to the giant village to stock up on arrows. While I was trading with these villagers, a blood moon happened, so I had to just defend this village from a bunch of mobs. During that blood moon, I killed these things called wargs, then these chupacabras and whatever this really gross looking thing was. With all those levels, I was able to enchant my new pickaxe and finally deck out my third set of Tide Guardian armor. Day 84 to day 85, I got lured in by a bunch of sirens which I managed to kill and pick up the shiny scales, then I took down the cyclops in its own den. I also managed to take down this hippogriff and I fought this blighted witch who managed to drop a ton of XP. Day 86 to day 88, while looking for librarians I only found cartographers, but along the way I grabbed some grapes and I even took down like 24 blocks of gold. And as soon as I found a librarian, with my luck it turned out this guy's trades suck. Later that night, I found a dragon carcass. I harvested everything I could and in the morning, I realized there was a huge dragon duel happening. I had hypothermia, so I had to just go away real quick. After healing, I went to check out the battlefield when I realized the ice dragon destroyed this fire dragon. Even though the ice dragon got a surprise attack on me, I managed to pick up all the pieces of the fire dragon and take it all the way back home. Then once again, I made some brand new dragon skill armor and I enchanted it with some really good enchantments, especially that strength and vitality one. In 91, while setting up my nether portal, I had this happen. Tsunami! Brave the storm! Yup, it was another mob event, but these guys were all water-based creatures. They were pretty easy to take out. The most annoying thing was they would give you like weight 4 and paralysis so you couldn't move for a little bit. Once they stopped spawning, I managed to kill so many of them, I got a brand new knowledge rank. They also dropped a bunch of gunpowder and glowstone so they'll be really useful for potions later. Speaking of potions, I went to the nether to collect a bunch of netherwort and bone mushroom spores. I made sure not to stay too far away because the nether is like a big dungeon by itself. 
Once I came home, I used the bone mushroom spores and the dragon heart to make potions of mending. Day 92 to day 95, I learned what luck does and I just decided to drink my potion and find brand new chunks, but along the way I found another red fire dragon. I managed to do a lot of damage with my bow alone, but as soon as I got to the water I was able to not take any damage from the dragon's fire breath. Then it was easy to take it out, collect some dragon blood and some dragon scales. I then used all my cooked maca meat to make these things called bulwark burgers. So with these absorption hearts it was time to take on an underground dungeon. Now this dungeon was really scary, there was like every single type of mobs I could find. A bunch of wargs, hundreds of zombies and the worst of them all, some spriggans. As you start getting deeper, there was even more and more different looking mobs. A bunch of darklings, those centipods, some more chupacabras, and basically these things called ants which are just walking trees. I then drank my potion of mending, went back upstairs to kill a bunch of macas for maca meat, and then I put 23 levels into my iron skin passive. After that, it was right back to a battle tower where I could upgrade my farming all the way to like level 19. Day 96 to day 98, it was time for the wine production, and oh my god, these things take forever to produce. I also got this totem of undying, I think I forgot to show you guys, but I drank one of my wine which was pretty poor quality and I got nausea for like 4 minutes. So with the poor wine, I wasn't really able to use the wine to take on this 4 tower battle tower. In the last 2 days, I drank my potion of mending, my potion of strength, and my bulwark burger plus my paleo salad to see if I could take down this 4 tower battle tower. At first, before the mobs really started spawning, it was really easy for me to get to the 3rd level. Then the witches started throwing bombs at me and also a bunch of wither skeletons and vindicators started jumping in too. If things couldn't get worse, one of these witches gave me the spinning effect so I basically couldn't control where I looked for like 40 seconds. After healing outside, I went right back up to the 3rd floor where I took down this diamond armor zombie and as if things couldn't get worse, there were now vexes also attacking me. I guess just to make your life harder, they even gave Wither Skeletons diamond axes, so I had to retreat one last time and finish my last few potions. Then this was basically the final straw. One of these blighted reapers gave me fear too and while I was eating my golden apple, I got attacked by a wither. So I decided to just call it quits for this battle tower. There's still so much left for me to do in 200 days, but for now it was time to just rest. I had to survive 200 days in RL Craft. This is Minecraft's hardest mod pack. In these 200 days, I have three goals. Defeat Rahovart, the lord of the underworld. Then defeat Asmodeus, the demonic mastermind. Last but not least, I also want to defeat Amalgalich, the devourer of souls. Day 101, I got straight back to work. I upgraded my tool belt, made an obsidian skull, and used the rest of my blaze powder to make a potion ring of strength. I reforged it to get undying on this potion ring, then I went to the desert to check out the Spartan structure one more time. I went to kill a bunch of magma cubes, but literally nothing spawned. So I grabbed a bunch of gold and used that to make a ton of golden apples. Day 1 or 2, I went back to the giant village structure, grabbed a bunch of wool and books so I could make a ton of bandages, then as soon as I got home, I used this return scroll to go pretty far away. I was looking for new structures and a bunch of maca meat. On day 103, after exploring and killing a bunch of macas, I found this floating structure, but this place was surrounded by like 6 dragons. I grabbed an enchantment table, a bunch of nether wart, and when I went back outside, there were so many dragons in every direction. I then found a village that was getting burned down by this dragon and this guy was basically unavoidable. So I retreated real quick, grabbed a bunch of food and potions, then I went to take this dragon head on. That obsidian skull makes fighting dragons so much easier, so after I took out some elementals, I went right back to take this guy on one more time. Before I even knew it, I was able to just melee this dragon and take it down with my sword, I didn't even need my bow. I then brought a bunch of glass bottles to collect a bunch of dragon blood and everything else this dragon had. Day 104, turns out there was another dragon in this village, I didn't want to fight it so I came home, used a bunch of spectral silt to get undying on my obsidian skull and my bazaar. I completely forgot to record the next few parts, but I'll explain to you everything that happened. I took down a battle tower, I got undying on the rest of my baubles, which just required gold and leather only to reforge. That battle tower also had an Aussie liner, which I put on my chest plate. I also captured two Maccas and got a cracked black dragon scale. To make up for that, on day 105 and day 106, I went to take down another battle tower. This place had some really cool enchantment books, and I fought a bunch of blighted guys. I even made a super stupid mistake and trapped myself with a blighted scale. Skeleton. After taking down all those floors, I made it down to the bottom two floors. I could even see the battle tower golem, and this is when I made a stupid mistake. I completely forgot that the second last chest could activate the tower golem, and I thought I was safe just standing up on the slab. 
Once the golem knocked me down, I realized I had to fight, otherwise I would die. And this guy kept stomping on me. It was actually not too hard. My dragon bone sword was really strong, and I managed to grab all the loot that was in this battle tower. This place also gave me a bunch of recall potions, and these things are so useful. Day 107 to day 108. Now that I won't die in one hit from everything, I actually wanted to go explore a bunch of new structures. First up, there was this floating structure where I broke the spawners, then I jumped all the way down to find another structure in the water. This place had a waste stone that I activated and then I found a pirate ship and this pirate ship was a bunch of zombie spawners so it was a bunch of free XP for me. So now I know never to get Depth Strider and the Stone of the Sea. For some reason it makes you kind of slow in the water. I then stumbled upon this giant island where I found a huge sea serpent and a battle tower. This guy trapped himself in the sand and it did a lot of damage but I managed to kill it even with my sword. After killing the sea serpent, I put like 37 levels into iron skin, dude, that took me forever to get. But I went right back into this battle tower. I spent a few days in this battle tower, it wasn't too hard since my sword is super overpowered, but the problem was, my armor still doesn't have mending or anything. I then picked up a pretty cool bauble, this was an ender queen's crown. After that, I swapped to my diamond saber because it had lifesteal and I really didn't want to go through all the healing myself. I then picked up a wither skeleton skull and put like 43 points into iron skin. After that I ate my enchanted golden apple and was easily able to take down this battle tower golem. This is when I realized people really don't like to fight the battle tower golem because it explodes the entire battle tower. I fell down but I was able to come back up, use one of this chest to sort all my items out and then I took everything that I needed, came back home and was able to enchant my sword with vampirism too. I then used my dragon heart to make potions of repairing to help repair my armor. Day 111 to day 113, all those potions of mending ended up repairing my armor a lot. Then I made potions of night vision and I wanted to see what these underwater doom like dungeons were like. Before all the mobs spawned, I was able to pick up a ton of golden apples from this chest. But once these guys started spawning, I got mining fatigue and I realized these guys did so much damage. So I had to come up to heal. While I was healing, another stupid thing happened. This red sea serpent jumped up out of the water and started attacking me. And this guy shred through my armor and almost killed me. Luckily, he got stuck in the sand and I was able to easily take this guy out just with my sword. Since I'm kind of in the mid game area, it was time to get an avian saddle. And the way to get that is to kill a troll. Luckily for me, I was in a cold biome and I had looting three. I killed this troll and managed to pick up a ton of troll leather and troll tusks. March of the Gorgamites! Watch them crawl! Yep, it was time for another Lycanite mob event. And these little things, I couldn't even see them. They did so much damage. Thank goodness I had Vampirism 2 on my sword. They ended up giving me a ton of stone though. I also got started on making some avian treats. Right after that, I went down to this dungeon to grab some more loot. You know what the funniest part is? Every single one of these mobs were weaker than those Gorgamites. I got a bunch of cool advancements and I kept moving forward into this Doom-like dungeon. I think this is Doom-like, I don't know the difference between Doom-like and Rogue-like, people just have different names for a lot of dungeons. There was some pretty nice loot in this area, I even managed to grab an enchanted golden apple. But once these invisible grooves were coming here, I knew it was my time to get out of here really quick. I then started killing a bunch of Ari Sor for the Ari Sor meat and that night I wanted to fight a bunch of husks for the forbidden fruit bauble. I ended up getting nothing to drop really nice but I found a village and guess what, this village was overrun by a dragon. This guy wasn't even that much of a challenge, his burning damage didn't do anything because of the obsidian skull and once we got into the water I was able to speed through and take this dude out super easily on day 116. The dragon sank all the way to the bottom, I then picked up all the scales and activated this village's waystone. I'm so glad I saved this village because one of these guys sell mending books, as you can see I was super excited. I had to be super careful so the first thing I did was rename this waystone into mending guy. I then went straight home, made warp scrolls, tons of paper and on day 117 it was time to get every single mending book this guy had in stock. Because I kept leveling up the trade, the villager ended up also getting to full health. I was then able to put mending on every single piece of my armor. Then I made a bunch more avian treats and also put mending on my dragon bone sword. Day 118, this pharadon thing ended up killing all of my maccas, so I had to lure all these guys back in and trap them into this little pen. I then made a flame dragon bone spear and made this other reforging thing. I then used all my dragon bones to get a legendary dragon bone sword, then I just started getting whatever was good because I didn't have enough scales for the armor. 
Day 119 to day 120, it was time to tame an avian. I accidentally made two soul gazers, but I used one to make a soul stone. Then I went to look for this thing called a Stymphalian bird. I remember one of these things hitting me. It ended up hiding under this tree and I was able to make an avian saddle. Right after that, I went to quickly take down another battle tower that was right next to where this bird was. For some reason, when I got to the second level, I didn't even pull the chest, but the tower golem was already aggro towards me. I managed to take this guy out pretty easily and grabbed all the loot that I possibly could. I had to jump all the way down because this battle tower was just exploding, but I used this chest one more time to sort all the items, then I came back home. As soon as I got home, I met this rock, and this guy was level 3, which is pretty lucky for me right now. I managed to tame it, put an avian saddle on, and I also soul binded it. Day 121, I made a diamond pet armor, put that on my rock, plus a chest, then I went to see if I could cheese this mega battle tower. To make everything easier, I got the obsidian smasher perk, I went inside, destroyed all the spawners, and tried to cheese this battle tower golem. But these tremors were hitting me, and then I accidentally spawned an Argus, and oh my god, these things are ruthless. I'm pretty sure this golem was blighted, so I decided to just call it quits for now. Day 122 to day 123, instead of that mega battle tower, I decided to check out this 4 tower battle tower instead. The first thing I did was clear out this underground area, I destroyed all the skeleton spawners and grabbed a bunch of really cool loot. Then I was finally able to make my way up this 4 tower battle tower. So the issue right now is never the vindicators and zombies, these guys are super easy to take out, this is the real problem, these witches, and some of the effects these things give you are ridiculous, I managed to stay back and I was able to slowly take him out. The next floor of this battle tower was somehow protected by a force field, so I couldn't really take down these spawners, so I grabbed my rock and decided to take down any of the towers that I actually could. These places had some pretty decent loot, I got some really cool ancient tomes. On the way back home, I stopped right back to the Spartan structure and realized these walls are filled with gold. I mean, I took so much gold, I think I had almost three stacks of gold and like a stack of emeralds. Then just for fun, I found another battle tower and the best thing about this, this place was filled with blazes, so I grabbed a ton of blaze rods. Then that night, I found a bunch of dragon carcasses. I also stopped by the first village I hid in and grabbed my two infinity books. Then I found a level 5 dragon bone and dragon skulls. I also found these defiled lands, but I really didn't want to explore that right now. I went home and made a heating coil instead. Day 126 to day 128. While I was traveling around, I found a Lycanite's dungeon in the sand, and then I actually went looking for where 00, zero was on the coordinates. I marked it down just to see how far I've been traveling, and then I found a battle tower. Inside this battle tower, I took down a bunch of blazes, and I decided to make it back out where I found a ton of dragons. But it was super cold, so I didn't really want to fight them. I spent the rest of these days in these defile lands. I collected a bunch of this ore, fought this vapulo thing. And after killing a bunch of these mobs, I managed to pick up some foul slime. But this area was way too cold. I had to go to a warmer defiled lands. And over here is where I got a ton of foul candy and I spent the rest of this night just breeding a ton of bookworms. Day 129 to day 131. Basically the goal of these defiled lands is to get a golden bookworm and some scarlight. So I bred a ton of these guys. I then went underground to see if I could grab any scarlight. But these specters were really dangerous and it started getting dark so I teleported back home with my recall potion. Soon as I was home I made some dragon bone crossbows. I enchanted that bad boy. Combined a ton of books to get power 4 and an infinity and I just needed a few more levels. After killing a bunch of my maccas I managed to finally get power 4 infinity crossbow. I wish I knew about this crossbow method way before. All these dragons only took about like 15 shots with a power 4 crossbow to take out. I mean it was so easy, I just evaporated them. Day 131 to day 133, I just spent this entire time taking down a bunch of dragons and collecting a bunch of dragon scales. There was even this really cool dragon that was in this crater, and this is when I realized I was a little too overpowered. This dragon killed my mount and I came falling down, but the fall damage took only like 2 hearts. And once I was on the ground, it took a few more shots and this dragon was toast. This guy was so high up in the air, it took forever to come down, but I grabbed everything, came home to put all my items away, and took down one more dragon, but this guy was right next to a village. I managed to kill this guy, take the dragon blood and dragon scales, then the next day I went to take down the mega battle tower one more time. This Argus knocked me off again, so I decided to just go right back, and my next goal was to make an Onk charm. 
This crossbow is building really bad habits. After I bred some bookworms and killed some of these mobs, I went right back to hunting dragons. I mean, as long as I was in the air, it was super easy to take these dragons out. And even when they destroyed my mount, I was just able to just come right back in and take these guys out from the ground. There were two dragons hovering this entire mountain. I managed to take one down, but while I was looting everything, this other dragon was kind of ruthless with its attacks. So I had to teleport back home. Day 136 to day 138. Now I promise I'm gonna take down this mega battle tower golem. First of all, it knocked my mount down and I had to teleport back because it did a lot of damage and had hypothermia. But after I made some potions of cold resistance, I went back down and it was super easy to take this guy down just cheesing it from up top. Because this guy was just blasting non-stop, one of the unlocked chests before was broken up so there was only three chests for me to loot. I grabbed a bunch of nice ancient tomes, scarlet, and a forbidden fruit. After that, I was able to make a Scarlight Ring, which is like a Walmart version of a Ring of Regeneration. I then just used all of my dragon scales to turn all my things into Masterful, well as much as I could with the chest plate. Day 139 to day 142, I used the other reforging station to either get attack damage, guard, or health. Then of course, I went right back to dragon hunting. I mean, it was so easy, I managed to take out like almost 5 dragons in this entire 3 days. It actually feels really good taking these guys out because I know if they had the chance they would immediately destroy me. I also found another village that had two librarians, I'll level them up later. Inside I grabbed a bunch of unbreaking books and one of these mobs managed to kill a golden bookworm. So I got two scales and made a disenchantment table. Raptor Rampage! The hunt has begun. Every time a Lycanite mob events happen I realize that I'm still really weak. Day 143 to day 150, I found this nice waterfront area where I dug into and started working on a bunker. Thanks to those Gorgomites like a night event, I had a ton of stone and glass. I then started digging into another hole so I could make an enchantment area, but what took almost 7 days was basically moving all of my items into this area alone. And on day 150, everything was basically almost done. I had the enchantment area set up and the smelting and the storage area done as well. I sure hope I didn't build right next to a big giant dragon's nest. Speaking of dragons, it was time to celebrate by taking down another dragon. And while I was meleeing this guy, I managed to drop my sword and had to jump all the way down, grab it, and then kill the dragon. Right after collecting all of that, it was time to take on a wither. I needed a nether star for some baubles later. This guy ended up killing my mount, but before my mount died, I was able to put the finishing blow and pick up this nether star. I then built a nice little roof area for the entrance of my bunker, then I realized one more time that I actually had a stage 5 dragon head, so it was time to make a dragon's eye. For some stupid reason, I still kept the obsidian skull. Day 153 to day 155, I made a stack of diamond lockpicks, leveled up my magic a little more, then I realized the forbidden fruit was a lot better, and after that I went to kill a bunch of strays for rings of overclocking. Along there I managed to fight a bunch of wendigos, level up my melee damage, and even fight this ice dragon. I haven't fought these ice dragons in a long time. I managed to take this guy out pretty easily, collect some ice dragon blood, and then take down another battle tower. Those strays really didn't drop anything, so I was just going through battle towers hoping I could get the ring of overclocking here. I didn't get that, I got a bunch of cool loots, I still leveled up my random crits, and then I took down another battle tower just for fun as well. At least there was a bunch of glowing ingots that I could have. I also managed to take out one more battle tower golem. Then a blood moon happened. This was my chance to get a ring of overclocking, but along this entire blood moon there was just nothing but a ton of zombies. I mean I killed so many strays and still nothing. At least now I was able to reforge my baubles, put the disenchanter down and grab a bunch of cool enchantment books from weapons I couldn't mess with before. I also got a few more mendy books from the village right next to my house and I started getting ready to trade with a bunch of villagers. In order to take down these bosses, I needed to be stacked quickly. I started leveling up a bunch of villagers, I really didn't end up getting anything good. I even found this nice little kingdom where I collected a ton of their gold, got an efficiency 2 book and a multi shot book as well, but there was really nothing else. I thought my only hope was in this battle tower where I took down the golem, then I found a village that had two dragons surrounding it. Obviously I couldn't really resist, I took down those dragons, then I teleported to wherever I marked those two librarians, and this guy was a godsend, a vampirism 1 book and an advanced efficiency book. Day 161, I leveled up my mining to 24, made a dragon bone pickaxe and put advanced efficiency 5 on it. This thing was blazing speed. I also made a separate set of armor for the endgame boss fights. 
While I was trying to get some mending books, the villager right next to it also had Viper 3 books, so I grabbed a bunch and I went down to this Lycanite sand dungeon. The first thing I took out was this gilded great worm and after that I met this crypt executioner. Now this guy's really dangerous but he got trapped in his own water so I was able to easily take it out. This guardian dragon also didn't even want to attack me, I just stayed back, shot at it a bunch of times and I was able to take this guy out as well. I took all these soul stones and I used them all and I got a bunch of new pets. I got a giant chicken and I put Viper 3 on my sword. I don't know if this is a world record so don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure I killed close to like 10 dragons in one day. There were so many just bunched up together. After the great dragon massacre I found another mega battle tower where I broke into, destroyed the golem and finally was able to look at these chests. I found these vitamin things, a potion ring of reach which I immediately equipped and then I needed two chests for all the dragon equipment I had. I also managed to organize my inventory for this onk charm I'm gonna build later. Day 163, I whipped my cockatrice out, I put a dragon saddle on this guy but I realized it took up half the screen, it was super slow and the only benefit was a storage. But I still had to put it to the test so I took this bad boy with me to take down another dragon. After I took the dragon out, I went down to this friendly outpost and one of these guys was selling an advanced protection 4 book. I was super excited, I had to mark it down for sure. I recalled back home, grabbed a ton of emeralds, I summoned my rock and got back as soon as I possibly could. I needed to buy every single advanced protection book in this guy's stock. I then started setting up every single one of my enchantment books to get ready for the end game armor I'm gonna make later. Day 164 to day 168, I went to the giant village, grabbed a ton of emeralds and some mending books, then I started disenchanting all of my old stuff to get unbreaking books. After that I was able to make an advanced protection for dragon scale helmet. These things take so much XP so I had to find the best way to get some XP and that was to take down battle towers and a 4 tower battle tower as well. I killed some blighted witches, formed some vindicators and I was able to get advanced protection 4 on my chest plate and leggings. After that I only needed my boots left but I went back to the 4 tower battle tower and I started taking down all the end crystals and I was finally able to loot this entire place. Day 169 to day 170 I maxed out my boots, made some eyes of ender and a warp scroll in case I fell into the void. Right now my goal was to take down the ender dragon. I finally found where the stronghold was and I started placing my eyes down. I'm gonna be honest with you, this ender dragon fight was really tough. Not because the ender dragon but because the tons of Arguses and a bunch of specters that spawned. Destroying the crystals and taking out the dragon was the really easy part. The hardest part was figuring out how I was gonna grab the dragon scales and the dragon egg. I managed to just do a drive by and grab everything I can and just get out of there. I did not want to get swarmed. For the next few days I did nothing but fly around the void until I found an end city, then the grind started. It was time to kill a bunch, and I mean a bunch of shulkers. I needed something called a shulker heart and I swear to god I think I ran through like 4 end cities. With all the XP I collected from the dragon I put 74 points into combat which was my iron skin and a bunch of archery skills. After that I took down this battle tower that was in the end, when I resummoned my rock it turned out to be blighted. Then finally I got the shock heart and I was able to go home, I was sick and tired of this end dimension. As soon as I came home I made a black dragon scale, combined that with my bazaar I also equipped it, then I began disenchanting all of my loot I got from the end dimension. Then it was back to killing strays for the ring of overclocking. And on day 173 in the middle of killing those strays I took down a few dragons just for fun and then I began exploring some battle towers. Hopefully I could get some nice loot. But one of these things connected to a huge other dungeon and I fought a bunch of things. Feridons, Ventoraptors and whatever those dragon things were. But once the witch gave me a perplexity it was time to come home. And lucky for me I had a ring of overclocking. So I made a ring of free action now I had everything to make an onk charm. No more having to carry like 6 extra baubles. I then disintegrated my baubles, put 41 levels into combat and made a ton of shulker boxes. The next day it was time to test out this onk charm. I took down a dragon, went down to a battle tower and also went down to this doom like dungeon. I thought this place was flooded but it turned out just to be a desert structure. I grabbed a bunch of levels, grabbed some really good loot from these chests and I moved on to an actual underwater structure. When I had stone of the sea and depth strider I was moving super slow but now that I have underwater strider instead I was blazing through this area. I got 76 levels, teleported home, started getting some silver armor ready, then I disenchanted a bunch of books and even started on an endgame weapon. This is gonna be my ice dragon bone sword. 
On day 177, I realized I'm the dumbest person alive. While clearing out some cobwebs, I realized there was a level 4 dragon's nest right underneath my base. I took this guy out and once it flew above me, I thought my base was done for but it turned out to just miss it. I then flew on my rock and I was able to take down a level four dragon. Lucky for me, this dragon is also a female, so I collected a ton of skulls and a dragon egg for myself. I'll hatch that bad boy later. Also, this was the giant crater right in front of my base. Then I went down to the nether because I needed two things, nether rack and nether quartz. One for the baubles and one to hatch the dragon egg later. Then I came home, used the ender biotin so I could make a shield of honor, and I started my wine production. I also started working on enchanting my sword. I only had regular sharpness, not the other ones, but then the next few days, I filled an entire shulker box filled with all the dragons I could possibly collect. I also took out a bunch more battle towers and just kept collecting these dragon items. I had so many dragon skulls, I just started throwing a bunch of them out to make some space. I also took down a bunch more battle towers, and I was able to come home to put this incredible haul away. I then put the rest of the enchantments on my ice dragon bone sword. I only had regular sharpness anyway, so it didn't really make that much of a difference. I then got a bunch of these agility perks and started my wine production properly. After smelting a bunch of steel battle axes, I made a wither ring and used all of my dragon skills to get masterful armor. To test my new sword, I took this mega battle tower down. I destroyed this golem, and in these chests, I got one of the luckiest things ever, a cobalt shield. I was really happy. After that, just for fun, I decided to go down to the bottom floor and work my way up, taking down this entire mega battle tower down. After getting revenge on the mega battle tower, I made an obsidian shield, turned that into an onk shield, and also put looting 3 on my new sword. Day 186 to day 190, I made an advanced rune reader, started working on my endgame bow, and also finally started getting some good quality wine. Then I went to check out what a bunch of these boss bars are for. Turns out it's for this guy named Pong Kong and a bunch of malevolent observers. Pong Kong starts throwing a bunch of poop, but it also drops cocoa beans, which is pretty nice. Then whatever this princess thing was, I did not expect whatever this was to be a princess. The hardest bosses in here were definitely the malevolent observers, but I just kept my distance and I was able to take them all out and clear this Lycanite's dungeon. I managed to grab a ton of aberration soul stones and a bunch of diamond. I stupidly used every single one of my soul stones, which I just could have saved. Right after that, I killed a wither so I could summon a caca demon, mostly to get a demon soul stone, but I stupidly used it, which I could have used for Ravar, so I had to go back to the nether, take down a nether Lycanite's dungeon, and I started fighting a bunch of these really cool mobs. I got this really cool sin pendant which I can craft into something else better but in here I only got like beast soul stone and aberration soul stone not a single demonic one Day 191 to 193, finally, the final preparations. I took out another Kaka Demon for a Demon Soul Stone, killed a bunch of Withers, and collected a ton of Vebeko Mead. This way, I could make a Potion Ring of Regeneration, get some decent wine, and make a ton of Battle Burritos. I also made a bunch of Potions of True Shot, got Advanced Power 5 on my Dragon Bow, and I ran out of levels, so I had to take down a few dungeons. I got to level 50, and I went to another Spartan Structure, where I killed a ton of Magma Creams, and I was able to make an Enchanted Medkit, fully enchant my Dragon Bow, then then make a ton of golden apples and also enchant my medkit and make a demonic soul cube. And then it was time to take on Rahovart, so I made a pride pendant and a teddy bear, then I teleported to the nether to get this altar ready and buff up with all of my stuff. Even though Rahovart takes it out, I wanted to be able to do a bunch of damage on phase 1. So I completely forgot to take my potion or true shot and buff that up, but I was still able to get a bunch of hits on Rahovar. I stayed in this corner and even got hit by his huge green beam. Now that phase 1 is done and phase 2 started, all I had to do was just stay away from his green beam. I managed to chip his health down all the way to phase 3. Now the only thing stopping me was his stupid demons that would just keep hitting me from the side. As for Ravart, this guy is basically as good as dead. A few more shots and I took Ravart out and I picked up every single piece of that loot and 84 levels. I then finally came home and I was super confident to take on Asmodeus. I managed to get Undying on a bunch of my baubles as well as Healthy on the rest. I got Strength and Vitality on my chest plate and I was ready to take on this Crimson Epion to grab an Aberration Soul Stone and go to the end to buff up and take down Asmodeus, the Demonic Mastermind. This time I also remembered to take my potion a true shot. Asmodeus, Shabonic Mastermind. 
Then as Morius' arena started filling up the end near me, I started taking out some Arguses so I wouldn't get bothered. Then I realized Asmodeus was doing an unbelievable amount of damage. I mean, I it killed my mount and when I went down, this guy just shred through my advanced protection 4 armor and it just killed me. Can someone just explain to me if Asmodeus actually does that much damage? I mean, this was kind of really unfair for me. I survived 100 days in hardcore mod and Minecraft. This world is filled with mutants, dragons, and new dimensions. I have two goals for these 100 days. Complete all the overworld quests and build a base. Day 1, I immediately found a village and began looting. The first thing I found in these chests were a farmer's hat, and in the other one I found a leather worker's apron. Then after that I did the basics, make a wooden pickaxe, collect stone, and make stone tools. With these tools, I went exploring. I found this monastery that had an illusioner. Now this guy blinded me and summoned clones, so I had to just run away. Along this travel, I found this weird graveyard looking structure. Now these chests were actually pretty nice. I found an unbreaking 4 iron chest plate and I made my way inside where I collected this chest and I used all the strength to make a backpack for all the useless stuff. Day 2 turns out this house had a basement in there and in this basement there were two villagers that were trapped. That's none of my business because I found protection 5 diamond leggings and a diamond helmet. I'm already getting kinda stacked. I also grabbed the brewing stand, smelted some iron and used that iron to upgrade my backpack. Then after looting some more, it was time to go outside. That's when I got attacked by this crocodile. This guy lowered me down to like 3 hearts and when I was running away, turned out another bird was also chasing me. The rest of this day I was running away and I found another graveyard structure and in this chest I found a curse of binding diamond chest plate. I also made a shield and stupidly equipped the chest plate. Well after that at least I could make a bunch of iron tools and I went down to the basement one more time and in here I hit the jackpot. There were some netherite leggings just laying there for me. Day 3 I made a bucket and started going back to the mainland. I was sick and tired of being on this island but right before that I checked this pirate ship out and realized there were way too many mobs to fight so I just kept moving. And uh, literally 3 structures in a row I found another one of these graveyard structures but this one had a golden apple, a wither skeleton head and then I hit another gold mine. This chest had a ton of bottles of of enchanting and a totem of undying. It turns out I don't even have to hold the totem, it just goes in your charm slot. That night I also found this thing called a goddess statue, no clue what it does, I'm just gonna collect a bunch of spirit orbs. And on day 4 I found a perfect place to start building a house, so I cleared this entire area of all its reeds. There were also a ton of bears around so it was time to massacre the entire bear family, they ended up not doing a lot of damage. I also figured out that I'm trapped between two villages. But while I was here it was time to collect a bunch of spruce logs, these hay bales and even this blast furnace in this guy's home. I then made a sleeping bag and went to sleep for the first time. Then on day 5 to 7 it was time to make some shelter. I started by clearing the dirt away and then I grabbed a bunch of oak logs from the giant tree behind me and made a frame to start building this house. It was gonna be nothing too serious, I just wanted a small starter base that I can expand upon. I also killed my first monster and finished the roof. Day 8 I just expect there to be so much loot so I made a ton of chests and sprinkled the entire house with as much of this as I can and some armor stands for decoration. I also smelted whatever I could and started a nice little farm next to my house. Day 9 I collected enough seeds to fill out this farm, then I planted my sugar cane as well right in front of the water. After that this was basically the house. Just so I never get lost, I made a waypoint for my house and then I started collecting a bunch of wool so I could make a nice new bedroom. Day 10 to 11, finally time to explore some more. I made a gold backpack, now I had a ton of storage and while exploring I found this weird dungeon that had twisty staircases. Of course I went down and this turned out to be an underground dungeon. This place was filled with spawners and turned out these spawners give you spirit orbs. That's what I'm gonna need to collect a bunch of. I also found this destroyed library area where I grabbed a bunch of lapis and a free enchantment table. This backpack is the best thing ever, so when I started making my way down, I was collecting a ton of loot. I even got a brand new shield. After that, I made it to the bottom floor, and this is when tragedy struck. These skeletons were all enchanted, and they knocked me into the lava. I thought I was gone for sure, but my totem popped, and then I was able to place water down and barely make it. After hiding for a bit, they despawned and I was able to check this chest out and I got two diamonds. That was definitely not worth it. But before I left, I collected these cold deep stone and these expetrified orbs and put every single thing I had in my backpack. Day 12 to 14, I found a giant pillager structure and came back to my home to complete my first quest, which was to make a light and dark chest. I got this thing called a bounty board, placed it underneath my bed and I went mining all the way down to bedrock to place my light and dark chest there. I needed a bunch more pickaxes though cause I had no idea. So I gathered some food while I was at it, made some bookshelves, placed a diamond and went to the deep dark. 
I'm not even joking when I say this, I was actually shaking the entire time I was here. Luckily for me, I got this thing called a Skulko Finder so I could find where these monsters are. Some of these ores also dropped diamond blocks, so I was able to make all diamond tools and a chest. Do you guys see how many of those mobs are out there? I managed to take out a bunch of these zombies pretty easily, and turns out these wardens are actually way easier than what's gonna be in the new Minecraft update. I just had to stay in my hole, and I was easily able to take these guys out. I think I took down like four of these guys, and one of these dudes was even enchanted. This guy right here. Four wardens down. I'm pretty sure if I even got a little bit closer, they would all one-tap me. Day 14 to 15, I put a bunch of the junk away, and only kept the most important things i also grabbed a few lapis for enchanting made a light and dark chest and got out of there i was not ready to spend a single more minute in there as soon as I got home, I dug a nice little hole to get started on an enchantment area, but while I was getting ready, I looked at all my quest rewards and I got one free netherite ingot. Then I was able to complete this enchantment setup, replace the floors with deep slate to make it look nice and sleek, and it was done. I enchanted my sword, got looting 3 on it, then I enchanted my netherite leggings, I got protection 4. Day 16 to 17, I tested out my looting 3 sword, got protection 3 on my helmet, then I collected a bunch of lavender for purple dye so I could make a waystone in front of my house. While the stone was smelting, I went down to mine and I got these things called Stella Arcanums. Now combining these with Spectrified Orbs can make your items indestructible. The main reason I went mining was for obsidian. I would need three to make this waystone and I was able to place this bad boy right in front of my house. No more getting lost. Day 18, I made a bunch of warp scrolls, enchanted a chest plate just in case my curse of binding one broke and then I upgraded this workbench to crack a ton of geodes. Right after that, I made a diamond shield and I was ready to go out exploring one more time. This is when I found my first battle tower. Now these things are cool, there was a ton of spawners and I got this thing called a magnetic ring which was super annoying so I took it off anyway. These are just regular mobs so I wasn't too worried. I also got this really cool thing called the heart of the earth and I made it all the way to the top which had a waystone just laying there. Day 19 I found an underground village, clutched it down there, grabbed some flint and feather, made my own arrows and then I realized I could just buy it from this guy over here and then I found another one of these spiral dungeons. Day 20 to 21 I was able to break through a bunch of these spawners and make this thing called an exquisite ring which made me non-hostile to regular piglins. I also mined a bunch of these Stella Arcanums and found another dungeon combined to this dungeon. This is where I got some necklaces and some straggling chests had an enchanted golden apple and a fortune 2 pickaxe. Now that my backpack was getting filled it was time to go back home and dump off all this stuff. While I was there I made a netherworld farm, disenchanted a bunch of my stuff. So I don't know which mod it is but one of these things spawned these overpowered mobs. This guy launched me all the way into the air. I was so lucky I landed in the water and I just managed to kill him. Day 22 to day 23, I brewed a bunch of potions of fire resistance, made another portal and jumped straight into the nether. As soon as I was there, I got attacked by this crimson mosquito. Dude, this thing was disgusting. After killing this hoglin, I made my way into this nether structure and in these chests, I found something called a withered tome. When I activated, it gave me like 7 levels. Right after that, I was being chased by a piglin that was launching potions at me. So I jumped down to this structure and I started trading with these piglin locals when a piglin brood saw me and it was basically game over. These guys started running up at me and I had to build up and defend myself. But I was able to take these guys all out pretty easily once I got up here. Then I was sick of the nether and I teleported back home. Once I got home, I made these things called Eternal Stellas and I didn't know you could use them and it repaired my Curse of Binding armor. I'm the stupidest person alive. Day 24, I went overworld exploring. I found this really cool savanna biome and this weird stone tree structure. This place had a bunch of ores though, it was kind of cool. After taking some coal, I found these things called silver gliders, which look like mini dragons. I also killed this death worm, then I got humbled real quick. This tiny little snake gave me poison 3 and almost killed me. I got revenge on this tiny little rattlesnake and I found these huge giant dragon bones. That rattlesnake must have done this. Day 25, do you remember those overpowered mobs? Well, here's another one of these guys, and this dude was so OP. After I killed it, it gave me like 20 different advancements. Just look at this. I don't even know what level protection this gear is. Of course I had to put it on and then I found this flower temple, but I got a weird achievement so I knew there was another structure behind there and this place was ridiculous. I was running away from these netherite wearing piglins. These dudes were so OP. You know, I guess I just wanted to die that day because I went down to challenge these guys. I broke down the spawners and then I realized how strong these dudes were. Just with the pickaxe, it got me down to one heart. I managed to sneak past and finally make it through and I was able to heal and keep exploring. Day 26 to day 27, I made my way down to another dungeon and in the bottom floor, I saw a level 5 dragon lair. You can see the tail, this thing was huge. So it was time for me to go right back home. I then came home, got infinity on my bow, put power 3 on that bad boy, protection 4 on my boots, and I disenchanted a bunch of this OP gear I got. 
Day 28, I went grave robbing. Now, don't be mad at me, but this place had some really insane loot. I even got a Fortune 3 book from here. That night, I was just killing a bunch of mobs, hoping one of those lightning struck guys would spawn, and they did. This guy dropped an indestructible bow, which I was gonna disenchant later. That was kinda disappointing until I met this dude. This was Father Dinben. And if you thought any of these mobs were hard, I spent an entire day just critical striking this dude, and he still took no damage at all. But it was all worth it. This guy dropped two pieces of netherite armor and the chest plate was protection 6 and indestructible. So now I just gotta get this curse of binding chest plate off of me and I found the perfect guy to help me do it. There was this pillager that I just used to whittle down my armor all the way while I was just eating a bunch of food and once it broke it I put my new chest plate on and took this bad boy out. Then I used this eternal stella to repair all of my armor and by day 29 I already almost had full netherite armor. Then on day 30, I put protection 5 on my netherite helmet, disenchanted a bunch of this leather armor that had mending, and I also disenchanted that indestructible bow. Then I used my one netherite ingot to get full netherite armor. Thank god for those mending books, I put them on my helmet and my boots and now they were basically indestructible too. I also got rid of my bad omen effect and made a ton of golden apples. That night I met another one of these guys called Rose the Odd Smelling and I felt really stupid since this thing just dropped an indestructible pair of boots that I couldn't use my netherite on. I disenchanted a few more stuff and I made this thing called a charm of treasure hunter. Day 31, I made a tool belt, a bunch of potions of fire resistance, and then I started messing around with my sword on Tetra and I completely ruined my sword. It got rid of a bunch of that Slayer enchantment, but it still has looting 3, which is kind of nice. I then bought a bunch of these uh, bottles of enchanting from Mr. Goblin over here, and I put mending on my netherite leggings. Then I moved my nether portal pretty far away to see if I could get a better spawn, and it was even worse. Day 32, I found this nice little mushroom village where I killed this piglin brute that had a mushroom head on it. I then used this waystone to come back home because my pickaxe needed to be honed. Whatever I did to the sword, I also did to the pickaxe, and after mining a bunch and grabbing some loot, I was able to hone this bad boy. Still have no idea how to work this mod, but I came home and I think I fully broke my pickaxe. Well, I mean, at least I got a new handle anyway. This is why you should always do your research, because my diamond sword is now a silver greatsword for some reason. Uh, well, at least I got a brand new diamond backpack. Look at the space of that. I also made this warp stone for infinite teleportation and I somehow turned my sword into a lead greatsword. But the good news is I got this feeding upgrade thing for my backpack and now as long as I had food in there, it would just feed me. I didn't even have to do anything. Day 35, I wanted to test this sword out so I went to a battle tower and this thing took forever to recharge. This sword was not optimal at all. I still managed to get on top of this battle tower anyway and while exploring the later on that night, I found another lightning struck mob. This guy was kind of a tank and I had to start using my bow, but while I was fighting it, I got hunted down by this mutant skeleton. And what's funny is, these guys are weaker than that little zombie over there. I then managed to pick up all those mutant skeleton limbs and then kill Sandy and pick up a sharpness 5 sword. Day 36 to day 38, it was time to take on another pillager tower. I'm now just fully using that sharpness 5 sword. It was kind of easy taking down the bow guys and then a bunch of these vindicators started pouring out. But that's not even the worst part. Somewhere, there was a bunch of evokers hiding and these guys just kept sending vexes. And these vexes are so annoying to take care of. The first floor was kind of tough, but I managed to take all those guys out and go up to the second floor where I grabbed even more loot and this thing called the Heart of the Golem. Now this thing was pretty nice. I then made it all the way to the top, took out some of these last few vindicators and I turned everything into blocks. Now my backpack was filled to the brim. I also got these tattered tomes and a bunch of bottles of enchanting. When I meant loot, I meant a lot of loot. There was so much armor for me to disenchant for better gear and I also got like 10 different totems. This leather armor had some crazy unbreaking levels, so bye bye lead great sword. And I also enchanted my shield. Day 39 to 41, I explored that really hard dungeon again, the one with those crazy piglins. After taking the guys on the top out, there was a huge hole that I jumped down in. Good thing I brought my potions of fire resistance. Now I think this structure was called a foundry, and this place had a ton of mobs. There was a bunch of these foundry guardians, which are just really OP blazes. There was also a ton of giant magma cubes, and these hoglin riding withers. But the chests alone made this entire journey worth it. There were tons of netherite ingot and even this spell stone called a blazing core. Then as I was looting, I got dragged in by something. It was like a pretty big mob. I had no idea what was doing so much damage. It turned out to be a mutant blaze though. This thing was really dangerous. It keeps launching you around, but it wasn't too tanky. So once I took it out, I had a huge scare. It slammed me straight to the ground, but good thing I ate my golden apple. Now that that guy was done, I looted the rest of these chests, which were pretty stacked, and I even had so much loot. My backpack was getting filled again. So I came home, made 10 netherite ingots, and I also checked out what these tier two chests were like. These were so big, so I made sure to use them for my enchanted books, 
and I put looting 5 on my new diamond sword. Day 43 to day 45, I made a bunch of obsidian ingots to craft an obsidian skull, and after combining that with an eternal Stella, I had full fire immunity as long as it was in my inventory. So now I can take on the tier 5 dragon. Just for fun, I attacked this tier 5 fire dragon head to head, but it all started going wrong when it launched me into the lava. Thank god I had that obsidian skull. This entire fight, I was more worried that my helmet was gonna break. It was kind of getting low. This guy did a ton of damage to my armor. But once I got on the same level as the dragon, I just meleeed it with my brand new sword and I was able to easily take it out and grab every single piece of its loot. I got really lucky, turns out this dragon was a female and aside from the huge amount of scales, I also got a fire dragon egg. So I set up a nice little area to hatch this thing. Then I waited for this bad boy to hatch and it used this dragon horn to keep it safe until I could feed it and level it up. But while I was there, I also upgraded my netherite bow, lured this sheep over so I could have a constant supply of new dragon meal. Day 46 to day 48, I found this huge tower and on top of that I grabbed the waystone and also found a paraglider in the chest. So I decided to use that to come all the way down and I placed the waystone a little bit lower. Turns out it was on top of a dungeon so I went down there, I got this thing called a four leaf clover and when I got all the way to the bottom I also accidentally killed a goblin. I then managed to clear this entire dungeon and teleport all the way back home where I honed my pickaxe. Still have no clue what it does but in the meantime I made an automatic composter for a bunch of seeds I had. Right after that, I massacred a bunch of these sheep, made a bunch of dragon meal, and fed my dragon for the first time. Day 49 to 50, I made tons of eyes of ender, put punch 3 and indestructible on my bow, and went out to find the stronghold. Along my travels, I found a slime island, got attacked by some sirens, and I also found a ice dragon's nest, where I destroyed this ice dragon, just mailing it. Once this bad boy died, I picked up a bunch of ice dragon scales, and speaking of ice, I also found a ice maze biome. This is going to be really important for a quest later. I then broke my way into this portal and finally found the portal room which I placed a waystone in front of. Right after that, I placed my eyes on the portal and jumped in. Turns out the end spawns are a little bit different. I was just in an obsidian box with no blocks or ender pearls, so I had to teleport back out, grab some blocks, and then come back. I also found this giant tower in the end, which I climbed up to, activated the waystone, grabbed whatever was in the chest, and I used this vantage point to take out every single one of the summoning crystals. Right after that, I jumped down to fight the dragon, but there was a mutant enderman in my way, and this guy started summoning a bunch of these shadow clones, and once I killed it, I thought of my hardcore world was done for. This thing just kept dragging me in and pushing me out. I thought I was gonna fall into the void. But I survived. I took out the dragon. All the XP went down the portal, but I was able to grab the dragon egg at least. Right after that, it was now the hunt for the Elytra Wings. So I took the portal outside to the end islands, grabbed my quest reward, which was a lightning dragon egg, and I finally, after two days, found an end city. So I knew that the end cities were kinda stacked, but I had no idea how stacked they were. I had so much loot, I put them all into a shulker box, and that shulker box in my back. Backpack. I also found the end ship and got even more loot and this thing called an extra dimensional eye and the elytra of course Which I teleported back home to and made a bunch of tier 4 chests to put all of my new loot inside of day 55 I made the elytra indestructible made a ton of firework and then it was raining So it was time to hatch my dragon egg while I was waiting I enchanted this pickaxe made it fortune 3 indestructible efficiency 9 and made it netherite as well And after that my dragon finally hatched Day 56 to day 57, a lot of things happened. I found this giant temple, which I looted the top floor chest only. I also found a waystone right next to it, and then I met Barako the Sun Chief. This was his village. Lucky for me, he was getting attacked by a cyclops, so he's already weakened. So right now, the only thing I had to do was take out some of his minions, and then Baraka would be wide open for the kill. I managed to take this guy out pretty easy, teleport near the end portal, and take my quest reward. The reason I'm here is because there's an ice maze biome, and I need this to grab a shell horn and summon Captain Cornelia. Along the way, I found this frozen chest that I couldn't open, and then I finally found the structure I needed, a shipwreck. And after taking these guys out, I managed to pick up the shell horn and grab a bunch of really cool treasure. Now with that horn, I just blew it in front of the water and then I got a message that was saying Captain Cornelia was awakened. Out of the water, this weird cosplayer scuba diver looking dude started popping up and it was really easy to take out. It even started summoning a bunch of drowns, but those guys just went down to the water. So I have no idea if I could even call this a boss battle, but Captain Cornelia was a really easy kill. I grabbed this frozen key and I used it on that weird chest that I couldn't open before. Inside this chest, there was this thing called a rune of the storm. No idea what that does, but I got a really cool advancement. I also then 
took my quest reward for Captain Cornelia and got this nice little scuba gear. I really didn't like the way it looked, so I'm probably never gonna use it. So I just came right back home, made a bunch of tier three chests and put a bunch of my new loot away. I also replaced all the cobblestone on my floor to stone bricks cause it looked nicer and I fed my dragon some more. Then that night I realized I kept seeing a night symbol on my mini map. So this had to be one of the bosses I needed, the Feroz Rotnot. This was a new quest I needed and lucky for me, it was right underneath the village I live right next to. So this guy's basically indestructible, especially if you hit him head on. But once he does those heavy attacks, you can go behind him and attack that sword in his back and do a ton of damage. So I did just that and took this dude out and I got a bunch of really cool rewards. I got his axe and a helmet and then I came home to grab these quest rewards. Cause I really like that axe, I enchanted it with silk touch and efficiency. Then I grabbed a bunch of emeralds cause I needed an oceanographer so I can grab a bunch of prismarine crystals. Turns out sea lanterns drop prismarine crystals so I got almost two stacks and made prismarite ingot and put them all on my brand new armor. So now my armor not only gives you underwater breathing but it makes you faster underwater as well. I then use blazerite on my sword and my pickaxe. I think this just smelts and cooks everything. Day 61 to day 63, I learned that you could make a remote storage system with a bunch of network cables. So I moved a bunch of chests to the left, connected them all to this giant storage network route and a request table. All I needed now was a remote control, but at this point, I didn't know you could force load chunks using this FTB mod. So I had a limit on how far I could actually reach my storage. Remember those goddess statue things? I completely forgot where the one near my village was. So I just spent the next few days looking around to find this thing cause they give you extra hearts. Day 64 to day 65, I found the goddess statue. I placed it right next to my house and I had 250 spirit orbs just from collecting the dungeons. So I had no idea using up all of this in the goddess statue would make me a god. Not only did this thing literally give me like three extra rows of heart, I also got this thing called a stamina vessel. I guess that's for the paragliders. I'm really not gonna use that. I have elytra wing, that's so stupid. I then made this thing called an explorer's compass and I use it to find where a frost moss spawns. That's my next boss I need to find. And this dude was so far away. I literally found every single ice structure and ice mob possible. I'm not kidding. I'm pretty sure I traveled like almost five or 6,000 blocks then I finally saw the boss bar appear on top of my head. I waited till the morning of day 66 to take this guy out. Turns out arrows don't do any damage and this thing keeps freezing you. So it's super annoying to take out. But as long as you kite it, you can do a ton of damage this guy. Honestly, I feel kind of like a bully. I really did not need those extra hearts. I was already basically unkillable. And uh, after a few more hits, I killed Frostmaw and grabbed its drop and turned out there was an ice dragon nest right in front of me. But my punch three bow was able to keep this dragon away and I took it out pretty easily. I then collected a ton of ice dragon blood, got my quest sword, which was an ice dragon bone sword, made an advanced feeding upgrade and went to the end to collect some endstone. Turns out if you have an enderologist, you can just buy gunpowder from this guy. So I made this thing called a quantum catcher level this guy up until I could buy a bunch of firework rockets and I kidnapped him. While this dude was in my inventory, I cleared a huge area in my old enchantment setup and I wanted to make a huge, huge area for both enchanting, putting a bunch of my enchanted books away and a villager trading hall area. Right now I only needed a few villagers so I placed like four spots and I replaced every single torch with lanterns and placed down a bunch of these workshops and also went to the village to kidnap more villagers. My librarian actually gave me a really sick trade. And I also grabbed this flute of friendship, which gave me the hero of the village effect. Uh, day 70, I had more fun with the villagers. I grabbed this Fletcher. I put him in a boat and let him get turned into a zombie. Then I cured him and I placed him back in his pen. Turns out this guy's trades did not even improve at all. What a waste of time. At least I was able to get more food and feed my dragon up a little bit more. Day 72 to day 74, I finally learned how to force load my chunks. Now I can access my inventory everywhere. I then found the perfect village to start a raid in. I used my raid horn to call a patrol and I got the bad omen effect and started this raid. The first two waves were really easy and it started getting a lot harder once a bunch of these crazy new mobs started spawning. There was even a huge squall golem, whatever this thing was. It was pretty easy to take out, but then the huge horde started coming in. Uh, basically the hardest part of this raid for me was finding out where these mobs spawned because some of them just spawned in a cave, some of them spawned in a hole, and some of these dudes are really cool. I've never seen mobs like this before, but after all of that, I managed to clear out this entire raid, get the hero of the village effect, and also take my quest reward, which is a bunch of really cool things. 
Day 75 to day 76, remember that huge monastery that I looted the top chests of? Well, it turns out those chests were the best chests. I went to take out this entire structure again and it was a huge waste of time. The only thing that was valuable was a ton of red and golden carrots. So I went back to the Baraco village where right next to it I found a lightning dragon nest. And I don't think I've ever seen this lightning dragon before. I don't know if I have, but I killed it, took a bunch of lightning dragon blood, and I found this gatekeeper which sold a blue journal. Day 77 to day 80, you know what I haven't explored a lot of? The nether. So I jumped in and the first thing I found was a structure that had two ancient debris and I found these weird piglin watchtowers and these places had some really good loot. I also managed to get my favorite achievement in the game. Right after that I found a nether fortress where I got this thing called a keystone of the oblivion. Then I just found this mutant hoglin on a random little island. Uh, then in this nether tower I got a waystone and I teleported back home where I went mining for a quick little bit and I found this huge ancient forge. This might be important so I marked it down and when I came home I got a bunch of upgrades. I made an indestructible blaze right shield, a Tide trident, I put flame on my bow, and I got like Riptide 10 or something on my new trident, and look how far this thing launches me in the air. Day 81 to day 82, I made a blindfold and went to take down this Gorgon. If I wasn't wearing a blindfold, it's basically instant death for me, so I grabbed the Gorgon head and I went back down to the deep dark. The main reason I came back was because I needed to kill one more variant of the Warden and it was the big variant of the Warden and I couldn't find it no matter what. You know what I could find though? A bunch of other Wardens that I just took down easily without even trying. Yep, as you can see, still no big warden, but I grabbed a ton of loot and then I started getting hit by this invisible mob. I couldn't even see it, so I just managed to teleport home so I would heal. Uh, turns out I gotta kill all the dragons again to complete the quest. Day 83 to day 84, you know what I haven't done in a while? Huge house upgrades. The first thing I did was make a much nicer pen for the sheep because I knew I was gonna need these guys for a ton, a ton of dragon meal. I also fixed out all the dirt and I started making nice paths and lighting up this entire area to make this entire thing feel a lot nicer. Also, just for decorations, I got rid of the dragon hatching area, made a wood cutting area instead, and decorated the entire thing with a bunch of lamps and leaves. Day 85 to day 86, I fixed up the roof a little, then I teleported back to my nether portal pretty far away to go looking for a bunch of wither skeleton skulls. I needed a ton of these things so I can make a bunch of beacons, but along the way I got distracted by a huge bastion, got some really cool stuff in there, I found another piglin watchtower, got some more pork chops, which is going to be really important, then I started killing a ton of wither skeletons, and even a mutant wither, this is my first time seeing it. Day 87, in one of these houses I found an ever bright portal, and then I just broke right down underground to create space for for a wither fight. Honestly, the first wither I fought here was actually super easy. This guy took no time at all. I just used melee attacks. I didn't even use my bow when I took it out so easily. For the second wither fight, I tried to keep my distance just for fun. I didn't want the wither ability, but even then it was super easy to take out and I got two nether stars. So day 88, I decided to check out this dimension. And the first thing it was telling me is that my sword wasn't working well here, even though it two shot everything. But to be safe, I made a pickaxe and an ax from this dimension. Then right after I made those tools, I found this giant wizard's tower now this place had a few mobs just roaming around but once i killed all of them i found this thing called a dungeon key turns out there were four of them scattered all across this entire wizard's tower so at this point i had no idea what it was gonna do all i knew was it was part of the quest so i took my reward and i made it to the top of the tower and it turned out to be a boss fight for something called the summoner since this message didn't go away, I thought my sword was going to do no damage, but it actually did a ton of damage and I managed to take out all of his minions and do an insane amount of damage to this summoner. I just rinsed and repeated that until the summoner was pretty low in health and then I was able to take it out pretty easily and collect my quest reward. So just looking at my quest, I knew there was one more boss left and I used my explorer compass to find its dungeon. Now this nature dungeon thing was gigantic. There was like 20 rooms to a floor and there was like four floors, but I'll skip through all that and show you that I defeated every single one of these stone link things and I found the four keys for this dungeon. I actually have no idea what this boss battle is gonna be. It was this thing called a Starlet Crusher and thankfully I found an ax in one of the chests that was from this biome and this thing kept spawning walls to protect itself from the hits. It kept telling me my weapon wasn't very efficient, but it did so much damage, I just didn't even listen to the message. But after this guy started doing a bunch of those spinning moves, it would always collapse and some of these walls, so it was just rinse and repeat one more time. 
I just had to keep breaking those walls and just do a ton of damage to the Starlet Crusher. Then finally, I was able to defeat this guy and clear this entire area for all of its bosses. I even picked up these cool things called arcs, which gave me three extra heart and the other one gave me some movement speed. Day 91 to day 92, I got some wheat and I found a wither spawner. I didn't get a single wither skeleton skull, but I was able to come home, put sharpness six and looting six on my new sword, and I went to find a dragon's nest. It was super unlucky, it wasn't a fire dragon, but it was cool enough. Day 93 to day 94, I found this giant coliseum with a huge phantom and I took that guy out and it's rider pretty easily. Then later that night, I finally found what I needed, a fire dragon. After that air duel, I managed to kill this dragon. Now there were two quests left and lucky for me, an ice dragon spawned as soon as I came over to this ice spikes area. So this guy went under the water and when he came out, it looked really cool, but it was still no match. I started using my bow only and I took it out and collected my quest rewards for that as well. Then to end this day off, I found this huge mining area with a bunch of zombies and I destroyed every single one of them. Day 95 to day 96, while I was hunting for a lightning dragon, I found this huge dungeon. I called it a lava well because I had no idea what this thing was, but this place was stacked. It had so many wither spawners and even a mutant wither spawn as well. This is kind of just what I needed, a ton of withers at one spot. I managed to take out hundreds of these guys who were wearing like spider heads and I picked up a ton of wither skeleton skulls. Also the loot in here was insane. Every single one of these barrels was filled to the brim with a netherite ingot and I stupidly got caught by another one of these guys' traps. Then for the rest of these days, I collected a bunch more wither skeleton skulls. I think I got about eight. And while I was still looking for a lightning dragon, I found another village that was overrun by Barako the Sun Chief. This guy was super easy to take out and I managed to pick up a Cyclops eye. As long as I have this in my offhand, I'm pretty sure it gives every single enemy weakness too. So now I'm pretty sure I just became way more invincible. So still no lightning dragons, but I was able to get a bunch of mending books by disenchanting, put thorns two on my helmet and grab a farmer. Day 98 to day 99, I spent this entire day just feeding my dragon and finally got it up to level 3 so now I could equip it with some armor and even ride it as well. Right after that, in a buzzer beater move, I found a lightning dragon nest and I was able to really easily take this guy out and complete every single one of the overworld quests. The reward was a sapphire dragon egg, which is the rarest, but before these days ended, I want to take down two more withers so I can build as many beacons as I want. On day 100, I decided to just build one beacon for now and I used all of my gold and iron that I've been collecting to build this beacon right in front of my house. I even placed my waystone right on top of it. I had to survive 100 days on these lava islands. There are nine total islands scattered around this entire world, all of them filled with their own treasures and mobs. My goals are simple. The first thing I wanna do is make a nice base. Then I want full netherite tools. And last but not least, I wanna keep as many living things alive in this world as possible. Day one, there was a chest on this island that I spawned in and it had a sapling and tons of water bottles in it. So after checking out the entire island, I found one dirt block and placed my sapling down. While I waited, I gathered some blocks and built out to see if there were any islands around. I found this plains island right in front of me and that's where I needed to go next. Then my tree grew and I got caught on fire. I was down to one heart. But at least now I could make wooden tools and put the tree on a safer part of the island. That night, I hid in a hole away from the mobs. Day two, I found some rotten flesh on the ground, healed up a little bit, and went mining for some stone. I was able to upgrade into full stone tools. While I was here, I also found some iron, so I made a furnace and used these planks as fuel. This way, I also had some light down this cave. After all of that, I was able to make an iron pickaxe and I finally found some coal. So now I had torches and I immediately found even more iron. While everything was smelting, I chopped down this huge tree that just spawned and I realized I have an infinite fuel source. So I made a bucket and collected some lava that I'm going to be using as my fuel from now on. Then I went mining for a few more minutes when I grabbed a bunch of ores and I had enough to make an iron chest plate, a shield, and iron leggings. Day 3, I turned all my cobblestone into slabs and just as it was becoming morning, I bridged over to the Plains Island. This is where I met Jerry. Aww. So after a few seconds of talking, I'm more than willing to give up my life to keep Jerry safe. I might just be going crazy, but Jerry said some of his friends are trapped on one of these islands. But before all of that, I needed food and some shelter. So I went back to the Sand Islands and grabbed the chest, my crafting table, and my furnace. While I was there, I also chopped down all the trees for saplings and I went underground to grab this water I found in the cave. 
cave. I then started a farm, bred these cows and killed one of them so I could finally eat some real food and not just rotten flesh. That night the worst case scenario happened, a bunch of mobs spawned and I had only one goal, keep Jerry safe. I fought off hordes of zombies and skeletons and finally got Jerry in a hole to keep him safe for the night. Day 4, as the morning came, since all the skeletons burned, I used all their bones to get some wheat. I also turned this creeper hole into a future pool. I was gonna put water down later. After that, I flattened out a big area and put some fences down. I needed to keep these animals safe and first up were the sheeps because I needed a ton of wool. I then made some shears, sheared my sheep and went to sleep for the first time. Day 5 to 7, I tore down all the birch trees and replaced them with oak saplings instead. I then made another fenced area but this one was for the cows. Right after that I made a composter because I needed bone meal for a pro gamer trick. The trick is that if you have your water like this and place bone meal underwater, you can make an infinite source of water just from one bucket of water. So now I was able to make a nice little pond but more importantly I can start working on larger farms. And I did just that. I started working on 9x9 farms and my visions for this is to be a big vertical farm tower thing. You know, this way slimes don't spawn and crush my crops and I can save a ton of space. I also had to decorate the area but as day 7 was ending the farm was already 2 stories tall and looking kinda nice. Day 8 I decorated my island some more and I went mining. When I came back I was able to make myself a new set of iron tools and breed my animals some more. Day 9 to 11 I started making the frameworks of my house. I've never made a circular house in Minecraft before so it took me a bit to get the shape just right. I also had a bunch of sand from the previous island that I turned into glass. And before I knew it most of the house was already done. The only things that were left were the roof and the interior. For the roof I used up all of my stone and my andesite and then for the interior I just moved my chests and furnaces inside. I also filled the entire floor with carpets. Day 12 to 13, I expanded up one level on my farm because I got carrots and potatoes from the Mesa Island. I also flattened out the area behind my animals and I turned my cave into a safe space for Jerry. Oh yeah, speaking of Jerry, it turns out his friends were trapped on the Mesa Island. So I made some boats and went on a rescue mission to grab all of his friends. I managed to get these guys on a boat and I started the transport mission and oh man, it was a nightmare. I also had a casualty. One of Jerry's friends unfortunately died during the transport, but at least I could bring back one friend for Jerry. Day 17, I gave these guys some bread and placed more beds in front of them. Then from my spawn island, I went across to explore another one of these sand islands. Right in the middle there was a chest and in that chest I got some acacia saplings and an unbreaking 3 book. And then again the worst thing happened, it turned into night and this island was not lit up so so many mobs spawned I thought I was gonna die for sure. I just ran for it hoping I didn't get shot by a skeleton. Because of all those mobs I got a crazy good idea. The lava makes it so that mobs can't spawn anywhere else so as long as an area is kinda dark a bunch of mobs will spawn. So I used all of my stone and wood to construct a mob grinder. I placed it right behind my house and surprisingly only took one day to complete since I had a ton of blocks already. Day 19, this thing was working like a dream. I already had like 35 bones so say goodbye to hunger. I then turned all those bones into bone meal and forced grew all of my crops. With all these new crops I was able to breed a ton of sheep and cows. Then I was also able to fill out the second level of my farm with carrots and my third level with potatoes. I gave the leftovers to Jerry cause he must have been starving. Day 20 to 21, turns out these guys weren't just friends because there's a baby here now. But that's none of my business. I on the other hand had to make a bunch of blocks because I saw a mushroom island and this island was pretty far away. Even though I brought a bunch of blocks it still wasn't enough so I had to go right back home. Then I got even more bad news because the wood I used for the mob spawner caught on fire. I guess this is what I get for being too fancy. I then had to go mining for some stone so I could finally get on the other island. I barely had enough blocks to make it onto this island but it was completely worth it because the chest in the middle was crazy. This chest was filled with 36 diamonds. So I came home to make full diamond armor, a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I spent all of day 21 locking down Jerry's trades and I made a third floor of the farm just for cactuses. Day 22 to day 26, I built a bigger pen for the sheep and cows, used up all of my bone meal again and I even moved Jerry up to my house since I had enough villagers down in the cave. After that I built another portal and got the worst spawn possible. I tried looking around but there was nothing but lava pools and this huge basalt delta biome so I just came right back home. Uh, then I added some more chests and moved my portal to another island and I got a much better 
spawn this time. I was actually able to collect some gold and trade with these piglins. When I came back home, I was high up on a nether portal and I had to bucket my way down and this made an ugly obsidian bridge. Oh, and I explored this goat island where I got a bunch of moss blocks. On day 27, I explored one of these other Mesa islands and I got a silk touch book and some more cactuses. Then I finally came back home before I was gonna get jumped by a bunch of mobs. Day 28 to day 30, I flattened out an area towards the right of my house and I started working on a trading hall. Then it was time for the hard part, just trying to get the villagers in here. I used a very ancient technique of shoving them in there and putting a trap door in front of them. It actually managed to work really well. I got a Fletcher in there and then I got a Farmer in there. Also, there's been a bunch of golems that have been spawning, so periodically I've been killing them and getting some iron. Then at the end of day 30, I moved the automatic composter right next to Jerry. Day 31, for the first time in this world, I actually had a lot of cows. So I slaughtered them and realized I have another island to explore. So I ran through the goat island, picked up some more moss blocks, and I built over to the island that I haven't explored yet. I actually ended up running out of blocks, so I had to make these ugly obsidian bridges. But once I made it, this place turned out to be an end island. There was a chest on top of a bunch of cold blocks, and it had one sugar cane and 24 pieces of paper. So I ran back straight home and planted the sugarcane and stored the paper. Day 32 to day 35, I used moss carpets to hide all the lightings in my base and then I was able to make a lectern so I trapped a librarian in the trading hall. I even skipped a sharpness 5 trade cause I just needed bookshelves right now. While I was there I also set up a leather worker so hopefully I could get some saddles. I then expanded my pool, bone meal the floor and put glowstone down to make it look a lot nicer. After all of that, for the next few days I just worked on getting my enchantment setup done. I harvested all my crops, chopped down all the trees for sticks just to get like one bookshelf at a time. Day 36, I collected some brown mushrooms because I thought I'd be able to zombify and cure my villagers, but boy was I wrong. Day 37 to 40, since I've got my sugarcane, I've been letting it grow, so now I finally had enough to dedicate an entire floor to it on the farm. I then let Jerry out because he was a king, and I built a bunk bed just in case he needed a place to sleep. After that, I made my way towards the nether island that was right in front of my crib, and then I found a chest there that had a soul speed book and some nether gold ore. Also while I was there, I found another use for saddles. There was a bunch of striders here. I then came right back home and trapped another librarian and this dude gave me a mending book, but I didn't have enough paper or emeralds to lock the trade in so the trade just oh, vanished. On the bright side, I got the final bookshelf to finish the enchantment setup. So I used most of my diamonds to make a new pickaxe and I got unbreaking 3, efficiency 4, and fortune 3 on it. Then on day 41, do you remember that gold island? I took my fortune 3 pickaxe towards it because it had a lot of ores that were just exposed. So I basically just circled this island around as much as I could to grab every single thing I saw. Then on the way back, I brought two goats over to my island. This is the loot I got from Fortune 3. Day 42 to day 43, I trapped an armorer and a toolsmith. And then I began enchanting more of my tools. I got a power 4 bow and sharpness 4 on my sword. While I was there, I also started enchanting my armor. And I got protection 3 on my helmet, fire protection on my boots, and protection 4 on my leggings. After that, I filled out my house with more furnaces, smithing tables, and barrels. Day 44, I made two grindstones, one for me and the other to trap a villager. I also started re-enchanting my armor and this time I got protection 4 on my chest plate and protection 3 on my boots. Day 45 to day 48, I looked around in all these different islands to put a nether portal and I finally got a decent spawn from the Mesa Mountain. But after spending about 3 days straight in the nether, I believe that this world doesn't generate any structure, so no blaze rods for me. I then of course had to come right back home. Day 49 to 50, I cleared out two huge mounds of dirt on both sides of the island and even some in the back. This place was getting kind of cramped and I needed more space, but more importantly, I was able to make a path that connected to the mob spawner. And speaking of mob spawner, I actually cleared that area up really nicely. I got rid of all the obsidian and built walls around, so hopefully that place isn't flammable anymore. Day 51 to day 52, I started leveling up my leather worker, but I needed more emeralds so I had to level up my armor too, and now I can trade iron for emeralds. Then after selling a ton of my crops I was able to buy saddles from this leather worker but just when I got saddles and the ability to ride horses all the horses on this island either despawned or died I knew somewhere else that I can use a saddle for so I went to the nether island and placed that saddle on a strider and that's when I realized I also needed a fungus on a stick Day 53 to day 57, since this world doesn't generate structures, my goal right now is to make a custom village. So to get started, I made a diamond shovel. I wanted to put silk touch on it, but when I enchanted it, I got really good enchantment. So I just used a separate shovel to put silk touch on that. Now I was able to get a grass block. I also realized I should probably get a mending villager right now, because I don't think my tools can handle this build. So I brought up another librarian, trapped this guy, and I started rolling a bunch of trades to get mending again. 
for some reason it takes them forever to take up their job again so I think it's more beneficial to my time if I just started building right now first thing I started doing was filling out all the creeper holes then I completely took all the sand out of this island and replaced it with dirt Lucky for me, right underneath the big first layer of sand was a bunch of dirt. So I was just able to use that instead of running back and forth between my islands. Day 58 to day 59, I was 100% right. Most of my tools are super damaged, so now I really need mending. This time I actually got lucky and after rolling for just a little bit, I got a mending book. And unlike last time, I could actually lock it in. I then also got a feather falling 4 book that I put onto my boots. Uh, then I realized my mending book was really expensive, so I needed a bunch more emeralds. And to help me, it was time to make an iron farm. This was a pretty simple farm. I just needed like five villagers, eight blocks above the island. And once I got two of these guys in this chamber, that was basically all I needed to get started. The only thing remaining was now a collection system for all the iron that's going to be dropped. But more importantly, I needed an area for the golem to spawn and get pushed into the lava. Day 60 to day 63, now that the iron farm was finished, I just waited for the villagers to grow up. While I was there, I also bought one mending book and put it on my fortune 3 pickaxe. Then to kill more time, I harvested my farm and once the villagers grew up, I just had to keep it being daytime. That's the only negative of the farm. This farm does not work at all at nighttime. But while I was there, I also slabbed up a bunch of areas that the golem couldn't spawn so that it would only spawn in the little chamber I built. Then on day 64, all those days of AFKing paid off since I got more than a stack of iron. And of course I used all of that plus some extra crops to trade as much as possible and then I had enough emeralds to just get like two more mending books. I put a mending book on my diamond axe because it was really about to break and I put it on my diamond sword. Then for the rest of this day I just spent this entire time repairing the axe and then I made another chest for all the rotten flesh. Day 65 to day 67 now that I have mending on all of my tools I can gather a ton of stone and oak wood. With all those resources it was time to finish the custom village once and for all. I found the center of this village and I started making a path to set up where the houses are gonna be. For now I built two simple houses, one large villager house and two farms, plus I put stone walls all around the island so things wouldn't catch on fire. Day 68 to day 69, that little bridge that connected both of these islands, I made them too wide, this way the villagers don't burn. And just placing all these things, it took so long, especially just adding the walls alone. At least now the ride across was actually safe. So I lured two villagers right near the bridge and I trapped both of them on boats. It's been so long since I transported these villagers, I forgot how long it takes to just move the boat on land. As soon as I brought one villager over, I placed a bunch of beds all around the village and I went right back to grab the next dude. My only hope is that these guys are both farmers so they can actually repopulate quickly and I also gave them like a stack of carrots and potatoes. Day 70 to day 80, it was now time for major upgrades. Since this whole time I've been clearing out a bunch of sand plus that whole sand island, I had stacks on stacks of sand. I also had a bunch of gunpowder so you guessed it, it was time to get some ancient debris. I made about a stack and a half of TNT but I spent like a few days just trying to get a decent nether spawn and travel in between these islands took basically forever. Every single one of these nether spawns were either a basalt delta or I was just inside some walls. So I went to the only safe place I knew and that was the mushroom island. From here I was able to find a nether waste biome and then I went down to y equals 15 and started letting it rain with a bunch of TNT. I ended up with 22 pieces of ancient debris. That's a pretty decent haul if you ask me. The only negative is that my armor was getting totaled. Then on day 81 to day 84, I spent these days collecting the biggest haul of carrots, potatoes, sticks, and sugarcane, all while my iron farm was running. I took every single piece of these stuff to the villages to crash their entire economy. I ended up with about two stacks of emeralds. Do you want to guess how much these two stacks of emerald got me? I got like only three mending books. Lucky for me, I had a spare one in my enchantment area and I put mending on all of my armor pieces. Then while my ancient debris was smelting, I repaired all of my armor. Now it was time to actually do the upgrade. I made every piece of my armor netherite and also made my pickaxe netherite as well. Day 85 to day 86 to celebrate a huge achievement, I actually collected a bunch of stone and I used it to make a villager statue right above the trading hall. Now I might win the dumbest person in the world award because this thing took me so long. I think I have the same IQ as these villagers. After that, I made another statue on the other side of the island because I wanted to use all of my copper and I saw this on TikTok. I also used this on my ocean world as well. 
Day 87 to day 89. I didn't need these villager breeders anymore, so I set them free. Plus, I needed this cave. Once those dudes left, I expanded the room out some more and I began making a storage area. I know it's pretty stupid to make a storage area on like day 90, but I really needed it and I was running out of space in my house. Making this thing made me realize how much stuff I actually had. Organizing and moving the items took me forever, but after I put the furnaces and the automatic composter down, this place was looking really, really nice. Day 90 to day 91. There were a bunch of bees around and I collected some honeycombs using campfires and made custom beehives. Then I broke the rest of the nests around my island and bred the bees in front of these beehives. After that, to make sure the villagers don't lag my game, I put magma blocks right in front of them. Day 92 to day 93, I made a shepherd. This way I could trade all the wool I've been collecting from the sheep and the strings. I then went to the nether to look for warped fungus. I had no idea Crimson Forest had warped fungus in them, so I was really lucky and I collected a bunch of them. Then I came home, made a fungus on a stick, and went over to the nether island to grab myself a strider. One of these guys already had a saddle on it that I put on, and once I got on, it took me a little bit to get to the lava, but after that, I was basically zooming around. I parked this dude in front of my island, and then I went inside to enchant a bunch of books. After a bunch of cycles, I got a Sweeping Edge 3 book and a Looting 2 book, and I put that all on my diamond sword. Day 94 to day 96, I expanded my animal pen a little so I could have more grass blocks for the sheep. And then I realized why I have no bees on my island. Turned out this moss carpet was just blocking them from getting out. After that, I placed a few more beds in the custom village and gave them more food so that these guys would populate a lot more. Then I needed a bunch of emeralds and I found the perfect way to get a ton. I had a bunch of sand so I smelted them all to make glass panes and while I was there, I also bought a map from this guy. Since that worked like a charm, I went over to a sand island and got like 6 full stacks of sand and smelted all of it. All while that was happening, I was able to combine a bunch of bows I got from the mob grinder and got a really sick bow. Day 97 to day 98, I basically had an inventory full of of glass panes and I slowly started selling all of it. Then to top off this custom village I needed a bell so I leveled up my weaponsmith and used up 33 emeralds to get this bell. Now the custom village is completely finished. I might not have been showing you all of it but for the last 10 days I was really super focused on getting a ton of emeralds. And that was because on day 99 to day 100 I used all the emeralds I've been collecting and made a 100 sign over the farm. I then took all of the gunpowder I've been saving up also to make a bunch of fireworks. I realize I'm very stupid so I used some fire charges to actually make fireworks that work properly. Then I set up an automatic firework launcher and had a fireworks show with Jerry watching. Speaking of Jerry, it was time to retire him, so I took him all the way over to the village so he can live the rest of his life with his own people. I survived 100 days as a knight in medieval Minecraft. This world is filled with dragons, demons, and legendary bosses. And as a knight, I can only use melee weapons and I'm vulnerable to magic. Can I collect the 12 new Eyes of Ender and free the end in 100 days? Watch till the end to find out. Day 1, I started off in a little village and the first thing I did was take my quest rewards. This gave me a bunch of random books, but more importantly, I got a spawn bag. And in that spawn bag, I got oak logs, apples, and torches. I also got a canteen and then did the basics of Minecraft. Crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After that, I started looting the chests and got some ender pearls. Then found a librarian toga and made stone tools. While exploring some more, I actually managed to get a piece of armor and these things called maulers. I also realized I had two skill points and put it into constitution, so I got an extra heart. Then I collected some hay bales and went to explore this ruined portal. In this chest I got a few more pieces of armor and a crazy pickaxe. Then night came and mobs started spawning so I went straight to sleep. Day 2, now that I can defend myself, it was time to go explore. But as soon as I stepped out, I got attacked by desert bandits. I took a lot of damage but I managed to get these bandits trapped in the villager house and then I made a hole to take them all out easily. After that, while I was exploring, I killed a snake and checked if this big man over here was hostile and I killed a harpy. But while I was there, I found this airship so I made tons of oak planks and built up to it. This place was filled with machinery and spawners. Then I met a skeleton which I killed quickly and got blinded from somewhere. I then broke another spawner and killed another skeleton and I was able to put three more points into constitution. I felt a little braver and went up to the top floor and immediately got attacked by enchanted and powered up skeletons. So I was poisoned as well. Lucky for me, there were slabs in front of me so I could heal and keep fighting these skeletons. These guys dropped a bunch of enchanted books and I started taking out more of the spawner so I could finally loot the chest in here. 
These chests ended up having a bunch of iron ingots and an iron chest plate which was better than what I had. I then put two more points into strength and found one more chest and this one had three diamonds and a sharp three iron sword. I was also able to come home and make more iron armor. Day three, I was able to make a diamond pickaxe and then I met a moving tornado and this thing chased me all the way into a house. With the help of these guards, they were able to take it out and I went out to explore when I found this giant tower which had a waystone all the way up to the top that I took for myself. After making my way down, I found a savanna biome and I was chased by a bunch of wolves. Once I got away from them, I found a graveyard and checked the chest inside. This ended up waking up a ghost and after I did some ghost busting, I got a fire aspect book, some iron and a skeleton head. Then since it was getting dark, I grabbed some sugarcane and ran to find somewhere to sleep. There was a camp where I grabbed the wool and made a bed to go to sleep. The next day there was a nether looking structure right next to me which had a golden apple and a bunch of gold nuggets. And this side of the world was basically a dead end so I made my way back to the village and then went to the other direction. I stumbled onto another graveyard with some decent loot and took out another ghost and this is when I found my first huge structure. It was a huge pillager windmill right next to a witch village. I grabbed some of the chests that weren't hidden and realized there was another structure connected to these two. This was a library with a waystone in the front. I activated it and once the pillagers started attacking, it was a sign for me to get out of there. After running over the hills, I found a cave that was on the side of a mountain. It was kind of perfectly shaped for someone to live in. I then sprinkled torches all around the cave and chopped down trees to make chests for all the random stuff I've been collecting. Then I put my waystone right in front of the cave entrance and to decorate I needed more cobblestone so right next to where I placed the chest I started a mine. I actually ended up getting some iron and a bunch of coal. Then with the stone I collected I started decorating my cave entrance and working my way all the way inside the cave. To save stone I made the floor out of stone brick slabs and finally the cave was looking halfway decent. I then planted my sugar cane and right in front of my house there was an ogre villager and this guy's chests were filled with a bunch of goodies. Day 6 I chopped down a bunch of trees in front of my house and used the oak wood as support beams for the design. I also started expanding the chest room cause I'm predicting there's gonna be a ton of loot. It took a little bit but now there were 12 chests ready for me to fill up. Since I got the essentials done I made a fence in case I need to run away from mobs and a smelting area. Then I used cobblestone to add some texture to the floor since they were all stone bricks and the roof was next which used all of my stone brick slabs. Day 7 my home was pretty decent right now so I went to check out that windmill again which had tons of wheat. I ended up getting attacked by zombie villagers and almost died but once I killed those two I was able to harvest the huge wheat fields in front of the windmill. Only issue was there were tons of pillagers around so I was very quick about it. I managed to get about 5 stacks of wheat and 11 stacks of seed. So to help me for the future I made an automatic composter and turned all of my wheat into 14 hay bales. The rest of day 7 to day 9 I went down to the caves to mine since I had no diamonds at all. After staircasing for a little bit I stumbled into a small cave and that cave connected to an even larger cave. Plus there was a huge mine shaft there as well but I got chased by an enderman so I had to run back really quick. I then had two skills which I put into constitution and strength and then I collected a bunch of iron and silver in this smaller cave. I worked up some courage to go down to the larger cave and started mining all the crazy ores you could find deep down. Once again the only issue is that the mobs down here are even crazier. I then found even more diamonds until I stumbled into a mine shaft and here I found tons of ores. I ended up getting a bunch more iron diamonds and this thing called fiery glass. By the time I was done exploring the mine shaft I had around 27 diamonds plus a stella arcanum and I came back home to smelt and store all the loot I collected. Since my armor was basically broken I used all of my diamonds to make diamond armor instead. I also made a diamond sword as well. Day 10 I made an iron shield and put 2 skill points into strength. I then cleared out some more area in the cave and went out to explore. Along the way I found a monastery with invisible skeletons and these dudes did tons of damage even with diamond armor. I didn't want to die so I ran straight back home. The next morning I went right back to exploring some more. I found a village with a ruined portal and the chest had some cool relics in it. Then I went right back to the monastery but this time to fully clear it. I took out all the invisible skeletons and made my way up to the top. The final chest had a few diamonds and gold but more importantly a bow. Oh wait, I can't even use a bow since I'm a knight. Day 12, right across my main area I built another huge hole for an enchantment setup. I had a bunch of books left over and turned it into 6 bookshelves. Then it was time for a storage system upgrade so I filled out the rest of the chests in the area and made a bunch of link cables. I also collected a bunch of chests so I could make network cables and I started linking every single one of these chests together but I needed a root network system and for that I needed 4 blocks of quartz. 
So I went down to the mines to collect some obsidian and I built a portal right next to my house. I then went into the nether but this place was way too dangerous so I was very quick, mined the quartz right in front of me and then came right back to make the root system. I placed it right in the center connected to all the chests but now I needed a way to access these chests. So I made this thing called a storage request table and placed it right over the root. Now I can access all of my chests from one request table as long as these chests are connected. Then to make the storage system remote I needed some glowstone and one more slime bowl. For the glowstone I went into the nether, dug around until I found some glowstone lamps and grabbed a bunch of them but I still needed the slime balls. Day 13 to 14 I collected some lavender to make purple dye so I could make some warp scrolls and I went out to explore again. Since I'm a knight I got attacked by these goblins and once I took them out I went over to their camp to grab their loot. Then that night I found a cultist house in a swamp and this place had some acolytes hiding in the house. Once I got rid of the mobs around the house, I started looting. I took all the books first and went down to the basement for even more loot. Down there was an urn that had some very rare alchemy ingredients and a barrel that had a netherite ingot. When I went to escape the building, I got attacked by an acolyte who set me on fire and I had to eat my golden apple which allowed me to finally take this dude out. The next morning there was a hydro near me and that was my cue to get out of there cause I would not be able to fight that thing. Across the swamp I found a much larger graveyard and freed this villager stuck there. Now I know I'm a knight but I started grave robbing. You have to forgive me since the loot was really good. I got a reaping 3 book, golden apples, emeralds and bunch of bones. So after looting most of the graves I found another giant tower and this was a lifesaver since I was pretty far away from home. I activated the waystone so now I can travel back and forth. Later that night I found a battle tower but there were way too many mobs so I had to come back and teleport home. Day 16 I collected a bunch of books so I turned it into bookshelves and slowly I was able to finish the enchantment setup. I had one more skill point which I put into dexterity then I grabbed some shears and went to a village where I found some sheep. I died one of these guys red and I was able to make a sleeping bag. I then teleported home and started working on making a backpack. I also needed some sand so I smelted it for glass and once I got every single piece of the equipment ready I made a standard traveler's backpack. I wasn't done yet I wanted to upgrade the backpack and see what the difference was. I needed more glass so I collected some more sand, made stained glass and then I made an iron traveler's backpack and I'm pretty sure it didn't make a difference at all. It seemed to be just cosmetic. So now I had a huge inventory upgrade and I filled up the tanks in the backpack with water just in case I need to fill up a bucket. Then I needed more diamonds for an enchantment table so I went down to the mines. While I was there I collected some arcane blocks, fiery glass and cold deep stone and I also got the diamonds I needed. When I came back home I made a light and dark chest and force loaded the chunks my house was in. Day 19 to day 21 I wanted to use this light and dark chest because you can get tons of diamonds in the deep dark and I was completely running out. So I needed to mine all the way down to bedrock and this took a good amount of time since my tunnel kept getting flooded. I still managed to make it down to bedrock and place down the light and dark chest. I put a diamond in there to get ready for the trip. As soon as I got in the deep dark I took my quest reward and placed down a dark and light chest so I can go back to the overworld. I then used a spruce wooden here to make some charcoal and a chest for all the junk. While things were smelting I started mining but the iron pickaxe was really weak and the tunnel I made had no diamonds. At least my gold smelted and I was able to load up the dark and light chest. Then while grabbing some more wood I found diamonds there and in this dimension sometimes they can drop as whole diamond blocks so I was already filling up on a bunch of diamonds. I found even more veins of diamonds behind the wood and made extra diamond pickaxes. Then I crafted more torches and started looking for an actual deep dark cave. Along the way I found even more veins and finally stumbled into a cave. But my god these guys do insane amounts of damages and they're not even wardens. I had to take these guys out super carefully and then I grabbed a few diamonds and got out of there. I came back home with an insane haul of loot. 9 diamond blocks. So I remade all of my armor and an enchantment table. I also managed to get an unbreaking pickaxe and reaping on my sword but nothing else too good. Day 22 I put 2 more points into strength and made more warp scrolls. I then teleported pretty far away to another waystone in search of XP and loot. I noticed an underground structure and of course jumped right into it. This place had some chests in the wall and I took down this tree in the center to make torches. For some reason a zombie brute was also here so I got rid of him and found out you can trade with these dragon villager dudes. Then one of them attacked me so I had to kill it and during that fight I also accidentally hit a goblin so I also had to kill that goblin too. This little area ended up connecting to a dungeon and that dungeon connected to a cave. I explored this cave and as it got deeper I got bombed by a creeper but at least I found a structure. This structure was filled with heavily armored withers and after I took them out from a safe distance I teleported back to the waystone to go to another direction. I wanted to take out that battle tower that had too many mobs last time and along the way I got attacked by the stalker who set me on fire. 
I still managed to make it all the way to the battle tower though. And on day 23, since no mobs were spawning, I was able to destroy all the spawners and make it to the top where there was a diamond block waiting for me. I put all the loot I had into my backpack and started ransacking this place. I needed every single thing in this battle tower. Then, while exploring the areas nearby, I found another golden apple and this hot air balloon which had some diamonds and other ores in it. Then I ran through this burnt forest where I picked up about like 3,000 of these howls and I had to build up to kill them. Also that night, I learned how to turn my backpack into a sleeping bag. Day 24, after waking up, I got attacked by some harpies and realized I did a full circle. So I teleported back home and went back exploring another way. This way, I found a ruined portal where I got this necklace that gave me shields apparently, but it made a super annoying sound. I then found a witch village and started destroying the witches inside. And later that day, I heard a loud noise and it turned out it was a fire dragon. And this dude saw me from pretty far away. I managed to run away and warp back home. That was another reality check, so I needed to properly start enchanting my gear. I started by making a grindstone and disenchanting these items I collected. I then put one more point into constitution and enchanted my pickaxe, which is actually kind of stacked now. On day 25, apparently there was a blood moon that I didn't even notice, but once I cleared my inventory, I wanted to go out and explore more. This time I actually found something really cool. It was a floating village, so I collected some oak logs and started building up towards this thing. Up here I met some villagers but there was not much else and it was kind of small so I jumped down. Then that night another blood moon happened and on my mini map it filled up with all red dots so I was fully surrounded with mobs. I think in a blood moon mobs spawned 3 times as much and I didn't have a warp scroll so I had to fight my way out of this. I ended up running back home and getting inside right before these OP mobs started attacking. This zombie was insanely strong but once it was taken out I got an unbreakable shield that increases my speed and reflects 80% of the damage back. The next morning I got attacked by an enchanted skeleton and a looter who stole my sword. I took out the looter first and then I was able to take out the skeleton after. Then I went to the pillager windmill to see if I could take those guys out. It was kinda dark but I still managed to take out the first floor and climb all the way to the top which had barrels full of iron, diamond and enchanted armor pieces. Then I made a huge mistake as I went down to the bottom floor. This place was filled with pillagers and witches plus there was a looter there. I ended up getting my sword stolen and then tons of poison potions thrown on me so I had to eat my golden apple and climb out. Bye bye sword. Before I went home, I wanted to take all the books in the library, so I went through all three floors and took down all the bookshelves, then teleported back home with close to five stacks of books. I also picked up a spear from someone, so at least since my sword was gone, I had to enchant it and I got looting and leeching two on it. I then went down to the giant mineshaft right under my house and the chest here had a bunch of relics and runes, but other than that, I just mined a bunch of ores and got some expetrified orbs too. Day 28 to day 29, that little trip gave me a decent haul, so I made two more furnaces to smelt everything I had. Also, I used fiery glass instead of coal since I had tons of it. I was close to level 30, so I used my expetrified orbs, but I only got up to level 29. Then I made an anvil. My next goal was to kidnap some villagers, so I made an area specifically to house these villagers, and I went underground to grab one more arcane crystal. I came back home and made an arcane crystal block and grabbed some spawner scraps. Then I combined those two to make a quantum catcher. Now we can kidnap villagers with maximum efficiency, but before that I needed to make a better area so these villagers can't run away. To start, I placed down two lecterns and I ran towards the village I spawned in and snatched this villager up with my quantum catcher. I placed this villager right behind the lectern and then grabbed another one with the other lectern. I got super lucky with one library and got knowledge of the ages 4, which means my enemies drops turn into XP. I think if you combine that with looting, you basically get like unlimited XP at that point. I also had 53 emeralds in storage, so I bought that book to lock the trade in. Then I made some chests to place all of my enchanted books together, and then I decorated the villager area with stone bricks and oak logs. Day 30, I made some obsidian with iron and I smelted it to get more obsidian ingots. The ogre villager in front of my house had a skeleton skull, cause I don't know what happened to my old one. So I used that, plus the obsidian ingots to make it obsidian skull. And with the remaining expectrified orbs, I used that with the stellarite piece to make an eternal stella. Then I combine those two things to make an eternal obsidian skull and as long as it's in my inventory I have full fire resistance. I then put the knowledge of the ages onto my spear and use the rest of my levels to enchant random pieces of armor. Now with fire resistance I could finally explore the nether but first I tore down the portal and teleported far away to rebuild it there. I entered the nether looking for XP and I picked up some glowstone and nether quartz first. Then things changed when I built down and found a blaze spawner. With the knowledge of the ages, I literally got 3 levels from 2 blazes so this place was gonna be nice to grind levels. Well, until a mutant blaze spawned and I ran for 
my life. This guy was so overpowered, one of its fireball moves got rid of half of my hearts. I ended up getting really lucky because I think this thing just suffocated in the walls because it just disappeared. So I went right back to grinding XP. I only killed these blazes for a minute straight and I got like 6 levels and 3 skill points, which I put 2 into constitution and 1 into strength. Once I got up to level 41 and my spear broke, I left the nether. As soon as I got back, I enchanted my chest plate and got protection 3 on it. Then after rolling some more enchants, I was able to get protection 4 on my diamond helmet. Since my spear broke, I made a new diamond sword and when I enchanted it, I got smite 3 and sharpness 3 on it. Then I disenchanted an unbreaking 3 shovel and put that on my sword. I also sprinkled glowstones all around the base for lighting and decoration. Then I stole the library's waystone and moved it towards the village so I could steal more villagers. I grabbed one more of these villagers and I tried rolling this dude for mending books. While I was rolling for these trades, I realized I had one netherite ingot and I placed it on my new diamond sword. I also grabbed one more villager and turned this dude into a fletcher so I could sell sticks. Then to end these days, I made a warp stone for infinite travels and I made a path in front of my house. Day 32 to day 35, I took all of my oak logs and turned them into sticks and locked in the trade with my fletcher. Then I started chopping down all the trees I had planted in my base until I had an inventory full of sticks. Then after after trading everything I could with the Fletcher, I realized that I could make a remote to access my storage without needing slime balls. So I collected even more obsidian and made an oceanography table to get some sea lanterns. I then made an ender chest with those obsidian and the next morning, I gave a villager the oceanographer job and brought sea lanterns. Then I was finally able to make a crafting remote. This remote goes into a charm slot and now since my home chunks are force loaded, I can access my storage anywhere. After that, I started the emerald grind again, selling tons of sticks and buying the knowledge of the ages book that I put on my new sword. I also needed mending books really bad, so I went to the nether to collect magma blocks because if you put magma blocks in front of villagers, it makes them take jobs quicker and it reduces the lag. And oh yeah, I also managed to pick up these whipping vine things which I can bone meal and spam for paper. This also gave me the idea to plant glowberries all around my base. After spamming weeping vines all night, I had tons of paper to trade. Plus this unlocked the book trades which I had tons of already. I spent this entire day leveling up my villagers trades, putting lanterns around the base, putting magma blocks underneath the villagers and trying to get a mending trade. I finally got a mending trade after about 30 minutes. So I used all of my emeralds to get it since my village was mad at me because I think I hit it accidentally. This was going on my netherite sword. Then with this brand new sword, I went out to see how many levels I could get. Just like I thought, one cool and a turtle gave me 6 levels. I think looting makes the XP even greater so I know what to get next. At this point I was getting a full level from a single mob kill. I didn't even realize that I hadn't gotten any mob drops. Day 37 I fought this cyclops and Boy was I missing my spear. I could not reach the cyclops properly, but eventually I managed to take it out. A little bit later, I found another airship and then grabbed some blocks with my remote storage and built up to get some loot. I quickly ran through this thing, but I was actually looking to fight mobs. That's why I was so hesitant to break these spawners. As I started moving up the floors, the mobs finally started spawning. And when I got to the top floor, I actually waited for a bit to see more mobs spawn. I ended up looting the chest though while I was waiting and I got some diamonds, but more importantly, I got all of my redstone from these airships. Some more mobs spawned and I was farming them until one spawn that poisoned me. So I took these mobs out and these spawners out and I looted the final chest which had a mining system map that I wanted to find. Day 38 while searching for this mining system, I ran into a monastery which had basically nothing good. Then I got attacked by a mountain lion and got to level 50. Later that night, I found another library where I activated the waystone and saw a dragon's nest right in front of me. I ran in to go to sleep hoping the dragon didn't see me. I thought the coast was clear until a bunch of fire started raining on me. All of my RL craft experience came back and I knew the dragon had seen me. Lucky for me, I had fire resistance and an OP shield. Plus, I was close to a lake. The only issue was that I didn't think my armor would withstand this. But as a dragon landed on me, I was able to take chunks of his health down and go in the water anytime it used his fire breath. Then thanks to the golden apple, I was able to take down another chunk of its health down and once it landed again, I put the final blow on this dragon and picked up its skin and bones. I then got lucky again when I found this wizard's tower structure and these bad boys have a bunch of cool things like these things called tomes and affixes. So I picked up everything I could leading up to the top floor and I broke the TNT trap and looted the main chest. After exploring a bit more I found these huge towers and decided to teleport home. I put down this altar I got as a quest reward and I started enchanting these tomes. I got an Unbreaking 3 book from one of these tomes and I started disenchanting armor pieces. I ended up getting Protection 3 and Unbreaking 3. I also ended up disenchanting my helmet, combined that book with Unbreaking and put that onto a new helmet and I used a dragon scale to make a dragon scale chestplate and leggings. 
Day 40, I teleported back towards the forest and went exploring north. I got attacked by some harpies and I killed some troll villagers for their loot. Then I had four skill points, which I put two into strength and two into dexterity. I also got like eight levels from this hippo alone. I also found another cultist house again and all the chests outside had tons of random stuff but more importantly they had enchanted armor pieces. Then I went down to the basement to get the real loot and first I snatched all the potion ingredients from the urn and the other chest had netherite leggings and a mending diamond pickaxe. I then freed the villager in here and teleported back home before this hydro attacked me. With the new loot I combined the pickaxes together, disenchanted my older pickaxes and my older chest plate. Day 41 to day 42, I needed another room so I staircased up and towards the right. This room was going to be for sugarcane and any other plants since it always snows right in front of my house and it ruins the water source. I made a pretty big room and started placing water down in rows to plant sugarcane here first. Of course, I had to start decorating this entire area first and I used stone bricks to match the rest of the cave. I also started putting oak logs and cobblestone around those areas to give it some texture. I placed lanterns in the sugarcane area and then realized it would block the sugarcane. So I used glowstone instead to light this entire area up. Then I used stone bricks to fill out the rest of the walls and ceilings and make the whole thing match. So by day 42, this new area was halfway done and the other half is gonna be for something else. Day 43 to day 44, I leveled up another librarian and this dude didn't give anything really good at a higher level. The only thing decent was the extra book trade. Then that night I went out to grind more levels. This is when a lightning struck mob almost one shot me. I had to retreat and use my shield to reflect the damage back and also because of the knowledge of the ages book i didn't get a rare drop at all but i had no idea about that yet then i killed an enderman got like six levels from this dude and after fighting a bunch more mobs i got up to level 37. the next day i found a desert biome and these biomes are really cool since more mobs spawn and you can see structures better and speaking of structures, I saw this huge bone thing which had blocks of gold in it and a husk spawner. I farmed a little bit of levels and then I broke the spawners and right next to it was a desert pyramid which I jumped into and started looting this place. These chests had the first of the 12 eyes I needed to go to the end, 11 more to go. Also these chests were filled with some weird relics and gear I had no clue how to use. On the way out I saw the biggest battle tower ever and this place was massive. Then right in front of that, there were some people asking for food and lucky for them I had some bread once I gave it to this this guy over here I got a companion uh, there was another dude hiding in the house and I got two companions by the end of this day and with these dudes I went into the battle tower so let me explain how this battle tower works it turns out that each floor has two spawners and once you break them you can open the chest then each chest has a chance to give you a monolith key and then you need three of those to fight the golem at the top floor at first I had no clue what to do so I just started looking around for all these floors grabbing the loot. The only thing that I knew was that there were locked chests and I needed to open them. When I made it up some floors I found some pillagers and realized the spawners have to be here somewhere. While making my way up the tower I also grabbed a ton of books and I made it to the top floor and that's when I realized I needed something to activate this thing in the middle. After doing some research I started going through the floors and breaking these spawners. This took literally forever but I managed to get three land monolith keys and went up to challenge this tower golem. I placed the keys on the monolith and a land golem spawn and this dude was a tank but I'm so lucky that my shield reflects the damage back. Eventually after reflecting a ton of damage back, healing, slowly striking I managed to take the land golem out then this tower started collapsing so I grabbed the loot real quick. Uh, so the tower is fully collapsed and I think my companions are dead but I started moving around the desert for even more loot. Then I found a floating village and I swam my way up this river that was connecting to it. On top this place had a bunch of chests which I looted and planted across which I also harvested. That night I went to fight more of these lightning struck mobs and again I didn't get the drops because of my enchantment so this was a huge waste of time. The good news on the other hand is that I got up to level 61 just from grinding these mobs out in the desert. After that I looted this graveyard and took everything valuable especially the enchanted armor. I then jumped into a pyramid, looted the main chest in the center and this pyramid had a husk spawner and I also had seven skill points which I distributed all around and got even more powerful. I was getting kind of addicted to getting XP. I got up to level 70 and then that's when a mutant skeleton attacked me and I ran into the barn to hide. I then realized I had to fight this thing and I took it out and found a waystone which means I can finally get back home because I was really far away. Before that I wanted to grab a few more levels so I got up to level 73 before I came back home. With these levels I got protection 3 on my leggings and started rolling enchants on my other pieces of armor. I also combined some books and put that on my chest plate. Now the only thing left were to be enchanted were my boots.
My armor was absolutely torn up, so at first I could only buy like one mending book, which I put on my chest plate. Then I also made a ton of golden apples, and I started farming the crimson roots to make paper and trade that for emeralds. I also traded a bunch of sticks for emeralds, and I was able to put mending on my helmet and my leggings. On day 49, I teleported to the village to kidnap another villager. I needed this dude to roll some really cool enchantments. I then put Unbreaking 3 on my leggings and after a whole day of rolling for enchantments, I got a Looting 7 trade, which I used all of my emeralds to get. I needed more levels to add looting on my sword, so I teleported the desert to grind more mobs. Once more, I got really lucky and found a helmet with Protection 7. I then spent the rest of the night scouring the desert to grind tons more levels. Day 50 to 51, the worst case scenario happened. My PC crashed. Let me explain exactly what I did. I basically traveled from the desert all the way towards a giant mushroom, and yes, because the game crashed, I have to reactivate all of my waystones, which means I can't even teleport back home from this far away. I reactivated the waystone right next to me, and then the journey back was like a thousand blocks, and if things couldn't get worse, a mutant zombie decided to show up. I got blinded as this giant zombie attacked me and I somehow managed to land a hit. But this zombie was really strong and it kept me at a distance the whole time. Then this dude launched me into the air and threw me right back down. I had to finish this fight quickly because the damage was ridiculous. After a few more swings, I took the mutant down and I kept running. Then over the hills, the same zombie I thought I killed was chasing me. There was also one of these lightning struck mobs there too and I had to run away because those guys could actually one shot you. I then took out the zombie one more time but that was still not enough. It took me like three more tries to finally kill this stupid mutant zombie. Day 52, I spent this entire day finding my way back home and I found Barako the Sun Chief's village, which I marked down for the future. Then that night, I managed to reactivate the village waystone and come back home. Now that I was home, I also put Looting 7 on my sword and enchanted a bunch of random books. Day 53, I needed even more chests for all the enchanted stuff I had, so I made more chests and started disenchanting even more stuff. I got a Protection 7 book, which I kept safe, and I went underground. This is when I realized the looting and the Knowledge of the Ages combo are super OP. I got four levels for from one skeleton and then a single enderman gave me 22 levels but it gets crazier since after killing more mobs another enderman gave me 22 more levels and at this point I basically have infinite XP. I also find myself in a dungeon killed a bunch of these mobs and I had 11 skill points which I tried my hardest to split evenly and got to level 100 killing the skeleton. I managed to come back home 70 levels higher in like 10 minutes. I tried to get some good enchantments for my boots but now I was running out of lapis. Instead I made a sharpness 4 book and I failed at improving my chest plate. Day 54, I forgot to record again, but all I did was make a new diamond sword with the same enchantments except for knowledge of the ages. This way I can finally get some mob drops as well. So I put this sword to good use by going out to kill mobs. After killing this boss mob over here, I finally got an overpowered drop. It's been way too long. I spent the rest of this day killing even more mobs and get their loot drops as well. And I actually ended up getting some really strong gear. Day 55, I put my XP sword in my backpack and went to challenge Barako the Sun Chief. I got attacked as soon as I got near the village and I was ready to retaliate. Before this dude could set up phase 2, I rushed into Barako and took him out in a few seconds. My reward was a helmet which spawns followers and then there was a dungeon bag which was even better that gave me 22 diamonds. The quest reward was another god statue and some XP. I placed the Apollo statue right in front of the other statue that I think I got from another quest reward. Day 56 to day 59, I grabbed some potions of luck and went to find unloaded chunks hoping to get some nice loot. Along the way I found a cyclops and since I can't use bows, this guy was a nightmare to take out and I had to run away. I also found this weird colorful biome that had these bee knights things and they were protecting something. I actually touched whatever they were protecting and they got mad so I wiped them all out, took the gold in the center and this golden honeycomb which I have no clue what it's for. I then killed one enderman and got like 10 stacks of ender shards. That's probably why I get 22 levels from them with the other sword. Right after that a mutant creeper leaped onto me and I ran from it just to prepare. This creeper was insanely fast and did some crazy damage. It also released like mini creepers but once it got trapped in this little hole that made I was able to take it out I then picked up the mutant creeper egg and it was on top of my head I had no idea what this thing was so I punched it and I ended up getting a creeper shard and then right after that I got attacked by a dragon and once this dragon landed I was able to just bully it and picked up all the loot I also picked up the gold piles from its nest then while exploring I found another desert pyramid where I got more relics a talisman and a bunch of ingots later that night I found a uh, gatekeeper's house and I bought a blue journal from this guy which completed another quest and then I used the 
Grey Dragon scales to make helmets and boots. After that, I fell into a hole under a farm and got swarmed by zombies. I tried using my shield, but they kept deactivating it, and I realized the only way I can get out is to swing wildly. I actually managed to take these guys out. To end these days of exploring, I found another dungeon and a lost village and then teleported back home finally. Once I got home, I took my new dragon scale armors, disenchanted my helmet and put those enchantments on the new helmet. Day 60 to day 61, I needed a hunter villager, so I made a new area with a hunting post and I kidnapped a new villager and started leveling up this hunter. I then also chopped down more trees to grab more sticks to get more emeralds, and I leveled up my Fletcher to a master level. So basically the entire night, I went to find this library that I already had the waystone activated for, but since my game crashed, obviously I couldn't use that waystone anymore and I had to make this entire trip there. It took most of the night, but I finally got there, I activated the waystone and I started ripping all the bookshelves apart. I went through all three floors again and this way I could also get a ton of emeralds just by trading the books. Of course, I sold as much as I could and started leveling up the hunter as well. This guy has really OP traits so this was a must to level him up. And after trading a bunch of gunpowder, I finally unlocked the trades I needed, the blaze rods. With these blaze rods, I could make tomes. The first tomes I made were for boots, and before enchanting I realized I needed more lapis, and it turns out clerics sell lapis, so I put a brewing stand in the center of the village and started leveling up this cleric to get even more lapis. Now I was able to buy lapis and enchant more of these tombs. I ended up having to make even more and more since I didn't get anything good, and while I was there I also made a tome for each kind. Day 62 I sold a bunch of gold and bought even more lapis. I then realized it was quicker to bring this cleric to my base, so I kidnapped him, made a nice area for it, and I think magma blocks kind of makes and restock quicker. I also learned how to use these affix books so now I can be even more OP. Finally, the last piece of armor, the boots, I actually enchanted it and got a really good feather falling enchantment. After that, I combined a protection 7 book with unbreaking 3 and also put mending on this thing. So now I basically had a perfect set of boots. Just for fun, I also made another obsidian skull and combined it with my shield because I really liked the way it looked. Day 63 to day 65, I broke the nether portal and moved it far away again. And one more time, I had already been in this place before. I then moved my way over to a waypoint I set before. This is where I found a fortress and after a little bit, I saw a little bit of the fortress peeking out and I ender portal towards it. Then I started killing these wither skeletons. I also took out a bunch of blazes and even with looting 7, I was having a real hard time getting wither skeleton heads. And since I've been leveling up like crazy, I had 4 more skill points and I was level 67. Then while I was here, I also got some nether warts and this chest had a nether eye. 2 down, 10 more to go. I also picked up this bastion map and once I got sick of all the wither skeleton farming, this is where I wanted to go next. But while I was here, I was grinding a bunch more wither skeletons until a mutant blaze attacked. And these guys are some of the toughest because they could just drag you in and throw you around. I still managed to take out these guys pretty quick and I picked up the core. And I'm not kidding you when I tell you this, I did not get a single wither skeleton head and none of them spawned at all. I then actually got sick of this fortress and I went out to look for other structures and using my ender pearls I found this temple thing. And in these chests there was a bunch of enchanted weapons and gold. I also picked up whatever this bastion ring thing is called and I started flying through these nethers killing these things called nagas who ended up dropping the first wither skeleton I've seen this entire world. And then after traveling even more I found another another nether fortress and the chest in here had another map which I was actually pretty close to so I ender pulled around until I reached this bastion but right in front of it was a dungeon filled with tons of spawners I then had a great idea to break all the spawners that weren't wither skeletons or nagas for the next few days, I basically moved around this entire dungeon, farming a bunch of whatever these guys were that dropped wither skeleton heads. I ended up getting one more wither skeleton head and some ancient debris as well. And I'm not kidding, I think I killed a few hundred of these nagas and wither skeletons and it still took forever to get the last wither skeleton head I needed. I then took a break to go explore this bastion where I killed these piglin boots and looted the main chests. Since this bastion was glitched, there wasn't really anything else, so I went right back to grinding even more wither skeleton heads. This time I finally got the last head I needed and I teleported back home. And also because I killed a mutant blaze, my quest reward was a blazerite ingot. Then while all my ancient debris was smelting, I started working on expanding my storage system. So I grabbed a ton of network and link cables and then I made space on the other side of the storage room and filled that area with 12 more double chests connected to the root system. Now in total there are 24 cables connected to 24 double chests. I also had tons of lanterns which I sprinkled all around the base and I put glowstone on the floor for more lighting. A 67 I grabbed a golem kit. 
the Wither Skeleton Heads and I made a Netherite Ingot which I used to improve my non-XP sword. So after all of that I went underground to take this Wither down. I actually found some really useful ores while I was digging down there and then I summoned the Wither and used the Golem Kit to summon an Iron Golem to fight with me. This stupid Golem was useless, it ended up getting stuck and I didn't even need it since I was able to take this Wither out in like less than 30 seconds. It dropped a Nether Star and a Wither Eye which I believe is 4 out of 12 now. I have no clue where I got this extra eye. I then used the rest of this day to enchant my tomes and disenchant tons of weapons I've been hoarding. I actually ended up running out of XP doing all of that and I quickly teleported to the desert using my XP sword and I got from level 5 to level 75 in one night. Day 68 I killed this really fast mob and I picked up its OP shield and helmet. This thing almost killed me though. I then teleported back home, put 4 more points into my skills and made another chest for all the enchanted stuff. With these levels I enchanted more tomes, got some really good pickaxe enchantments so I made a dragon bone pickaxe and combined it together with the books and I had a really stacked pickaxe. Of course I put mending on it and I also had a smite 2 book which I put on my new sword and now it has sharpness and smite like my other sword. On day 69 I ripped up my roof and replaced all the cobblestone and random bricks with stone bricks. I also sprinkled more glowberries around for lighting and now most of the cave was actually pretty uniform with stone bricks, glowstone and glowberries. Also while I was at it I made tons of trap doors and sprinkled that around the base to give more color and texture. Day 72 to day 72, I traded a bunch of gold and brought more lapis. Then I went out to go explore and complete some more quests. The first thing I wanted to do was take out the first dragon I saw in this world and explore from there. Once again, I went toe to toe with a fire dragon and I immediately destroyed it. Then later that night, I found a wizard's tower again, which means more affixes, so I went inside and grabbed everything I could in this tower. The main chest had some really nice stuff, a mending book, a vampiric weapon and more importantly it had a ton of these affix removing books. When I came back out I used my XP sword to get even more levels and I drank a potion of luck to hopefully get better loot. The next morning I found tons of pillagers and an outpost. These outposts are the only place where you can get the corrupted eye. So now I got 5 out of 12 done I think. The top chest of this outpost had nothing too good which is really weird cause normally they're the best chest in this entire outpost. Oh yeah and my luck and these bags were insane. I got a netherite ingot. After all of that I found a really nice area and this place had a blacksmith's house and a waystone, floating village, wizard towers and a battle tower. That night I killed a boss mob and got a killer chest plate plus more tomes and affixes from this wizard tower. The main chest had a netherite axe and a netherite sword. Then when I made my way down I got attacked by a mutant enderman. And these guys are insane. They never stop attacking and summon clones non-stop while teleporting everywhere. I used my shield to reflect as much damage as I could and I took down this mutant enderman. Oh yeah this thing also has a last stand move where it just drags everything in and launches you pretty far away. Before these days ended I also raided another wizard's tower, got more cool armor pieces and enchantments. Then I I fought a mutant zombie and also took down this entire battle tower. And when I came home I accidentally started a raid, but I managed to pick up this raid horn and call the raid off. After all of that I disenchanted a bunch of armor pieces and extracted the affixes out of some of this gear too. Day 73 to day 75, I set aside two pieces of armor that I wanted to remove the affixes from and I went to grind even more levels. I killed basically everything I could because removing these things take like 40 level each. Along the way I found a jungle pyramid and got a rogue eye. Now I think I'm uh, halfway there, it was 6 out of 12. Then I found a jungle village which had a mob I could not see and it kept poisoning me from nowhere. That night I also found a lightning dragon nest and without hesitating I jumped in, landed tons of hits and took this dragon down. I also grabbed the scales and bones and continued on my journey. Right after that I killed another enderman and got up to level 70 and also broke into a jungle pyramid. This place had chests filled with diamond and these weird jungle relics. The next day while exploring I got attacked by a fire dragon who I dismantled and then I teleported back home. With 81 levels I extracted some of these affixes, put protection 5 on my chest plate and then put that affix onto my chest plate which gave me 2.9 extra hearts and more armor toughness. I then needed even more levels and of course I just grinded out mobs in the desert again which got me up to level 95 with even more loot. Using those levels I put another affix on my boots making them even better now plus I had 4 more skill points to spend. Day 76 to day 79 I needed some more of these rare eyes and the first one I could think of was the cold eye. So I made my way over to whatever area looked cold on the map and since I couldn't find anything anywhere there and it was night I went over to the desert again. As soon as I made it there I got attacked by a mutant skeleton and then while grinding more levels I got attacked by a mutant husk who dropped a cactus jug. 
I managed to get up to level 77 and just picked the direction to move towards. Here I found a Hydra and no matter what I did, I could not kill it. So I just moved on. The next morning, I favorited all the eyes I needed and crossed off the ones I had. In total, I needed five more since I crafted the witch eyes too. Then while traveling across this lake, I got the best news ever. The Goblin King's health bar showed up. It was time to destroy that little dude. I barged through the front door and started evaporating all these little goblins. Then I tore this ogre apart and just like that, the first floor was basically wiped out. I then made my way up the stairs ready to destroy the Goblin King. I hit this guy as hard as I can and dropped his health down to half when it started running away and teleporting. Then at basically a sliver of health, this dude teleported somewhere and I couldn't find him for a bit. So I just looted as much of this place as I could until I saw him on the ground and I did a jumping strike to take the Goblin King out. My rewards were not that good though either way. As I was looting this castle, a blood wound happened so I grabbed whatever I could as quickly as possible and I teleported to the desert to farm this 3 times spawn rate. Oh my god, they were not kidding about the spawn rates at all. Since there were unbelievable amounts of mobs and tons of lightning strikes, my game was getting like 30 frames per second and all of that before I even entered the desert. I also have to say that the mutant skeletons are the most annoying mobs in this mod pack. Anyways, I made a huge mistake since I wasn't using my XP sword for a little bit and my energy bar was almost ruined. I only had like one or two little energy bars left. I basically had to stop running and after fighting hundreds of mobs and getting to level 103, I came back home quickly before I ran out of energy. Day 79 to day 81, I extracted a mythic affix and put it on my helmet which gave me 8 hearts extra. Then I got some more lapis and started enchanting this new axe which was basically perfect now. After that I teleported far away to search for more structures that could have the eyes I needed. During that journey I also killed some slimes and finally got the slime balls even though it's useless now. Oh yeah, turns out I've had this compass this entire time. I used this to point myself towards a cold ocean so I could either get buried treasure or an ocean monument. I found a pirate ship which I boarded, killed everyone, grabbed all the loot and burned it down as well. After that I killed some sirens and got attacked by a sea serpent which I handled pretty well. I also raided these underground villages which had sea dwellers and these chests were actually not bad at all. After all of that I finally found an ocean monument and I already had doors so I rushed in. I didn't really try and clear all the mobs I just wanted to kill the guardians and get the guardian eye and after searching around I finally found my first elder guardian and wiped that bad boy out picking up the guardian eye. Now I can finally get out of here. Four more eyes left. When I got home, I opened all the bags I've been saving up and I couldn't even tell you what I got. And then I upgraded to a diamond backpack and got completely scammed again. I for sure thought it would give me more space. I also made a separate area for nether warts right next to the sugarcane farm just in case I needed to make potions later on. Day 82 to day 86, to get this black eye, I needed to find buried treasures and just looking at my dot in this map, I knew it was going to be really far. I teleported around to see if the map would budge and realize this treasure is probably even farther than I thought. So I found this rune portal which was pretty ready to activate and I went to the nether. If I found a bastion, that would make me be able to craft an end crystal eye. And I did get kind of lucky because I found a fortress immediately, so my hopes are high. And after traveling around using these ender pearls, I found some really weird structures. Turns out this place was a piglin camp and one of the chests had a bastion map which I was really close to. This was a pretty open bastion and I got two end crystal ores. I also got swarmed by piglins and hoglins and had to kill all of them. Then I got two more end crystal fragments and I was able to make an end crystal eye. So three more to go. With that I teleported back to the overworld and I went to grab this buried treasure. While traveling I got another waystone and I finally noticed the blip on my map increasing in size so I was getting somewhat close. This journey was completely worth it because after digging up the treasure, I got what I needed, the black eye. So two more left. While I was here, I also looked up a cold tundra on the compass and I went to go find it so I could knock off the cold eye from the list. This biome was like 7,000 blocks away and thank god there was a waystone in that direction so that I can go back and forth from it. I'm pretty sure I spent about 3 whole days traveling but it was completely worth it since this biome was also an ice maze connected to a snowy tundra. While I was here, I wanted to take on a boss so I jumped onto this pillager outpost and started working my way up looking for the horn to summon Captain Cornelia. I didn't manage to get the horn at all in this structure but there was a bunch of good loot at the top of this outpost. The next structure I found led me underground and had this locked chest which I obviously needed to open. 
On day 87, I found a shipwreck and took out the pillagers on board. The captain quarters had even more enemies, but it was also where all the loot was. I think I managed to pick up the shell horn from a pillager and I blew it right next to the water. Then from the water came Captain Cornelia, who I managed to do tons of damage before it even landed. It then summoned a bunch of these drowns to distract me and heal. So after I took care of all those guys, I killed the captain and took my quest rewards. I also got this frozen key, which I needed to use on that locked chest. Inside the chest, I got something called the Heart of the Storm, and then there was another chest that I didn't even open, which had the cold eye, so I had one more eye left to get. Day 88 to 90, I knew that one eye can only be dropped from an evoker, so I teleported to the village, rang the bell, and I barricaded all the doors so the villagers wouldn't die, and then I got ready. At first, it was just a patrol that showed up, so I took them out to get a bad omen effect, and then it started. And uh, wave one was simple. It was just some regular pillagers and like one or two advanced guys. Wave 2 then summoned more armored pillagers and some of these specialized dudes like these chefs and the royal guard who was a tank. In 2 waves I already had a stack of emeralds for just from killing all these pillagers. Wave 3 things started getting a little bit more difficult. There were now pillager golems and these mini creepers but it was still pretty manageable. Then wave 4 happened and now tons of these pillagers started pouring out from nowhere. All different shapes and kinds of them too. That's not all. There's now dudes who do tons of magic damage and as a knight that's what I'm weak against. Lucky for me the golems and the village guards were still alive I think and I was able to get a quick nap in also before wave 5. This wave was ridiculous. There were now diamond armor wearing pillagers and way more magic dudes. They kept levitating me and there were non-stop explosions. Still with my OP gear I managed to take them all out but it did almost kill me. I also took out the last few stragglers and then got a totem of undying. I also had two more stacks of emeralds now too but still no magical eye yet. Now I think it was wave 6, I was honestly lost but I did not think it would be this hard. Now this wave had armored evokers with super speed and I managed to actually get the last eye I needed but I was bombarded with all the pillagers since all the golems and villager guards died. I was getting attacked from all sides, launched in the air plus being blinded and weighted so I couldn't jump and that's not all, my energy bar was now decreasing too. I seriously thought that this was the last wave but after I took them all out, turns out I think there was one more, I still have no idea how I survived that one. There were now even more mobs and this meant more spells and I couldn't jump at all. I also had to swing blindly at like 50 pillagers just to stay alive. Then worst case scenario my energy was red. For the rest of this raid I really couldn't run at all. I thought very quickly and I used this golem kit to summon a golem but it got like destroyed immediately. There were still tons of mobs left like this redstone golem and the squall golem so I retreated to get some space and then when I got enough energy I went right back. As long as I could kill these mages I would still be able to complete this raid. Then slowly but surely there was nothing left but the redstone golem. I tried using my golem to fight it since my energy was low but the golem kept getting wiped. While my energy was recovering I organized my inventory and I slowly started hitting this redstone golem. This took forever. But after killing that big beast, I got the hero, the village achievement, and the last eyes I needed. I also freed all the villagers, picked up as much loot as I can before I despawned, then I earned myself another nap. After all of that, I came back at home, put this altar of Zeus in my house, and then I took advantages of the trade I had. Almost a thousand emeralds too that I got from this raid that I turned into blocks. The rest of the night I spent fighting mobs in the desert, and I killed this mutant creeper, which helped me get up to level 120. Day 91 to day 93, from that last night of fighting mobs, I had a bunch of these affixes that I collected from the mobs and I used them to max out my leggings. I also hit level 93 and used up 3 skill points. Now I was ready to take on the ender dragon, so I put all of these unique ender pearls in my backpack and then I used two of the ones that I had a tons of to lead me towards the portal. I don't think regular eyes of ender work. I traveled for a good little bit until I reached a point where the eyes started turning back. So from here I knew to dig down around this area. I dug down until I reached these stone bricks but I wasn't sure if this was a stronghold. I still made sure to loot everything I saw and then there was a library room and I made sure to get all the bookshelves there too. That's basically free emeralds for me right now. After dodging more traps I found another library, got even more bookshelves and I started moving lower and lower to these floors. Then there were these two Two spiral staircases which led all the way down to another library and finally after all of that there was a weird room that was flooded and I started looking at all these chests and breaking down the walls and good thing I did that because I found a redstone machine I think this is a redstone comparator that connected to a hidden room I think this is gonna lead me to the portal there was a huge maze and I just brute forced it by just building and chopping through everything and in the last room I think there was a puzzle but I was just sick of it I just broke the blocks and then I found another secret entrance and this one was 
the actual one that led to this really beautiful portal room. I looked around for a bit before making a waystone and then I made sure that I never had to travel in this stronghold ever again. Now for the moment of truth. I grabbed all my eyes and I placed them in the portal frame. This opened up the end portal and I had to do a few more things before I jumped through. I basically came back home, moved my waystone to the storage room and I had like almost 2,000 books which I wanted to sell a little bit of so I can get started on getting the blocks for a beacon. Day 94 to day 96, I took my golem kit, tons of ender pearls and I went to take down this ender dragon. Plus since I can't use bows because it literally won't fire as a knight, I would have to take down these end crystals like one by one with my hands. I then jumped into the portal and I was left on one of these islands. I built out a little and then ender pearl to the main island and I was ready to take down this dragon. I had to take out each of these ender crystals by hand which wasn't an issue. You know what was an issue though? Mutant endermen and there are loads of them here. One crystal done. So I landed below and did some damage to the dragon and ended up healing right back so I went full focus on taking the crystals down. I pearled around landing on each crystals and blew them up one by one. After after a few minutes all the crystals were gone and I swooped in and did tons of damage to the ender dragon. While I was waiting for the dragon to perch I also grabbed my quest rewards and then one more round of hitting the dragon it had only a third of its health left. Then it perched again and it left with only a sliver of health. A few more and this thing was gone. Alright finally I took the dragon out and I swapped to my XP sword. The dragon egg was also super shiny and of course I grabbed that for myself. I then realized that the end dimension is an XP gold mine. Every single enderman would give me tons of levels but I ended up pushing my luck since this mutant enderman attacked me and not gonna lie this mutant enderman was a lot stronger than the ender dragon. Before I left to go to the other end islands I took all of my quest rewards which gave me another dragon egg and another star plus I got up to level 213. I made my way over to the gateway and slid through the portal. I'm gonna skip past the boring travel because I literally killed tons of endermen got to level 300 and I found the end city relatively quickly. Now that I was here I killed as many shulkers as possible and slowly worked my way up towards the top. The top floors had pedestals holding up shulker boxes and tons more books but it was time for the real star of the show the end ship of course I took all the books and the elytra which already had unbreaking and mending but these chests were filled with crazy diamond weapons, strong enchantments, end relics and most importantly dragon scales which can make some insane armor. I grabbed everything I possibly could like void totems, orbs, any armor piece with good enchantments and I teleported right back home. For the rest of day 96 to day 98 I made these obsidians with iron so I could make more obsidian ingots. It was time for an armor upgrade. To make these draco arcanus armor I needed to make obsidian armor first and I started by making the helmet, then the chest plate, then the leggings next, and last but not least, the full armor was done with the boots. This armor ended up matching my shield and was more powerful than the dragon scale armor. I just needed to transfer the enchantments and put the affixes on it. I chose to take out all the enchants off first and I put it on my new armor but this meant losing like 15 extra hearts from all the affixes I had and it took like 100 plus levels. I had one decent affix which I extracted and a protection 5 book which I also disenchanted. I put the protection 5 on my leggings and the affix on my chest plate. I then put one more affix on my boots and I realized I needed fireworks which luckily can be bought from a village. I also had enough to make a few. Before that, I made a hole towards the sky because I wanted a beacon inside of the base. I dug out an entire area right in front of my enchantment setup to house the beacon. Then this is where all the iron, gold, and emeralds I've been collecting paid off. Each layer of this beacon was a different block and it was ready to be activated finally. I chose to use this for regeneration and haste. Then I made another area in the trading hall for the Endyrian trader so I could have infinite fireworks. First I needed these purple blocks so I flew all the way back to the end city and I teleported right back home then I kidnapped a villager and I leveled it up to unlock this fire trade. I wanted to buy enough fireworks that would fill up like half the backpack. For the rest of day 98 to day 100 this Endyrian I realized sells dragon heads which can help make the best bookshelves in the game. The end shelf can let you enchant up to level 80 so this is a must. I brought tons of dragon breath from this guy then I chopped down tons of trees for bookshelves and last but not least the dragon head to top it all off. At first I was only able to make like one end shelf and this already meant I could do enchants up to level 36. So I went to the end to grab even more end stones and I got up to like level 195. With all of that I filled up my enchantment setup with end shelves. Now I can enchant things with 80 levels. I also just realized that there might be one more tier of bookshelves that I completely forgot to get. But aside from that, I did get my first level 80 enchant and it was really nice. I still kept rolling it though to see if I could get something better and I did. It was a lot better. I then had a genius idea of enchanting level 80 books and tomes to fill it out and max out my armor. Doing all of that, I managed to make my armor and gear unbelievably overpowered. This is what my end game gear looked like. I actually had to re-enchant my boots since one of it like took half of my heart and now this thing was completely ridiculous. Finally, 
I ended up being level 146 and enchanted my shield as day 100 came around. I got transported to ancient Egypt and this place is filled to the brim with bandits, mummies and these ghosts. I have 100 days to collect the artifacts of autumn from the pharaohs scattered around this world before I can come back home. Day 1, the first thing I needed to do was to look for food, but I noticed a bandit patrol right in front of me. I had to go the other way and as I was chopping this deadwood tree, a little creature came out and attacked me. Once that was taken care of, I made a crafting table, killed another scarab and made some wooden tools. Just as I was about to leave, a bandit patrol noticed me and started firing arrows. I ran away and started burrowing underground and mined some limestone. This is where I made a limestone pickaxe. Before I left this hole, I made a full set of limestone tools and found my first pyramid. Right now, there's no way to tackle this place. Instead, I found another structure where I looted the crates and got dirty coins, jewelry and some of these emerald seeds. After eating the scraps I collected, I found an even larger structure and built up to it. This place was filled with crates and each crate had tons of goodies. I found leather, coal and even iron in here. There was also a spawner on the bottom floor and this bandit who had a giant sword. I managed to kill him and while looting some more crates, I got tons of leather, coal, gold, iron and I even managed to get a pair of iron boots. After filling my inventory with junk, there were way too many bandits around here so I had to run away. I found a little hill, made some torches and dug in hoping to survive the night. With the iron I got, I managed to make a shield which would protect me from the incoming arrows. Day 2, I went down in the mines and realized I had 3 iron ingots which I turned into an iron pickaxe. Then I started digging down, grabbing everything I could and I mostly found iron and coal which was enough for me to make tons of torches and an iron chest plate. I then used the rest of the leather I had to make leggings and a helmet. Oh, and I also made a bucket. Then it was time to somehow get past the bandits that have been piling up right next to me. It definitely was not worth it fighting these guys right now, so I just ran even though some of the arrows were hitting me. Since I had no food, I had to kill every rabbit or quail I saw, and then I was looting some of these structures when I got hit by a bandit with a huge sword and it knocked me down to three hearts. Luckily, I was able to take this guy out, but I realized I needed to find a village or an oasis soon to have a good food source. After that, I found another giant structure where I picked up a fortune 2 pickaxe and managed to already kill every single type of bandit. But now I was surrounded by them and I jumped and began running again. For the rest of this day I dug another hole and set this place up to get more resources. I made torches, cleared some more space and went down to the mines with my fortune 2 pickaxe where I found a mine shaft. Day 3 in the mine shaft I picked up a bunch of strings to make wool and I explored around trying to find some chests. I managed to get one chest and the loot wasn't too good. Thankfully this fortune 2 pickaxe is crazy and I picked up tons of coal and these fossil blocks which gave me dirty coins and jewelry. Oh and of course even more iron. I had to be careful using this fortune 2 pickaxe since it was almost broken already. I then came back up to make some wool and smelt the iron. I realized the smartest thing to do is to make more iron pickaxes and only use the fortune 2 on, on diamonds. I then explored around the caves underneath the mine shafts collecting some more ores and I found this weird creature. Now this guy was an absolute tank and it took a bunch of swings to take him out. All that exploring paid off though since I found my first diamond of this world. The fortune 2 didn't help at all since I only got 2 from 2 veins. I then picked up some lapis, killed another stone golem and found even more diamonds. This time luck was on my side and I have 10 diamonds in total now. So after collecting a few more new ores like this nebu ore, I decided to come back up to the base area. I spilled to the nebu ore and then since I picked up this bucket of water, I used it to clean all the dirty coins and jewelry I had. Day 4, I grabbed everything that was important and ran off to go find civilization. After dodging tons of bandit patrols, I had 2 hearts left and had to start killing some of these camels for their meat. That night a sandstorm hit and I dug underground to wait it out. Once the sandstorm went away, I slaughtered a bunch more cows and had 7 raw camel meat. Day 5 to 7, I was filled up with food and more determined than ever to find a village or an oasis. Directly in front of me, I finally found what I needed. There were a few bandits here and after I took them out, I explored the village and checked out some of these guys' trades. Then I actually got attacked by even more bandits and I picked this alchemist's house to hide from them. Using the tiny hole on top of the door, I took out tons of bandits until I got this thing called Marked for Death. No clue what that means. Turns out that means assassins come after you and these guys can poison you, open any doors and they can climb everything. The next morning I found another great pickaxe and put all of my random stuff in these crates. Then I made iron leggings and a diamond chest plate. To put these pickaxes to use, I started a mine right from this house. And then to save my fortune pickaxe, I started a strip mine and only used it for diamonds. Day 8, I did my first trade with the villager but this idiot opened the door and let a bandit in. I accidentally hit the villager and I almost died. Then I spent the whole day mining and only got 3 diamonds. When I came back up, I had enough iron to make an anvil and combine the 2 iron pickaxes I had and repair them. 
Day 9 to 10, I spent the rest of these days strip mining because these bandits are no joke. They tear through iron armor. While I was down here, I picked up some obsidian, got a massive haul of iron, gold, coal, and redstone. Then after like 40 minutes, I finally found more diamonds. After a 15 diamond haul, I came back home and smelt everything and turned as many things into blocks as possible. With the diamonds, I made a diamond sword, diamond leggings, and diamond boots. Day 11 to 12, I gathered all of my valuables and went out again to look for a village with any source of food. I traveled through a heavy sandstorm and above the hill, I noticed another village. The best part is this place had a farm, which was exactly what I needed. I harvested all of these things called emmer and replanted the seeds. Then a ton of bandits started attacking, so I found shelter in the red house. To make bread, I need to make this thing called a quern, so I placed all of my furnaces down and started smelting the limestone in my inventory. So this process is kind of complicated. You need to place down all these emmer ear things on the quern and then you gotta start spinning it until you get this flour and then you dip the flour into water which then gives you dough and then you can finally make bread. To speed up this process, I made an infinite water source behind the house so I could continually dip the flour in. For the rest of these days, I kept spinning the emmer and taking out these bandits all around the village until I had 40 pieces of bread. Day 13, I made another shield and I went to explore the surrounding areas. In front of me, there was another one of those huge structures. This place had tons of crates filled with coins and more importantly, they have enchanted gear here sometimes. I got really lucky and picked up an Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 3, Mending, Iron Shovel. After that, I took out tons of bandits and got marked for death again, which is terrifying, but I managed to take the assassins out and I picked up an enchanted short bow. I also found an oasis, which is really cool because it's the perfect place to build next to. Then it started becoming dark, so I rushed home and made fertile soil, which I placed right next to my water source. Day 14 to 15, I got this camel to love me and placed a saddle on it. I didn't want it to die, so now it's right next to my house. Since I've been fighting bandits, I needed to make more bread, and once again, I grabbed all the items I needed from my chest and started to migrate near that oasis I found. I hopped on this camel to hopefully make a permanent home. After a quick nap, I made tons of limestone walls and started making a perimeter for the start of this base. Trust me, it's gonna get much bigger. I basically spent the entire day setting up two high walls since I was constantly attacked by bandits, but once the nightfall came, the perimeter is mostly set up and I placed down my furnaces and chests. I then fill the corners and the middle of the wall with water underneath so all the fertile soil can spread and I built fence gates to stop the bandits from coming in. With these essentials complete, I chopped down a bunch of palm trees for their saplings and placed tons more fertile soil around the base. Day 16, now that it was actually a lot safer, I expanded my entire base by two blocks on all sides except the front and I started an emmer farm. Then after moving all of my chests and furnaces back, I needed these things called papyrus to be able to start making Making books. Lucky for me, the oasis in front of me had some and I harvested and planted them on the opposite side of the emmer farm. To end this day off, I placed off more water in the base while trying to hide it so the fertile soil can spread even quicker. Day 17, I was wondering where all the bandits were since I usually would be swarmed. But once I looked down this hill, I realized they've all been piling up right here. From the high ground, I took out a bunch of these guys until I got hit into the hole from behind. I had to get out quickly and retreat back to my base before I got torn up. Later that night, I went back to where the bandits had been piling up and I started letting the sand drop, which took out tons of them that had spawned right on top of each other. I just had to be careful not to fall in and I actually managed to get rid of most of them. Day 18 to 20, there was a sandstorm and I was completely out of diamonds as well. So I spent these days going down to the mines. I honestly have no clue what happened to my fortune 2 pickaxe. I'm pretty sure I either dropped it or I forgot it in a chest. I ended this trip with five diamonds and I collected the papyrus, which I turned into scrolls and three scrolls are used to make one book. So I'm still a little bit away from making that enchantment table. I used the diamonds for a diamond helmet and I expanded the sides of the base again by a few more blocks to give more space to the farm. Then I chopped down all the palm trees near my base turned it all into slabs, and then built a slanted roof to protect my bed area from being flooded by sand during sandstorms. Day 21 to day 22, I put fences on the edge of the roof and went back inside to replace some of the fertile soil with palm slabs. Then I was able to make three scrolls and once I combined that with leather, I got a book. But before I was able to build the enchantment table, I chopped down a tree, slabbed up the entry of the house, and then I made the enchantment table and planned out how to place all the bookshelves. The rest of these days, I spent gathering more food since I completely ran out. And I made these two extra crates to put on the camel. I also expanded the farm and made a composter to recycle all the extra seeds I had. After all of that, I was able to get 8 more bread and I made a bunch more iron pickaxes to go on another mining trip. Day 23 to day 24, I went straight down to the mine since the enchantment table had used up basically all of my diamonds and I was in dire need since these bandits shred through your armor. While mining, I picked up tons of the other ore, but once again, the diamonds were super scarce and I didn't have fortune 2 anymore. Lucky for me, I stumbled into a pretty big vein of diamonds and I already ended up getting 6. 
A few moments later, I found this tomb filled with these desert blazes. I took them all out and broke their spawners and hoped that the main chest had some really good loot, but there was absolutely nothing. I took the bones because you can make bone meal out of them. And then this cave had no more diamonds. So I went back to the strip mine and grabbed every single thing that I left before I came into the cave. Once all of that was done, I came back to the base. I turned all those bones into bone blocks and then into bone meal because for some reason, dusty bones don't turn directly into bone meal. I then used that all on my farm and without harvest, I had a stack of seeds and 35 emmer ears. I used that stack of emmer seeds to make even more bone meal, but this was terribly inefficient. The rest of the night, I spent spinning this stupid corn. Honestly, I wish there was a much easier way to make bread. While everything was smelting, I also expanded the papyrus farm. The rest of day 24 to day 27, I spent AFKing since I needed more paper and food to be able to take on the harder bosses. Day 28, I harvested all the crops and still the papyrus wasn't nearly enough to make a bunch of bookshelves. I needed to find another way. All that AFKing only made one extra bookshelf. Remember that hole all those bandits used to pile up on? Turns out they still chill there and I had a horde of them chasing after me. I used my expert running away skills to come back to my base and harvest my emmer farm. At least this farm was worth AFKing for. While I was here though, I made another diamond pickaxe and got on my camel to explore more. I tried looking for the entrance for one of these pyramids, but it was way too deep. I kept moving forward though and looted these watchtower structures which had a bunch of dirty coins and these cloth scraps. Then I found a pyramid map and decided to give this thing a look along the way. Along one of these towers, I got a flame book and somehow lost my camel. Then it was nighttime, so I got attacked by a bunch of monsters like these mummies, weird skeletons, and these weird looking ghosts. While running, I actually found the other pyramid and the entrance, which I only had one Nebu torch on hand, so I couldn't open it just yet. So on day 29 to 30, I found another giant structure in which I looted all the crates and found some decent loot. But more importantly, I got the extra Nebu torch to be able to unlock the pyramid. And when I did, this place was filled to the brim with mummies and ghosts. So I ran in quick, lit the place up a little. And then when I was backing out, I got attacked by bandits and marked for death. I still managed to break all the spawners inside at least. I really can't take on the pharaoh just yet because my armor is almost broken and I have no food so I ran back home. I picked up these ectoplasm which can be turned into slime balls and that can be made into a lead which means I won't lose my camels anymore. Then to stock up on food more, I bone mealed a bunch of my crops and harvested them and I started spinning them 10 at a time. The next morning, I repaired a protection 2 iron legging and equipped that since my diamond one almost broke. I also unlocked the pyramid right in front of my house. And again, the top floor was really easy to clear out. I also got these frost walker boots, which is going to be great for the desert. Then there was a pair of mending boots and a protection 3 iron helmet, which I equipped. I then came back home, made a grindstone and disenchant some books to help with the bookshelf grind. And of course, I spun for even more food. Day 31, I grabbed another sacrificial camel and went back to one of the village. I left some really good stuff in the chest, which I grabbed, but the main goal was to actually stock up on food. I had tons of these gold coins, so I bought a stack of ember bread from the farmer over here. None of the other villagers had anything else to offer, so I came right back home to make a lead. Now I for sure won't lose my camel, I hope. I then explored pretty far. I got an enchanted golden date, which is like an enchanted golden apple. And if that wasn't insane luck, I also got a sharpness three mending greatsword, and this thing was crazy good. On day 32, I lost another camel, so I jacked a random one and tore apart another structure. This place had a full fire aspect 2 book, which was definitely going on the greatsword. I also found a relic bow, which says fully charged arrows fly straight, and I got wombo comboed by these bandits, so I had to run away from this pyramid that I was going to try and take. I was able to hide in another village where I took all of their crops and sold it back to them, and I also found an efficiency 4 pickaxe. Day 33, I came back home, repaired the iron armor I was wearing, and put fire aspect 2 on my greatsword. After that, I made some more chests and an automatic composter. Once it was all operational, I put all the seeds into it. Then I went back into the pyramid in front of my base to challenge the pharaoh. First, I wanted to clear out all the traps and loot whatever I can in the bottom floor, hoping to get some better armor pieces. Then on day 34, I remembered that I had some enchanted golden dates. So I grabbed those and dropped off a bunch of items and went right back to challenging the pharaoh. Since you can't break the blocks until the pharaoh is dead, I had to think outside of the box. I summoned the pharaoh using the Nebu torches and ate the dates. Once the pharaoh arrived, I immediately started placing water. This took a few tries, but I got it stuck right next to the door on the other side. Now that the pharaoh can't really move, I was able to chip away at its health and by being very careful of the mummies that spawned behind me. After I ate the second golden date, I started swinging wildly, and before I knew it, I took down my first pharaoh and got a legendary item. 
it was also a protection three book in the sarcophagus and getting out there was pretty easy now that you can break the pyramid blocks day 35 to day 36 i killed a ton of bandits around the base and collected these dirty coins i then grabbed all of my coins that i had stored and went over to the other village hoping to get a book trade i didn't find a book trade but i found something better i found actual bookshelves and these are going to be huge help for me i also tried to get a librarian and a cartographer but these guys took their jobs but somehow didn't offer trades so i stole their camel and made my way home to place these bookshelves in total i was able to make 11 more books and my enchants are up to level 26 now. Day 37 to day 38, I enchanted my pickaxe and got silk touch, so I started enchanting this iron pickaxe instead until I saw the fortune enchantment. I got efficiency 4 and unbreaking 3, but no fortune on the diamond pickaxe. I did manage to get fortune 2 on the iron pickaxe though. So since my diamond arm was almost broken and I had barely any diamonds left, it was time to put this fortune 2 to use. I went down to the mines and picked a different direction and then got to work. I used the fortune pickaxe on anything that dropped XP because I wanted to enchant even more things, and then I stumbled into another mine shaft which was pretty deep and I collected everything here and killed more of these stone guys. Once I cleared the mine shaft I moved back to the strip mine and I started finding tons of diamonds. The hall was crazy I got tons of lapis, iron and diamonds. As soon as I got back to the base I enchanted the chest plate which now has protection 3. I also repaired it and I repaired the rest of my armor pieces as well as disenchanting the old armor. Day 39 to 40 I needed more levels to enchant my equipment so I started taking out these bandits and trying not to damage my armor a lot. After spending the entire day killing bandits i got up to level 24 so i grabbed my coins and went over to the old village to grab more xp turns out this place also had a library i was just super blind and i missed it i couldn't find those farmers to trade with but i did find some spawners and grinded out a ton more bandits and got up to level 28 yeah i'm pretty sure i went to the wrong village because of the sandstorm because this place did not have the farmers i needed eventually i got up to level 30 and got some really terrible leggings then when i was out grinding more mobs i found another relic sword in these crates and this sword apparently gets stronger as you kill more mobs. So I slaughtered tons more mobs trying to level this sword up. I re-enchanted my leggings and got Unbreaking 2, but I already had a Protection 3 book which I combined it with. Day 41, I made more golden dates to use against the pharaoh and I started stocking up on more food. Then I got up to level 31 and enchanted my diamond helmet which again was an awful enchantment. I did get to enchant this new bow though and it got power 4 and flame. Then that night the new sword Anubis' wrath was very close to leveling up. After I got 50 kills it powered up and now it does one more attack damage. I also enchanted it and got smite 4 which means this sword is perfect for pharaohs. With all this new gear I wanted to take out another pharaoh so I grabbed my camel and headed off to find another pyramid. I found one that I already cleared the top floor of and made my way down to the bottom floor where I disarmed all the traps. I picked up a totem of undying, ate an enchanted golden date and summoned this pharaoh. I thought I trapped this pharaoh too but it ended up just looping around the other side and I had to fight this thing head on. I ran around the entire tomb hitting the pharaoh and hoping it would get trapped until his health was low enough that I could use brute force to take it out. Once the pharaoh died I got a sword called Nephthys' Blessing. It looked cool but it's still weaker than all of my other swords. Then I fought the real boss, these stupid assassins, but I managed to make it out and come home with my armor barely hanging on. Day 43 to day 44, I used half of my levels to repair all of the armor and then I enchanted this new sword which is still worse than my old ones. That night I went right back to leveling up Anubis' Wrath and I managed to get up to 150 kills and the attack damage is actually pretty high now. Then I enchanted a bunch of books trying to get unbreaking enchantments and I got unbreaking two on my chest plate and completely ran out of levels. So I found the local farmer and gave him all of my coins for bread and levels. Day 45 to day 46. While I was looking for more pyramids I found another big structure and one of the crates had another enchanted great sword. I then followed a map that led to a pyramid and I cleared the first floor. I then jumped down to disable all the traps and summon the pharaoh. Smite 4 and this new sword made this fight super easy. Also the water trick is like the best thing ever. I was easily able to take out this pharaoh. It did take all of my golden dates though. And my reward was another bow which wasn't even that good. Day 47 to day 48. Right after that I went to find another pyramid and there was one that was really close to this one. I also had this enchanted golden date just for emergencies. I made it down to the tomb again and summoned another pharaoh. Now this fight was really easy because I managed to trap the pharaoh right in the corner and this sword did wonders. The drop was something I already had but the sarcophagus had a protection 3 unbreaking 3 book. Oh and I found this thing called Tefnit's Call which was a trident. I think it's a tradition now to lose my camel so I had to run back home. As soon as I got home I combined the two great swords together to make 
make one insane sword. Day 49 to day 50, I repaired my fortune 2 pickaxe because all of my armor is broken again and I started a new mine to hopefully get tons more diamonds. I completely ransacked through the caves and picked up tons of ores. This time though, I got diamonds almost immediately. I also started collecting this gravel because flint is very hard to find. All in all, this mining trip gave me 47 diamonds which will surely be enough. I also used all the flint to make tons of arrows just in case. Then I remade diamond armor and got really good enchants, for, especially for the leggings and the chest plate. My helmet also had protection 4 and the next enchantments were for the boots. Day 51, I stocked up on bread and more importantly, I needed to get to level 30 for the boots. So I slaughtered the bandits around the base. Then when I got to level 30, I put protection 4 on my boots and combined that with the Unbreaking 3 book. Next, I made a spinning wheel to hopefully make desert armor. But first, the spinning of the cloth scrap took forever and it turns out that turning my diamond armor into diamond desert armor removes all the enchants I put onto it. Day 52 to day 53, the base was starting to feel cramped. So I removed the roof first and expanded the sides and back by two blocks to give even more space. Then I moved the farms, enchantment table, and the furnaces all the way to the corners. After that, I chopped down the trees to rebuild the roof and I planted back even more saplings. Day 54, I grabbed even more food and started replacing some of the walls to match each other better. I then had a bunch of these kumites, so I used these blocks plus a face to summon this golem. And then I thought it would protect me from the bandits, but once I let this dude out, he was gone forever. Then I got another sacrificial camel and brought it into the base for future traveling. I also made tons of golden dates just in case. I spent the rest of this night repairing the shovel and preparing even more food. Day 55 to day 56. With all protection 3 and 4 gear, it was time to ruin all these pharaohs all around me. Turns out I did a real good job taking down the pyramids near me, but thankfully I found a map leading to another pyramid. I found the next victim and opened the doors up, and the top floor was obviously filled to the brim with mobs again, but I handled that pretty easily, and once I made it down to the bottom floor, I was more prepared than ever to take this pharaoh down. This time I didn't even need a water bucket to cheese it. I was able to take the fight straight to the pharaoh and destroy it. Of course, it's another bow and not a piece of Atem. Day 57 to day 59, I was marked for death, and these assassins are harder to fight than the pharaohs sometimes, but I just got back on my camel and dipped. I noticed another pyramid that night, so that was the next challenge. Once again, I got to the bottom and summoned the pharaoh. This time, the pharaoh did tons more knockback damage, and it was kind of really challenging. It wasn't a breeze like last time, and there were some moments where I had to run, but once I focused my attack, I was able to take this pharaoh out, and I'm pretty sure I've gotten this artifact like three times already. Then I came back home to repair my armor. I enchanted this new bow with power and next I went over to the village to spend the coins I've been collecting, meaning I just bought a ton of bread. Also, I used up most of my gold to make the golden dates. I was fully prepared again to take on another pharaoh. So I summoned this bad boy and kept hitting it towards the corner. I only needed to heal once, but after I got some distance, I came back to put this pharaoh back to rest. My reward was finally something new, a new weapon, which turned out to not be that good. For the rest of these days, I killed tons of bandits because I wanted to enchant this pickaxe, and it ended up being really stacked. Day 60 to day 61, I went mining one more time with this new Fortune 3 pickaxe and another one that I just enchanted. After about a day of mining, I left the mines with a huge haul, 35 diamonds and tons of coal and lapis. Funniest thing is that I was looking for gold to make golden dates and I barely got any from this mining trip. Day 62 to day 64, I made an extra bed which I put on the camel storage so now I was fully ready to get the pieces of autumn. I summoned the first pharaoh of this expedition and absolutely demolished them. This pharaoh dropped a bow which was not what I was looking for at all. Then the next pyramid I raided, I got an efficiency 4 on breaking 3 mending axe. I then went to summon this pharaoh and this time I had to retreat a little and take this fight a little bit slower. I finally got a new artifact. Fact that this was a necklace that keeps your enchantments when you die, but it's hardcore so I can't even benefit off of it. After that, I used another map to locate the next pyramid I wanted to raid, but this place was way too far away. Lucky for me, I found a pyramid pretty close and made my way to the bottom. I ate my last golden date and summoned this pharaoh. This time, it was an actual challenge. This pharaoh almost killed me and kept me at a distance, so I had to hide a bunch of times to heal. After gaining some health back and equipping a totem, I managed to kill this pharaoh while my totem popped. The reward was a sick axe and now I need to recoup all the items I used up during the fight with the pharaohs. So I went back home. While I was here, I got this desert diamond armor, which I disenchanted and re-enchanted until it was perfect. I then enchanted the new axe I got, which ended up being pretty good. Then I spun these clothes scraps so I could make 
desert diamond armor instead of regular diamond armor. All I could do at this time was just turn the boots into the desert version. Day 65, I converted most of my armor into the desert version and I used the iron armor until I could find the best enchantments for each piece. I managed to get protection for in the boots and spent this day killing a bunch of bandits for XP. I needed the ghost to spawn at night so I can grab more clothes crafts since I completely ran out. All that XP grinding allowed me to enchant the helmet, now the only thing left was the leggings to be fully decked out. After grinding out more ghosts, I had 32 cloth scraps which I spun until I had enough linen to make a set of desert leggings. I got protection 4 on the leggings and it was finally fully decked out. Day 66 to day 67, I made more golden dates and found another pyramid to take down. This pharaoh was actually tough again and after hiding for a bit, I was able to kill it and achieve the first piece of Atem. This was a staff that would teleport me back to the spawn point. Back to back, I went to take out another pyramid and after taking out this pharaoh, I got the same weapon I've gotten like three times. The gods have been mocking me. Day 68 to day 69, I found a village which had a librarian so I stole their lectern and tried giving this job towards other villagers. I also realized the Atem staff doesn't teleport my camel with me. I then managed to trap this villager but the mechanics are weird in this mod pack. Only some of them have trades even if they do take the job for some reason sometimes you can't even roll it the trades just stay the same so if a villager doesn't have a mending trade you'll never be able to re-roll for new books. Day 70 to day 71, that experiment didn't work out, so I took on another pyramid near the village and this fight was very straightforward. I got the pharaoh stuck in the corner and finally after all this time I got the eyes of Atem, the first piece of the set. This one makes the sandstorm less painful so it's got some great uses. Day 72 to day 77, these pyramids are getting farther and farther away, but I managed to find another one. After taking out this pharaoh, I got the second piece of Atem's armor, the body of Atem. Now this is supposed to give some extra damage reduction, two down, two left to go. I teleported back home, grabbed another camel, and then I enchanted Atem's helmet and got protection 4 and unbreaking 3. The chest plate got protection 3 and unbreaking 3. I set off on my camel again and these eyes of autumns reduced the sandstorm by a ton making it way more visible now. Then after traveling some more I found a sphinx structure. Inside was one of the things I've been needing this entire time, a mending book. I also got this thing called an idol of labor which I have no idea what it's for and then to end these days off I fought another pharaoh. For some reason this dude was regenerating health and after I took him out I picked up this thing called Isis's healing, a necklace that regenerates my health. Day 78 to 81. After a few days of rummaging around pyramids, I fought a pharaoh which also had regeneration but after taking it out, it dropped the leggings of Atem. The legs of Atem give you 50% resistance to knockback damage which is going to be really useful against even more pharaohs. Also the sarcophagus had a mending book waiting for me. In the last few structures alone, I found two mending books plus the one from the sphinx. So I teleported home, used the protection mending book on the new leggings and then the last two mending books I put on the chest plate and the helmet. So finally, after all this time, I don't have to repair my armor manually. For some even more good news, I think the Anubis's Wrath Sword is now fully leveled up. Day 82 to day 87, these huge journeys to find the last piece of Atem took super long. Since most of the pyramids near have already been taken down, I had to keep venturing further and further out. I ended up raiding only a few pyramids anyway and to add insult to injury, this pharaoh dropped the eyes of Atem which I already have. The next pharaoh though dropped something new, just not what I needed at all. So I teleported home to find another direction to explore. Day 88 to day 93, Again, for many days, I explored around the desert and took out every pyramid I could find. But it all seemed hopeless until I stumbled into this one. While I got the summoning ritual ready, I hoped that this would be the final pyramid I ever have to take down. I summoned the pharaoh and for the first time in a while, they did a bunch of damage. But once I killed the pharaoh and picked up the loot, I got the last piece of Atem to complete the collection. The feet of Atem give 20% movement boost. I also got protection 4 on these boots and decked them out. Day 94 to day 97, I explored around the desert looking for more structures trying to find some more mending books. I went back towards the other villages and I couldn't find anything so I came back home. Day 98 to day 100, after conquering this entire dimension, I removed the entire papyrus farm and started smelting a bunch of limestone for limestone bricks. Then I made this thing called a scarab and once I had all the materials set, I placed the limestone bricks around to make the portal that would take me back home. I dropped the scarab on the pool and watched the water transform into a different color. After getting one last night's rest, on day 100 it was time to go back to my dimension. I survived 100 days in Hardcore Better Minecraft Plus. My goals were to take down three bosses. The Netherite Monstrosity, the Ender Guardian, and the Void Worm.
Day one, just like regular Minecraft, I collected some wood to make the basic tools. Good thing I was right in front of a massive structure, so I also upgraded to stone tools really quickly. Then I made my way over to an abandoned house, but some creature let out a huge roar. I quickly grabbed the books and all the random stuff on the first floor and went up to the attic. The chest in here had 10 iron ingots and iron leggings. After equipping whatever I could, I made an iron pickaxe, some bread, torches, and a shield. When I tried to leave the house, I noticed an overworld drake right in front of me. So to outsmart it, I stayed under the door and slowly lowered its health until it eventually died. After that, I went my merry way until I saw some invisible skeletons. It took a little bit to defeat these guys, they were really tough. I then made my way towards the structure to see what was up. Turns out there were even more invisible skeletons, so I hid and slowly took these guys out too. The good thing is that these chests were really nice. I got an iron chest plate and even more iron. After almost dying, I went to the other side to loot that chest too. This is where I got two diamonds and more food. Then I went to the top floor and killed the final skeleton here. The final chest was also really nice. I got a sharpness one iron sword and some extra iron tools. With all the loot, I decked myself out in iron armor and cooked the food and went to sleep. Once I woke up, I made a bucket and went out to explore some more. I ran through a very colorful biome and found this rundown structure. These look like graves, so I dug them up and it turned out to be really good chests. They contained golden apples, enchanted books, coal, bone, and more importantly, enchanted armor. I also fully lucked out and got a mending diamond helmet. If that wasn't cool enough, I also got Icy Thorns 4 on my chest plate. No clue what that does. Yeah, this place basically filled up my inventory with tons of loot, so I went inside to see what was up in there. This place was really scary though. Uh, turns out there was a basement also here, but I wanted to check out the top floors first. I cleared some bookshelves and found a chest hidden behind them. Then after all of that, I went to the attic which had strings and a chest, which I used to make a backpack for all the junk that I had collected. I also had tons of iron so I was able to upgrade the backpack to the iron version. Then with all this new space I went straight down to the basement to check out the situation. This urn had some really rare items which I snatched up and I found a mending bow in the barrel. The other barrel had a flame bow and then I freed the two villagers that were trapped here as well. The next day I made a boat and went out to explore again. I ended up finding a wizard's tower. I collected everything I could and I started making my way up the tower and broke these bookshelves. It turned out that this place was trapped with TNT. The main chest also had tons of enchanted books. The best ones being mending and whatever this life mending thing was. On the way out, I found this crazy bird which shot its feather at me. And I stumbled into a pillager outpost. This place was filled to the brim with pillagers. And they were tearing my shield up. So I had to make a new one. And also, they did tons of damage so I had to eat my golden apples. I managed to fight them all night. And I even got attacked by this OP enderman which I had to place the water down just to survive. Once the enderman disappeared, I had a new challenger. This absolute tank of a skeleton. Lucky for me, it was very stupid and I hid behind blocks taking shots until it was weak enough to take out. The reward though was incredible. I got a protection 7 iron chest plate. Now that I was better equipped, I went to ruin this pillager outpost. Uh yeah, turns out they were still kind of strong, so I retreated, made a sleeping bag, and went to sleep. Day 5, it was time for a different strategy. I mined some cobblestone to make some furnaces, and then I chopped down this tree for sticks. I needed to cook some more food and remake some iron armor though. Once I stocked up, I went right back to the outpost. This time, it was no mercy. I managed to take them all out on the bottom floor and even re made my shield. Then I went into the tower and the first chest had these things called tattered tomes and like a bunch of other random stuff. The next floor had even more food plus some arrows and the top floor basically had the same stuff. I got tons of wheat, carrots, and some iron. I used these tomes to get like 8 levels and plus you can turn these things right back into paper. Then that night I found this really weird ocean monument structure which had a portal frame in the center. After waking up I realized I had the bad omen effect so I ran to find some cows. Then after running through this entire swamp I found another one of those creepy houses. These places tend to have tons of really good loot so I was already filling up my backpack really quickly. The upstairs chest had the best loot ever, a mending diamond chest plate. But for right now the protection 7 iron chest plate is still better. Also there was an efficient see 8 diamond shovel in the same chest. The bottom floor had diamond leggings so I was already getting kinda stacked. That night I left to find a nice area to build a house. I actually managed to find a village and fought a bunch of mobs. There also turned out to be another underground village right next to this village too which I obviously went down to explore. Down here I found some iron blocks, made an anvil and then I grabbed some stone to make a grindstone. I tried to disenchant the iron chest plate but it didn't really work on this update. I also just kept the iron chest plate on which turned out to be a good choice since I met this very OP mob. Bob. I was able to block this dude named Bob over here and I took him out. My reward was a sharpness 5 iron sword. 
and the chests in Bob's lair were filled with some really nice loot like the Slayer 4 and Mending Sword. I used the anvil to combine them together and make one super sword. While exploring this underground village some more, I found another one of these OP mobs. So with some quick thinking, I trapped this guy as well. This time I shredded through the mob and got even more OP loot. This chest also had a Protection 4 book and with all the gold, I upgraded my backpack into a gold backpack. Turns out there were two more of these OP mobs here. The first one was easy to take out and the second one had a bow. So I had to keep my shield up and take this dude out slowly. The reward was a power 4 flame bow with a special ability. Day 8, I combined the mending bow with this new bow and then I got out of this village. Well, I ended up finding another underground village and of course I jumped right in. Then you guessed it, there was another one of those OP guys here. After taking this one out, I got an even better chest plate. I tried to combine the two chest plates together but it took way too many levels. While I was down here, I got caught in a trap and these ores were all part of this huge TNT trap. I still got the diamonds though at least, but I was super lucky that I had incredible armor. I then somehow fought another one of these OP dudes and got an insanely good shield. Day 9 to 10, I was out to find a place to live again. I found this protection 8 iron chest plate and then went down to this dungeon. This place was packed with tons of zombies and the bottom floor had tons of spawners as well. I went around destroying all these spawners but there were already tons of zombies that were already spawned. There were also a bunch of chests here, which had some really good loot like golden apples and enchanted books. So from breaking all those spawners, I had tons of spirit orbs that I got from them. And I had found this goddess statue where you can deposit these orbs to get more hearts. After that, I went to the other side of the dungeon and collected more orbs, killed more zombies and looted more and more chests. That was until I met this fully diamond out OP mob. I was really careful and slowly started attacking this beast. I managed to block it in and I was able to fully take it out and my reward was an insane diamond helmet which I combined with my current mending one to perfect it. Then I used the rest of my spirit orbs to get even more health and the dungeon was fully cleared at this point. So I left and then a blood wound happened that night so I hid out in this little dirt shack. As the mobs from last night burned, I accidentally started a raid in this village. I really wasn't ready to take on these pillagers, so I went up this tower instead and grabbed the paraglider plus the waystone. I then jumped down gliding on the paraglider until my stamina was running out. After that, I went up this hill and noticed a dragon's nest, but no dragon, which was a bad sign. Since this windmill was on fire, I knew the dragon was near, so I ran the other way and glided towards this mesa biome. Around the mesa, I found another one of those zombie dungeons, but I was more in the mood of trying to find a nice place to live. While moving around, I found a huge bone structure with husk spawners inside and some emerald blocks. There was also a pillager outpost right next to me, which I cleared, and then the next morning, I went across the ocean and finally found the perfect place to live. Day 14 to day 15, I cleared out an entire area from all the shrubs and replaced this meadow grass with regular grass. But that's when tragedy struck. I recorded 40 minutes of making the house and every time I tried to open it, my game would crash. So I can only show you the almost finished project. It was basically all stone and oak wood, very simple design. I still need to fill the walls and windows in though. To fill out the empty spots, I made more stone bricks and just placed a simple pattern around the house. Then to fill the holes, I needed more sand to make glass panes. Then once more stone was smelted, I filled out the other sides and made some cool looking doors. After that, I went to collect some squid ink. With that, I was able to make tons of black stained glass panes and filled every spot with that. I also started a mine for more stone and I made a pathway. This process took really long because I was looking for more squid ink while gathering even more stone. Eventually, I had most of the house done and made some bookshelves which I placed on the top floor. Then I needed a storage area, so for now, I just used the bottom floor to place all of my junk. To finally solidify this as my base, I set this goddess statue down and then the waystone down. For the rest of these days, I sprinkled lanterns around and placed a grindstone and an anvil near the enchantment setup. I also really tried looking for more squid ink, but no luck. Instead, I made an enchantment table. Day 18 to 19, I used some diamonds to make boots and a pickaxe. I enchanted the pickaxe and got a pretty nice enchantment. The boots also got some really good enchants too. I had a looting three sword, which I combined with my old sword to enhance my super sword. Then to make the base nicer, I bone meal the flat area around my house. Also, this way I can get purple dye from the lavenders. After the housework, I gathered my gold and apples and found an underground village right next to my base. I ended up finding one of those OP mobs again and swiftly took them down. Again, I got some more really good armor pieces plus a really nice bow. Aside from that, there was nothing else here, so I went to hunt more squids. 
I'm pretty sure since these dolphins were here, they killed the squids before I could. I really needed the black knife for the windows. Lucky for me, in the morning, I found tons of squids, and with looting three, I got even more squid ink. Now I was able to make tons of black stained glasses and finally finish the house. Also, just out of impulse, I started upgrading the storage system. I made tons of these tier two chests, which hold way more items. Then I started working on the remote storage system by making network cables and link cables. I linked all the chests together and then made a nether portal since I would need some quartz blocks. I then teleported into the nether and got a really weird spawn, but I got some quartz really quickly. It also turns out that I'm in front of a stalwart fortress. I got attacked by these little mushroom guys and I went to check out what this fortress was actually like. I almost got a heart attack, but even though these mobs looked cool, they weren't that strong. These blazes also always drop blaze rods, which is going to be really handy. After the fighting, I ended up in the loot room and these chests were really nice. They were filled with diamonds, gold, iron, emeralds, and nether warts. I then somehow ended up in the basement of this fortress, which was very maze-like and had tons of spawners. There were also tons of chests here and I picked up a bunch of good loot. Before I left though, I actually found in more quartz and then it came back home. I used the quartz to make a storage system route and then I needed to make one more thing to be able to access the storage system. To get what I needed, I went down to the mines and found that one trap which had gotten me before but this time i didn't step on the pressure plate i gathered every ore here and then made my way right back up i was able to make a storage inventory and ultimately a storage request table so i can access all of my chests from one place now that the basics were set up i made more tier 2 chests and placed those in the storage system for more space then last but not least, I needed to make the remote. The last ingredient I needed was glowstone dust, so I dove straight into the nether again. I built up pretty quickly, gathered tons of glowstone, and then popped right back home. This really wasn't the remote I wanted, but it'll have to do for now. I then connected it to the storage route and then force loaded my chunks. So I should be able to access these chests from everywhere. With all that set up, I started a weed farm. I built the outline with cobblestone and sprinkled water all around. Then to make sure mobs don't drop in, I placed walls, slabs, and more blocks blocks around the perimeter for more texture and of course safety. Once morning came, I hoed all the land inside and replaced a bunch of cobblestone for stone and stone walls. Then I topped it off with a fence gate. Oh yeah, and the main reason for the wheat farm is to actually plant the seeds, which of course I did. Plus I used a bunch of bone meal to fill out as much of the farm as I can. Later that night, I killed this mob, which gave me a pretty stacked shield. I spent the next day making warp scrolls because I couldn't find any endermen to make the warp stone. And I disenchanted some armor that I wasn't gonna use. I also have some mending books which I used on my boots and I slept in the house for the first time ever. Day 25, I picked a direction and went off to explore. I then noticed on the minimap that I was right above a boss. So I dug straight down to take this boss on. It took me a little bit to find the dude's lair, but it turned out to be the fairest rot knot. I made a little panic shelter and then went to swing at this behemoth. Once it woke up, it swung its giant axe and threw me across the room. It was taking tons of health down, so I had to go to the panic shelter and eat my enchanted golden apple. Now that I was healing a little, I waited for this monster to do its big swings, so the back was exposed, which was its weak point. I'd gotten it down to half health, but I'm stupid, and this thing ended up healing right back because I was in my panic shelter. Luckily, my shield was indestructible, so I was able to block a bunch of major attacks, and slowly but surely, with the help of these gapples, I was able to take down the Ferris Rot Knot. It did take all but one enchanted golden apple, though. The reward was an unbreakable helmet and axe. The axe? For sure, I'm keeping. There were also quest rewards, which gave me another really cool axe, but this one wasn't indestructible. Then later that night, I found a witch's tower that had a nice enchantment set up. So I placed one more bookshelf on here, grabbed some lapis, and enchanted my diamond leggings. Right after the witch tower, I went to find another tower, and this place had what I needed, tomes of scrapping, which can remove enchantments. The main chest had some insane leggings, which I was definitely going to take the affix from. And after exploring some more, I found this graveyard structure again, where I took whatever I needed, and I found another tower, which meant more tomes and affix books. I then ransacked this monastery and found a map for Thornborn Towers, which I went to follow. Along the way, I got attacked by a cyclops and activated another waystone on a tower. Day 28, after running through a desert, I ended up gliding towards Barako the Sun Chief's village. I quickly dropped down into the water and took out his minions. Once I saw the chief, I lit him up with the arrows and knocked him into phase 2. The chief was healing from the minions and after taking them out, I rushed Barako and easily took him out. My reward was a mask and a totem of undying. I also found another waystone here too. As if things couldn't get crazier, I found a dragon's nest. Not just any dragon, a lightning dragon. This one wasn't too big, so I started dumping arrows towards it. Once it caught on fire, I ate my gapple and took this dragon on toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
I picked up the scales and bones and then went forward following the map. That night I found a ruined battle tower and went to the top floor which had blocks of iron and gold just laying there. Day 29, I realized the Thornborn Towers would be way too far, so I just came back home and first order of business was to harvest all the wheat I had and fill out the entire farm. Then I chopped down a bunch of trees to make even more tier 2 chests which would expand my storage system even more. I also enchanted the new axe and got efficiency 3 on it. So because I also collected those tomes of scrapping, I looked through all of my enchanted armor to see what I could disenchant. And oh yeah, I picked up my quest rewards for the lightning dragon, which was a sapphire dragon egg. I'll have to hatch that later. For right now, I made a dragon scale chest plate and leggings and then spent the night killing mobs so I could get up to level 30 and enchant these new pieces. Day 30 to day 32, my silk touch pickaxe allowed me to get spawners and I managed to get a zombie spawner. So to make use of it, I went down to the mines to build a 9x9 area for all the zombies to spawn. Once the main area was complete, I made the killing chamber where all the zombies would drop into. I placed a hopper down and some chests to gather the loot. Then to finally top it off, I placed a sign right on top of the chamber and broke all the torches. I placed a waystone down right next to the mob spawner and now this whole farm is fully operational. I also started decorating the area by placing stone bricks on the floor and placing these oak logs as support beams. When mining out the walls, I dug right into the mines which made it way easier to go back and forth. Last but not least, I placed some stone brick stairs and lanterns around the chamber. I then placed a fence so baby zombies don't sneak through and then I fixed up the mine entrance. On the way down I placed even more stone brick stairs too. The weed farm was also working super nicely so I made an automatic composter for all the leftover seeds. To end these days off I had enough levels to enchant the dragon skill armor pieces and the chest plate had protection 3 and projectile protection 4. The leggings had protection 4 and fire protection 4. I used one mending book for the leggings and then scrapped my diamond leggings and put that book on the chest plate. And of course I finally put a mending book on the chest plate as well. I wanted to scrap my iron chest plate so I made more tomes and then went down to the spawner to get some more XP. I spent a good little bit grinding the mobs out and I noticed I got tons of rotten flesh. I moved the rotten flesh to the other chest too. I got up to level 21 and looked through my inventory for more armor to scrap. I picked one with protection 8 and tried putting that on my dragon scale chest plate but I needed even more levels. After grinding out tons more zombies, I made a little area for a cleric villager to be right next to the spawners. This way I could trade rotten flesh. But to grab the villager, I needed to go down to the mines and get some arcane crystal blocks. I actually ended up getting a decent amount of them. Day 34, since my pickaxe was silk touch, I placed them all outside of my house and made another pickaxe to mine it. I got exactly 9 and made an arcane crystal block. Then I combined it with some spawner scrap to make a quantum catcher. Now I was able to kidnap a villager and placed it right behind my brewing stand. I used like 8 stacks of rotten flesh to get like 15 emeralds. Anyway, I had tons of emerald blocks and I had started advancing the villagers trades first by buying lapis and then trading the rabbit's foot I had collected. Last but not least, I also bought tons of ender pearls, which is exactly what I needed to make a warp stone for myself. I then got up to level 23, I put the protection 8 book on my chest plate and since I had collected tons of silk touch blocks, I mined them all. The rest of the night I made glass bottles and brewed potions of fire resistance which I put in my backpack. Oh yeah, and some mob dropped a banner which I placed on my shield. Day 35, the goal was simple, make these hell shelf things. First I drank my potions of fire resistance and then I went over to this stalwart fortress to grab loads of nether bricks. I then came right back home and started making tons of glass bottles which needed to be turned into potions of regeneration. Lucky for me, I had tons of gas tears. With all that set up, I made my first 5 hell shelves. So I removed some of the old bookshelves and placed these bad boys instead. With 5 of these, I could already enchant with 35 levels instead of 30. I spent the rest of this day making even more potions of regeneration, grabbing more sand for glass and chopping down trees for bookshelves just to fill out the enchantment area with hell shelves. It was all worth it though since now I can enchant tools with 42 levels instead of 30. The only issue now was getting the levels, which is why the mob grinder is a lifesaver. Day 36 to day 37, I teleported around to the waypoints I had discovered and I found a tower which had even more gold and iron blocks for me. Then I found this tower where I got more tomes and the top chest had a sword with a cool affix. I went into a Miramex colony and the only thing that was there was the queen, so I took care of that very easily. I then found even more tomes and enchanted books and then the next morning I fought this tank in diamond armor. This fight took a little bit but I got some insane diamond boots and a diamond chest plate. While exploring some more I ransacked the village for their food and picked up this empty spawner then came back home. Since I'd also picked up this enderman spawn egg, I had the idea of making an enderman spawner but obviously it wouldn't work in this cave since there's water down there. Instead I doubled up the zombie spawner to increase the rates and boy did it work. There were now more zombies flooding through. So while grinding these mobs out I 
had a wither bone which I used to make a dragon bone sword. I then got up to level 32 and combined two of my boots together. Day 38, I grinded up to level 19 again and then I had a genius idea. I just needed a knowledge of the ages book. So I grabbed a lectern and set up an area to place the villager in for now. Of course, I had to kidnap the locals and bring them back to the chamber. Once I trapped this guy, I was in a really weird position since I got a mending trade. But for now, I think it was better to get the knowledge of the ages trade. It took a little bit of rolling, but I managed to get knowledge of the ages 4, which means mob drops turn into XP. I quickly grabbed this book and went to put it on my sword. I picked the dragonbone sword to put it on since the enchantment already gave me looting too. Now I was getting loads of XP every time one zombie died. In about no time I got up to level 46 but I kept going until I got up to level 60. With all this new XP I made another dragonbone sword and wanted to make this one OP. So I rolled through a few enchantments until I got a sharpness 5 one with Bane of the Illagers. After that I enchanted some books and went right back to grinding levels. Then I hit level 60 again, enchanted this new pickaxe and got fortune 2 and efficiency 5. Then I enchanted a book and got looting 2 which I combined with a mending book and put that on the new dragonbone sword. A 39 to 40 I grinded more levels obviously and traded some gold to the cleric. I then got up to level 64 and enchanted tons of books. I also placed these skulls on the bookshelves and I grinded for more levels and mined down lower to get some ores. I used my potions of fire resistance and basically mined every single thing I could. I ended up with a huge haul of just random stuff and this tellerite piece. Before I stopped mining I tore through this amethyst geode. Once I came home I made even more chests to fit into the storage system and I smelted basically everything I collected. Then, with some spare emeralds, I wanted to advance this librarian's trades, so I started buying some bookshelves and lanterns. To end these days off, I made a few obsidian with iron and turned those into obsidian ingots and all of that into an obsidian skull. Luckily, I had a stellarite piece, but I needed one more expectrified orb, so I went back down to the mines and ended up finding the last one I needed. With all of that, I made an eternal stella and combined that with the obsidian skull to get permanent fire resistance. Now, I wanted a new bow so I made a dragon bone bow and got really lucky on the enchantment. I put infinity on it but I didn't know that regular arrows don't work with a dragon bone bow. After that I grabbed some ender pearls from my cleric and went into the nether. The first thing I checked out was this new structure. So this was a stalwart dungeon and it was filled with these reinforced blazes and incomplete wither skeletons. The blazes dropped tons of weird ingots and I picked up some of these tungsten ore too. The real kicker here were these incomplete withers who always managed to drop wither skeleton heads. So this gave me a great idea. I silk touched two incomplete wither skeleton spawners that I wanted to farm. I then killed tons more blazes and found the center where there was an alpha gas altar that needed a nether star to activate. Once I was done with the dungeon I ender pearled around looking for more cool structures. I ended up in this piglin tower thing which was filled with piglin brutes and tons of gold blocks. I also made the dragonborn arrow somewhere around here. From one of these structures alone I got like 16 gold blocks and the top floor had 5 more gold blocks and a netherite ingot. After that I found a nether boat which had even more gold blocks and the bottom floor I got a piglin divinity gem. From this one trip I got like 40 gold blocks and I found a waystone which I used to come back home. A 44 to day 45 I removed my nether portal and smelted tons of tungsten ore to make the armor. Then all that gold was used to get even more emeralds from the cleric. While I was down here I got the idea to make an oceanographer. This way I could get tons of sea lantern and make the crafting remote instead of the basic remote I had. After that I placed these incomplete wither skeleton spawners instead of the zombie spawners and made the killing chamber one block higher. I basically killed a few of these skeletons and I already had 13 wither skeleton heads. These dudes had some insane loot. I now basically have infinite wither skeleton heads and coal. Also the knowledge of the ages sword is now even more overpowered. After a whole day of grinding I got up to level 84 with like 2 stacks of wither skeleton heads. I had enough wither skeleton heads for an entire lifetime so I removed those spawners for now and I teleported far away to build a new nether portal here. I ended up spawning right next to another stalwart dungeon so I mined as many tungsten ores as I could see. The enchanted books here were also really good so I grabbed a bunch of those as well. I then stumbled into another nether ship and got 21 more gold blocks. While moving some more I found another nether waystone and saw a mutant wither skeleton underneath me who died from like 3 shots with my bow. So I got this cool withered claymore. Then after some more traveling I realized that I have close to a hundred gold blocks in storage. So I then set my sights towards the netherite monstrosity and traveled for a real long time. 
As I went across this nether waste biome, my health bar popped up over me. I looted and got on top of this tower to get a better view of what the netherite monstrosity looked like. I couldn't see anything, so I built down towards the structure until it came out. Immediately, this monster started launching magma blocks and I had to grab my golden apples. I managed to get some hits in, but it kept deactivating my shield, so I had to be really careful. This guy was ferocious, but once I realized that it was kind of weak to arrows, I managed to do tons of damage and eventually, after keeping my distance and eating the apples, I took down the netherite monstrosity. This behemoth dropped a hammer called Infernal Forge and a monstrous horn. I then picked up the leftover ancient debris and collected my quest reward, which was a nether star. So I came back home, rebuilt the portal in front of my house, and I wanted to take on this awful gas while I was here. I made my way over to the center of the dungeon and placed the nether star into the altar. Then the awful gas summoned. At first, I thought how hard can this boss be, but my god. This thing keeps disabling all of your weapons and I had to retreat. While I was out here, I found out that you could just cheese the boss very easily, so I took it down using my bow. The reward was this thing called an awful gun. I also grabbed all the tungsten ore here as well. I couldn't end it there, I needed to fight one more boss, and this one was the wither. I went very deep underground, cleared an area to fight this wither. I summoned this bad boy and lasered it with my bow, and in no time I managed to defeat this guy too. My reward was also a nether star and a heart container which I can't even use because I maxed out on hearts, and I ended up getting a witherite ingot. To end these days I made a full set of tungsten armor and I started enchanting it. I got protection 4 on the helmet, protection 3 on the chest plate, and protection 4 on the boots and the leggings. Then I made a tungsten shield which looks sick but can only have the unbreaking enchantment. I actually realized that my diamond armor was just so much better than tungsten stuff, so I made netherite ingots instead and upgraded the helmets and boots. So the cool thing you can do with the netherite helmet and the monstrous horn is to combine them together to make the monstrous helm, which was even cooler. So for the tungsten armor, I just placed it on the armor stand since I'm probably not going to use them at all. I decided I'm going to keep this helmet and that means everything else has to match, which means I enchanted this diamond armor and scrapped the enchantments off the dragon scale armor to put on the diamond ones instead. I also had a mending book for the chest plate and I turned it into a netherite chest plate. Then I needed more levels to scrap the dragon scale leggings so it was time to grind even more levels. I ended up getting up to level 47 and scrapped everything off the dragon stuff and moved it to the diamond stuff. I also put mending on it too. I then got up to level 49 again and wanted to remove some of the affixes from this crazy iron armor. The next day I got up to level 50 and put the mythic affix on my chest plate. After that I made tons of tomes to use my levels. I also got up to like 70 levels and I tried to get really good in chance. The best one was the sharpness 5 and looting 3 that I used. Then I went to the nether to get some netherite to upgrade my leggings. I tore up these piglin tower things grabbing all the gold and hoping I'd get netherite ingots or scraps on the top chest. I ended up getting one on the first tower and then came right back home to upgrade my leggings. Now things are fully uniform. Last but not least, I put looting 4 on my sword and sold tons of gold and then I realized I had more than 100 pieces of gold blocks. Day 51 to day 52, I made a tool belt plus some pouches to store my equipment and then I upgraded my backpack to a diamond backpack and I also wanted to make this thing called a feeding upgrade so I got some of these melons from the underground village and I made one plus the advanced version. Now as long as food is in the backpack I would automatically be fed. With that finished I had the genius idea to find a vindicator spawner since they always drop emeralds. I knew that there are spawners on pirate ships so I went out searching for some. Along the way I killed some sirens and got attacked by sea serpents back to back and what saved me was my OP bow. There were way too many mobs here so I slept on this slime island and the next morning I actually found a pirate ship. I curled onto it, destroyed the archers and then I took the spawner with my silk touch pickaxe. To add insult to injury I burned this place down and moved to another pirate ship. This place also had a vindicator spawner which I took and burnt this ship down too. Now I was able to place the vindicator spawner on the farm and get unlimited emeralds. I mean this thing was working like a charm. In a few minutes I already had a stack of emeralds which I used to level this librarian up but its trades kind of sucked. I ended these days off by putting Sweeping Edge 3 on my Dragon Bone Sword. With the new influx of emeralds, I started to prepare a trading hall. This was going to be right across the mob killing chamber and filled with tons of unique new villagers. The first thing I did was dig out little areas for the villagers to be placed in and then I put oak pillars around it to give it some more color. After that I fixed up the roof by raising it a little and then I put oak logs across it. After all of that, I put magma blocks underneath where the villager workshops are going to be and I placed glowstone all around the center for lighting. The first residents were obviously my librarian and my cleric. I wasn't really happy with the floor so I went and grabbed a bunch of deep slate and started messing with that. I filled out the floors with deep slate tile slabs and deep slate brick slabs which looked nice but were too neat so I randomized them a little. I like this design so much that I made the killing chamber floor the same thing too. 
The final thing I did was fix the back wall and match the ceilings up. After that, I just started filling up the trading hall with a bunch of villagers. First guy was an oceanographer, the second villager was a weaponsmith, the fourth was a farmer, and on the other side, I put another librarian plus a hunter. This time, I was also leveling up the guys as well, and I ended up getting a mending trade. Day 56 to day 58, I made a stairway all the way down to bedrock and I collected some cold deep stone, which took me way too long to get. I then used all of my spirit orbs to max out on the paragliding stamina, which apparently is a big deal, and I made a light and dark chest, which I placed on bedrock. This way I could go to the deep dark dimension. It just took one diamond. I had this cool remote that shows you where these mobs are, which is really helpful because I'm trying to get tons of diamonds and kill all the wardens here. After collecting some diamonds in the spawn room, I followed the silhouettes of these mobs until I reached a cave. Inside the cave, I got even more diamonds and ended up alerting a warden. I stayed on top of these few blocks and I was able to take down this regular version of the warden without losing any health. Almost immediately, another warden saw me and oh my god, this guy packed a punch. It basically took most of my hearts every single hit. I tried to climb out these blocks, but I was blinded. Eventually, after slowly hitting this warden, I took out the big warden type, but I almost died. There was one more variant here, which was the bone type, and this one was nowhere near as bad because I managed to get it on high ground, and just like that, I completed the entire deep dark dimension in like 30 minutes. The reward was a netherite ingot, and I got a bunch of the ores that I mined here too. I then came home, placed pedestals around the main bedroom, and then put some cool artifacts and rewards down on top of the pedestals and the armor stands. Day 59, I unlocked this chainsaw trade from the other librarian and I put it on my giant axe. Now I can tear these trees apart from one log. I also basically got master trades from all the other villagers. Day 60 to day 61, I turned these piglin divinity gems into piglin divinity essences and went to the nether to grab even more netherite. I prowled around the nether looking for the structures that give those netherite ingots. I found a tower first and got a netherite ingot plus tons more gold blocks and then I made it to a ship which had even more gold blocks and then finally a second ship where I managed to get some extra netherite scrap and an ingot. I made one too many of these divinity nether ingots, but I upgraded all of my armor except the helmet to the divinity netherite version, which just makes it stronger and matches to the sick helmet even more. I also made a bunk bed because I'm no longer a peasant now. A 62 to day 64, I grabbed the waystone and went to find a stronghold. This ended up taking a few days, but eventually I found the stronghold, which was underwater. I broke in through a staircase and started looting these barracks for every single thing they had. It was just a lot of foods and sticks. I ended up finding the treasure room where I snatched everything up and then eventually found the portal room. I placed the waystone down and made more eyes of ender to finish the portal. Before I jumped in, I came right back home to make more golden apples and then get some more ender pearls. I then enchanted a new pickaxe, which I combined with my old one and added mending to it. Now that I was fully set up, I teleported to the end portal and jumped in. I spawned on a platform and built up until I could pearl to the main island. Then I started raining arrows at the crystals. Some of them were highly protected, so I got the ones that were exposed first. Once most of the crystals were gone, I pearled up to the tower and started destroying some of the protected ones. With that, it was just me versus the dragon and my bow did tons of damage, basically reducing its health down to half until it perched again. This cycle, I managed to get it to a third of its health and then I took it out using the bow. I picked up like 8 dragon scales and got the ender dragon egg. Now came the annoying part of finding the end city. This is also why the ender pearls were very important. I built over to the end gateway and then checked my quest rewards, which gave me a black dragon egg. Also, one of the quests was to defeat a mutant enderman, and lucky for me, there was one right here. This guy was a freak though, doing more damage than the ender dragon. I had to eat my golden apple, but I tanked it and took this guy down. The reward was a nether star, and then I went onwards to find the end cities. For the next few days, I pearled around looking for any structure, and I ended up finding one, which had tons of shulker boxes filled with some insane loot. Basically, every enchantment you could want on a piece of gear plus void totems and these orbs of temporary flight. After basically forever, I found an end city, but no end ship. I still started making my way up the tower though, breaking these shulker spawners and looting these stacked chests. I got to the top floor and got even more shulker boxes, void totems, and enchanted gear. I did however get this Eye of Nebula Soul Stone, which seemed way too complicated since it teleported me out. A while later, I found another end city and went directly up to the end ship and picked up the elytra wings. I also got whatever was good in the chests, made some fireworks, and flew back to the main island. Before I left, I wanted to collect tons of end stone and as soon as I got home I made a purple altar so I could get an endarian villager. 
Day 71, I started trying to hatch this ice dragon egg and I didn't have any more dragon bones to keep this thing safe, so I made the quantum catchers again. I also made an eternal Stella and put that on my elytra so it's indestructible now. While waiting, I made tons of dragon meals and fed this dragon as soon as it hatched, and I snatched this little guy up to keep him safe. After that, I leveled up this Endurian to unlock the firework trade and eventually the dragon breath trade. With that, I could make a bunch of end shelves, so I upgraded from the hell shelves to the end shelves. This meant that I could enchant items with 80 levels. I ended up getting some nice enchantments on a spear sword and put knowledge of ages on another sword. After that I grinded a bunch more levels so that I can use level 80 enchants and it was not good at all. So instead I made the trading hall a few blocks wider so that I could sneak in two more villagers. One of the guys I needed was a scribe because I thought they sold dragon bones. While I was traveling to another village I met a fire dragon. This dude had already noticed me so I swapped to the bow and started firing. It took only a few arrows and I managed to take it out. This time I grabbed my glass bottles to take the blood. As if that wasn't enough while flying some more I landed on an ice dragon's nest. Now these guys are super annoying since they slow you down to a crawl. But I still managed to take it out and grab the scales. With these bones, I made a dragon horn and placed my dragon in there instead. I also grabbed the quest rewards, which was a gem that bounded dragons to you and a wand. Then I noticed a forest on fire and saw another dragon, but this one was very different. It was a royal red dragon. Oh yeah, I found this stupid lectern, which makes scribes. And here's where I messed up a little. I disenchanted my leggings and got some really nice enchantments, but it had life mending, which I thought worked just like mending, but it did not repair my armor at all. I had no idea so I did the same thing to my chest plate as well and it had some really good enchants but no mending. Then I went to fight mobs and realized that these pieces were not healing at all. I found these weird underwater creatures named Mother of the Maze and then I found the Thornborn Towers where I took all the loot on the top floor. Last but not least I found a shipwreck where I got the shell horn. This horn allowed me to summon the ghost of Captain Cornelia and just the way this boss moved and attacked was super cool. The ice floor would constantly raise and launch me back but at the end of the day it wasn't nearly strong enough to handle me and I took it out without losing much health. My reward was a cool helmet and a submarine. Day 76 to day 77 my armor was torn up so I put some mending books on them and then I wanted to take on these ender golems next so I looked up the ruined citadel on my explorer's compass and flew over to it. I reached the citadel and fought these weird bugs and then when I made it inside I kept stepping on these trapped blocks. I eventually found these golems and I thought it was the boss since it had some really cool moves and its own chamber but after I took it out I realized it was just the beginning. I looted all the chests around and found these trap doors which led underground and yeah it turns out those golems are protecting something way bigger because I had to fight about two more of them. My hunch was right because I found some more trap doors and dropped even lower. Turns out this was the altar for the Elder Guardian and this guy had all the moves of the Ender Golems plus double health. I tried using my bow but eventually that stopped working so I went head first and started slicing at the monster. I slowly got it at half health and it broke the platform we were standing on and knocked us down to the bottom floor. But for now it was way too weak. I was able to fly away from its pull and start lighting it up with the arrows to kill it. The reward was a gauntlet of guard and I got this larva plus something called a capsid. These are needed to summon the void worm, the last boss of the end. Before I came home I grabbed some more elytra wings and random loot in this end city. Day 78 to 80 I needed to put these wither skeleton heads to use and I summoned even more withers. I summoned them back to back and took each out until I had like 6 nether stars. I also kidnapped this little goblin who I used to get a fortune 5 pickaxe and combined it with my pickaxe. After that I expanded my storage system with tier 3 chests for even more storage and I realized I wanted dragon bone tools instead so that's exactly what I did. I started enchanting these dragon bone tools but I needed more levels so I got up to level 65 and started trading with this scribe who was a scam artist. But on the bright side I got up to level 89, enchanted my dragon bone pickaxe then combined it with an unbreaking and mending book. Because I was so indecisive I made a flame dragon bone sword and rolled the enchants for this thing like a hundred times. I even had a pretty good setup but I didn't like the bane of villagers. So after combining tons of these books I realized it had knowledge of the ages which I did not want at all so this amazingly beautiful sword had to be disenchanted. Day 81 I spent this entire day grinding levels and got some sick enchantments on the flame dragon bone sword. Only problem was the bane of arthropods. I really didn't want to grind levels again so I enchanted some tomes and combined those books on this sword to make an absolute super sword. Day 82 to day 83 I went to the nether to collect more gold and netherite scraps and also hopefully find a mutant blaze. This elytra helped me reach tons of places I never could and the gold from these structures were insane. I'm pretty sure I can build a few beacons with just the gold blocks alone. I started with around 170 gold blocks and ended with more than 300. With all this new gold I got another cleric to sell more gold into and I made a netherite shield which I upgraded to blazerite and then got some really decent enchants on the shield. I still had to combine it with some leftover books to make it perfect. Day 84 to day 88 for these days I flew around these ice biomes looking for dread dungeons. This is because 
they have dragon forge stuff in them i found one of those dungeons and killed a dread lich who dropped a key i was able to get into the dungeon but my god was it packed with mobs i swear these spawners were like supercharged because they really never stopped spawning i was on the staircase thinning the herd for the longest time ever i did manage to get down break the spawners and then come right back up which worked like a charm and then that meant i could go to the main room and pick up all the dragon forge blocks i found another dread dungeon and did the exact same thing this place was a nightmare but i got through and picked up even more blocks and left later that day i killed two ice dragons and got some more ice dragon blood to finish these days off i hunted tons of cows and sheep to make dragon meal and grow my ice dragon also to help with that i made a pen for sheep before summoning the void room i wanted to level up my dragon first so i started breeding the sheep like crazy then i made tons of backpack upgrades like this crafting upgrade and a stone cutter upgrade also i turned the backpack into the netherite version as well so the stone cutter has very useful features like you can turn these emerald blocks into these rough emerald shards which fully restocks villagers using that i was able to sell tons of gold and iron i had piled up then i fed my dragon some more with all the sheep i also made the straw golem guy and a chest with a hopper to see how effective they were they were useless then i had a great idea to remove a bunch of affixes from the loot i had been collecting day 91 to day 94 i learned how to summon the void worm you put the larva into the capsid and it spits out a mysterious worm after that you need to drop this bad boy in the void so i flew to the end and found the perfect place to start the fight there weren't tons of endermen at the beginning so i dropped the mysterious worm into the void this summoned a portal which allowed the void worm to come through this crazy boss did not stop attacking it, and once i shot it it split into two if that's not bad enough i shot it again and it split into three luckily i managed to just get the main worm by itself and then only took a few more shots to wipe out the void worm my reward was a void worm eye and two void worm mandibles. These can be used to make a dimensional carver, which I have no clue what it does. The quest reward though opened up the abyss for me with tons of very useful information and blocks for the portal. To make this dimensional carver, I went to the nether one more time to get some netherite. Of course, I picked up all the gold I could. Then I made the dimensional carver, which was doing something when I right clicked, but I really couldn't tell at all. It just seemed useless to me. Day 95 to day 100. For the rest of these days, I bred my sheep and was able to feed my dragon until it was finally riding. I also used all of my iron blocks to make some dragon armors to deck it out. Then I put a bunch of items on the pedestal and the armor stands. Last but not least, I cleared a huge area right in front of my house to hold six beacons. I spent most of the time collecting the extra emerald blocks. The first layer was gold, second was emeralds, third was iron, and the top layer I placed gold down again. Then of course I placed the six beacons on top and gave myself every single effect possible. If you want 200 days, make sure to let me know in the comments, I promise this time.